Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the biggest drift event the world has ever seen. And it's also the finale of the 2023 Drift Masters European Championship. Today, our attention turns to qualifying before the biggest, craziest crowd in the history of drifting. 53,000 people will fill every single seat of the Pegue Naridove Stadium here in the capital city of Warsaw tomorrow. But today, qualifying restricted access to the venue for just 15,000. And when I say just 15,000, that is an impressive feat in itself. The track is tricky. It's all walls. It's tough. And my name is Dave Egan. I'll be talking you through all of the action today and alongside my good friend, Ian Waddington. Ian, we've had a hell of a season, but it's about to get even more special from here. Certainly has, Dave. It's been a roller coaster, some would say, of a season. But here we are. We've made it all the way to the final, and we are going to kick this one off, Dave, in a very special way. Absolutely. And the thing about this is that it's the pressure is building for each one of these drivers. We have such a huge grid here, over 57 drivers, and we've got six in the championship race. And some of those have picked up the top spots this year. Peter Vjainsek, the only driver to pick up two first places across the season, but he is only in sixth position in the championship. Connor Shanahan goes in as the lead driver, although he is having engine trouble and had very limited of any practice on this track. You can see here on your screens, they are our winners, but the winner tonight is the most important, or tomorrow night rather, is the most important. And also six drivers going for the championship. You can see them here, Connor Shanahan leading the pack again, ahead of Laurie Heinen, his brother Jack Shanahan, Juha Rinton, and Peter Vjainsek, and Dwayne McKeever. Those are the six that Matt mathematically can still win the championship here this weekend. Connor Shannon goes in the stronger, but he's had a real tough time in the pits and had no practice whatsoever. His qualifying run will be the last as he is the highest uh, ranked driver in the championship. And qualifying, well, it is a very tough task for a lot of drivers this weekend. We also have a bunch of wild cards in the mix, and there are drivers that we haven't seen before, some we have, and some huge international guests, all in the mix, just to make this a little bit more spicy, Ian. But every driver talking about how tough it's going to be to get into qualifying. This is how the weekend is going to work out. Qualifying is today. We run it from now up until the end of each driver's second run. Tomorrow, local time, 3.15 for your top 32, and then on to 6.55. It is the main event of the biggest drift event of all time, and that is going to be spectacular. Well, this track, it is a custom-built track. It took 40, 48 hours to lay down, but it's going to take these guys no time to rip it up. As we went to that first corner, it's all about getting to the outside of that outer zone one, running the rear end of the car all the way around. Then it is an inner zone right here, inner zone two. Then This is crazy. Inner zone three on a concrete wall with the front of the car. Yes, it's the final. Then you get onto the next wall, and it's all full steam through outer zone four. And there's going to be a little marker here on the track. You're going to see a little touch and go. It's not a clip, but it's a marker from the judges where the rear wheels need to be before they transition back here to outer zone five. And then if you've made it this far, it's outer zone six and across the finish line. Looks simple, looks like just a clean figure of eight, but it's very fast, very technical, a lot of grip laid down in practice, in and drivers struggling already. And I think it's just an occasion getting to a lot of these guys. And here's the qualifying order. It's how it runs. Each driver will get two runs of qualifying, non-consecutive. The best run of those two runs will count as their overall score. And the top 32 will advance to the finals tomorrow. That's what each one of these 57 drivers is aiming for to get into the biggest show. That's not going to be easy, Ian, because I'll tell you one thing, there is some crazy lineup here this weekend. Yeah, there certainly is, Dave. And you know what a lot of guys are saying now in the paddock, even though we've had six for five rounds and we're here at the final, a lot of guys are saying to just qualify at the final with the level of driving, the way that everyone stepped it up now towards the end of the season is a win in itself. Getting into that top 32, standing in front of this crowd tomorrow is a win in its own right. But these drivers, they want to be on the podium, Dave. And let's have a look at that qualifying start list. Well, here's your eighth wild cards. Kavia, top qualifying in Germany, back as a wild card again. He's our first driver up. Bagsy's back in there. The Spanish champion, Lopez. Dregor Shipke back in the mix. Kozlovski back in the mix. We've got Adam LZ all the way from America in the mix. Romanovski and Davis Sposov. And here is the reverse championship order that you guys have been watching all of these drivers compete for the rest of the whole season. And it's always going to return all the way to Connor Shannon, who's our highest ranked driver. It is absolutely stacked. We have got 25 nations on the track. We also have got 22 national champions here from all over Europe and including now Japan and America. So you call it the Driftmasters European Championship. We got guys from Israel, America and Japan all in the mix this weekend. It's a global affair, Dave. It's a global affair now. It's not just held to Europe itself. It's a global affair and it's attracting attention from all around the world of guys that want to come here and get into the mix and see what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, you know what? We've given you the tail of the tape. It's the biggest drift event of all time. Let's stop talking. Let's start kicking it off. Let's head to qualifying.
Well, we start with a big contender. Tor Arne Kavia back as a wild card for this event. You know what? He topped qualifying from this position in Germany. Can he do it again? The Norwegian sledgehammer has an 800 horsepower. One UZ turbo engine in this car. It is the cheapest engine setup on the grid, but it doesn't make any difference when you've got the skills of this Norwegian behind the wheel, and he's going to be the first man on the track. Big pressure on here. Judges Kevin O'Connell, Vernon, and David having a good, strong look at the track. This is going to set the benchmark. It certainly is going to set the benchmark. Here, Dave, and here we go, Kavir off through the marks, no messing around straight away, big flick across the circuit, looks to get the back end of this Nissan 200SX S13 into the outside zone, he does, picks up that front clipping point, lovely, transitions, a little bit uh, away from the wall, would have seen the front bumper as close as possible to that front, uh, to the wall, as he gets now into this long outside zone, fulfills it really well, and now we're going to see that touch and go, that marker for the judges to see where the rear wheels of the car are, as he now gets into the two last outside zones, the final one coming up, foot brake line, as Kavir fires it across the line and a real good start to round six of the 2023 Driftmasters European Championship. We are up and running, Ian, and Kavir setting a good benchmark there for us to be able to explain everything that this track has to offer. You know what, the judges are saying, we want to see the bumpers on the wall. We want to see a flex of those body panels. And not only the rear bumper, but also the front bumper on this inner zone. Watch Kavir transition. He leaves it a little bit late, meaning that he does not get really close. We want to see bumpers touching that concrete wall. That's what this event is all about. And Kavir, I think, taking a little safe approach there, not doing it. A lot of guys saying, you go too hard, you hit the wall, then you might miss your second qualifying run. So I understand that. But Kavir then, when he gets nice and comfy in these outer zones, he does a good job. Is it the most perfect run we're going to see tonight? Probably not. But he's Got another one to go so it's a good benchmark it's something to set the standard by and i'm excited to see how all of these wild cards shake up the championship order a lot of the, the championship contenders saying we don't mind wild cards coming to the event when they're of this stature it starts to stress us out of course yeah look you, you take kavir for instance 2018 was when he really came into our minds dave and it was the first time that we see him in action because he came to the first of around the drift masters european championship with a walled stadium in Plotsk, just a few miles away dave and he absolutely Absolutely burst onto the scene. He loves these circuits and he loves what they can do. An 85, Dave, on the board for Kavir, and I'd say that is one hell of a benchmark. Well, we're starting with an 85, and we talk about this being the best of the best on track. Well, there you have it, straight out the box, 85 from Tor Arne Kavir, and a man who wowed us all in Watch Stadium last year. Unfortunate that he was knocked out on a technicality of a D-beat of a tire. Steve Banksy Biagioni, our only UK competitor this year in the championship, but you know what? He's flying the flag for the UK high because he is one of the best in these stadium tracks. This crazy. V8 powered PS13 roaring into action. Yeah, look at this flames already from the back end of this PS13 as Bagsy flicks it across the circuit up closer to the wall. Then Kavir puts the back end of that car right into the pocket. Now picks up that front clipping point. Looks for the transition a little bit closer than Kavir, but still not as close as we like to see. A little upset there. You can see corrections on the steering from Bagsy as he now gets into the outside zone, touches the wall, looks for the transition across the circuit. A little shallow there, maybe not as deep as what Kevin O'Connell and the guys would have liked to have seen, but now back up in to the pocket, onto the wall, goes back, says he looks for the finish line, tags the back end off the wall, gets the job done. Yeah, and you're going to hear Ian and I be a little critical of, of everything here because there's so the margins are so tight yeah. between qualifying and not qualifying in Drift Masters. It's not about putting in a good run anymore. It's about putting in a great run. What Bagsy had there it was a good run. There was nothing too crazy wrong with it, but was it absolute perfection? Is that what we're looking for? Well, we're going to have to try and be deciphering that as we go through qualifying, what's good. But look how smooth and controlled he is behind the wheel. Of course, you've got the live onboard cameras. I love this one on the ground. This yeah. is just the <laughs> coolest shot. And again, we're going to see guys rubbing bumpers off that, but we've watched in previous events, they actually can lose steering arms and you know, break things up by hitting them too. So how do you manage that aggression? That's what Steve Bagsy Biagioni was trying to, to manage there. I think he did a good job. He got the car home cleanly, he put a good score on the board. And again, each of these drivers will just feel out where the scoring is before they start to have that strategy for the second run to know where the benchmark is. The benchmark in Germany was 85 points. Yep. You didn't score any higher than 85. You were going out of competition and there was less drivers. So I'm just saying this 78 from Steve Bagsy Biagioni might be enough, but we're now starting to learn that it might not be. Yeah, I mean, look, we found this in, in Germany, you know, the scores crept up and they kept creeping up, Dave, and, and we had 21 guys sitting on a 90-point run plus. And 
we were super critical there, and I think this is going to be the same track where we're going to be super critical. All those little steering inputs, any little mistake, me and Dave are going to pick up on it because we have to, because these are, Dave, the best of the best of the best. Exactly. Getting around the track and hitting those flipping points is the least expected. You could do that, Dave. I'm pretty sure I could do it badly, <laughs> but what I'm saying is they're expected to be the champion. So, so they're going to be marked critically. Here we go. Newcomer to the championship, Ruben Lopez, the current leader of the Spanish Drift Championship in this BMW. A little wobble on the entry there. 730 horsepower. Two Jay-Z screaming around the Pegue Naridove as he transitions on the Oh, just missing that clipping zone a little bit as he transitions back. He's a little hesitant. It looks like to me like there's an issue with the car or he's gripping that car up a little bit more and a lot of handbrakes through those outer zones as well. Judges will be picking up on all of these little steering inputs. The line is good from Ruben Lopez right now, but just a couple of corrections on the handbrake, missing this outer zone five as well. So this is a driver coming in really at the deep end. You know, at the end of the championship, of course, he's currently leading the Spanish championship. But we're in a whole different kettle of fish here, not only in Drift Masters, but in this stadium. And if you haven't done a stadium track before, you are at a disadvantage, I believe, here. Oh, 100%, Dave. This is, uh, you know, not the kind of place where you want to make an appearance as a, your first ever chance at Drift Masters, because we've had five rounds of these guys working their way through a championship. We've traveled all over Europe. Everyone's dialed in. The cars are dialed 100%. And if you don't bring your A game, you're not really going to stand too much of a chance. For me, the initiation is where it all went wrong. You didn't carry any speed, Dave. He scrubbed all the speed off. He got on the handbrake and then he jumped on the throttle and he, he used the power to then, you know, get himself into that first outside zone. But then with no momentum and no flow, he kind of really didn't pick up that qualifying line. Yeah, you can see the rubber flying through the air <laughs> as these guys maneuver the track. Dwayne McKeever earlier on, I had, a, I had a little walk around the paddock after we had our, uh, you know, we let a uh, thousand people into the paddock to meet the drivers. When they cleared out, I kind of had a little walk around, chat to some of the drivers. Dwayne McKeever said there's so much rubber on the circuit that when you go in, the front wheels pick it up. You can feel the front of the car jumping up and down with that much rubber stuck to the tires. That is crazy. Well, let's see what Ruben Lopez scored. And it's going to be a zero from the judges, I believe. Kevin O'Connell saying there was too much uh, corrections and steering corrections there. So it's a zero for Ruben Lopez. That's harsh right there. You know, again, this is the technicality here. That you've got yeah. to be on it. You've got to be perfect. We move on to our next driver. Good to see him back. It's Dregor Shipke from Poland, the man we're used to seeing on the podium many years ago. Took a step away from the sport. He's back down in this on S14. Guess what's powering it? It is a Ford Barra 4 liter with 850 horsepower. So not doing the conventional thing of coming no. back with the 2JZ um, or an Orbi. He's got a bar, but it works really well. Hipke off the line. Yeah, off the line, through the gears, goes Tregor's Hipke now as he fires in this beautiful looking S14. It probably won't look the same by the end of the weekend. And he already flexes the spoiler up the wall and bangs the tailgate in as he now transitions through that front inner cliff. Nice line so far from Hipke, a little use of the handbrake. Not sure how the judges are going to take that one. And that contact there affected the line. You can see him move him out of the outside zone through the center of the circuit. He goes now as Hipke looks for the outside zone. Five gets in there but doesn't get too close, doesn't want to make the same mistake again. Hipke on it but very shallow. You know what, he went for it. He went for the big run. I, I got to respect it. He, yeah. he went out there, he, he flexed the wall, he wanted to put the big score on the board. However, we want to see people flexing cars off the wall, but once it starts to affect the car, and mostly the front of the car, it's a mistake. Or if it affects your line, and you could see that as Dregor started strong, he sort of stayed in some zones a little too long, got a little bit of a flex on the wall, and unfortunately kind of messed up his line just that little bit. I loved it, though, because you got a four-liter bar engine absolutely <laughs> smashed into the walls. But you can see a little bit too much contact pushed him out of that outer zone, and he'd be making some errors. But you know what? All in all, I think the attitude is right going in there with the big run. Get, you know, he knows the stature of the event. He knows the quality of the drivers. He hasn't competed in the championship this year. He's been watching on. He's been watching these big qualifying scores coming in. So I, I agree. Go out there and, and put a huge run in. At least try it. There's no point in sitting watching the event tomorrow and not qualifying saying, I didn't do enough. No, you. I mean, you have to come out here swinging, Dave. This isn't the kind of championship now or, or event that you can come in at half tilt. 70, uh, 70 on the board for Dregor Zipke, uh, the Polish national driver, as he makes a return to Driftmasters European Championship. We'll see we do another Polish driver on the line it is Peter Kozlowski in this insane S15, Dave. A V8 wasn't enough, so he said, I'm going to put two turbos through the bonnet so you can see him. I think this is my favorite engine setup. <laughs> I knew in the he was going to say that. I think it's so obnoxious that it works phenomenally well. You would you drive this to the shops. I would. Two turbos <laughs> out of the bonnet, flames firing up the windscreen. That's what we came here to see. And Kozlowski, good driver, and he's Very. been good in these stadium events in the past, running 1,200 horsepower in this car. He's going to need to uh, control to limit that horsepower as he puts it to the wall. What a run so far from Kozlowski, but he misses the inner zone as he oh, almost makes contact with the walls. A little wild 
A little hairy as he came through the center section there. Got to get it back on track, and he does. Out to the outer zone. Go Peter Kozlowski, staying late in the zone. Watch that rear uh, touch and go. Misses that as he fires back. This is the sketchy pack for the drivers, and he's oh. in the wall, and you can see it. The yeah. minute he transitioned, he just got the timing wrong, and it sent the car around, and that's the most dangerous part of the track. The inner zone, that inner wall run, very sketchy to get out of the way of it, and then when you transition back across the track, that's another really dangerous zone. You're also coming back through your own smoke. Yeah. So it's almost like you can't see that wall. You're blinded, and you know, the smoke, although we do have the banners on it in areas where you can't see, there is a blind spot there. It will be a zero, and... and Quite an outfit. Quite, quite, quite a statement. Quite an outfit. I think I think you'd look good in that, Ian. I think you could wear that to the nightclub tomorrow night. I've got that night. for the after party yeah, tomorrow night. I think yeah. that's a good outfit for you. So we go back onto the track, and man, uh, many people eagerly awaiting to see here. He is the only American on the grid. It is Adam LZ from the United States. He picked up a Formula Drift win earlier this year, and he's saying it would be a dream come true to do a, a European win and a US win in one year. I don't think uh, many people have done that. James Dean's done it in the past, you know, the very very rarely people have done it. Adam LZ in this uh, borrowed car this weekend, 800 horsepower, uh, 2JZ S15. Hasn't competed on this track with these drivers or in this car before. Big uh, step up here for Adam LZ. He said he's under pressure. He had a hit with the wall in practice, missed some runs. There's some stress here on Adam LZ and the expectations of how an American driver is going to deal with. Uh, the it's a very different style here in Europe. Well, I was talking to his manager earlier, and you know, we had a conversation. He said, how is, how is Adam getting on? I said, I haven't really seen many of his runs. I said, but I know he's nervous because these are the kind of tracks that you drive in America. So this is a new challenge for Adam LZ. And he said, well, you know what? I, I'm good for myself at anything so here we go he's off the line Adam LZ for his first ever competitive run here at the Drift Masters European Championship fires that car in to that first outside zone gets himself set up nicely then he's gonna be driving technical now he's not gonna want to mess around you can see him on the foot brake keeping that car control very nice on that front inside zone rubs the bumper off the wall and now starts to fall away ever so slightly out of the outside zone back in he goes as now he looks for that transition across the track touches the uh, touch and go now looks for outside zone five just about gets there. He's keeping this one safe and clean. He's not going too hard now as Adam LZ fires it through the finish line. And you know what? I think he'll be feeling comfortable after that. Yeah, good run. Got all the zones. And, uh, you know, they get two areas probably where the judges will look at it. That initiation was pretty straight line. They wanted to see a little bit of a flick in there. And then a lot of left foot braking. So, you know, using the left foot brake, and a lot of these guys will do it to just steady the car and um, losing a little bit of speed around it. But I think it's the, it's the correct approach is to, you know, get that safe run on the board. Don't have any major errors. This is definitely the closest anybody has been to <laughs> that camera as Adam LZ throws at the front splitter over the camera and almost grazes that inner zone. Very exciting run to watch. Um, and Adam did a good job of adapting. I mean, he's only had, I think, maybe four or five practice laps on this track. So for that, very, very good. But again, a lot of left foot braking, you know, and, and slowing the car down in certain areas could do it a little bit more commitment in certain areas. So that's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the judges decide for that one. But it's great to see so many new drivers in the championship. And, and drivers, you know, who are well established in other parts of the world. We have Nakamura, Adam LZ, these type of guys coming here, bringing their audiences here. And uh, we hope you guys are watching on and enjoying the show. But it's, it's a great to see the mix. Of oh. Of styles of, of approaches to the event, and um, as you can see, the front wheel locked solid on Adam LZ's car there as he heads out towards outer zone six. He's got some scores on the board, though, it'll take the pressure off. And I think a lot of these drivers suffering with that pressure from the off, saying, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do. So let's see what the scores come in. Is a 64 for Adam LZ. You see the style points way down there, and I think that's going to come down to a lot of the uh, the left foot braking. But Becky is down with Adam LZ just as he's come off the track. Becky, he must be happy he's got around there and survived. Absolutely, Dave. Adam, we're delighted to have you here at Drift Masters. Is it nice to get that first run out the way? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm really, really stoked to be here. This is amazing. Um, I had a pretty bad crash. Not a really bad crash, but I think I just realized something's still bent in the front end. So I'm going to go back to the team and fix it and hopefully do better on the next run. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Adam. Well, there you go. Might explain a little bit there. there yeah, we go. Lot, there we not go. a lot of confidence. He was driving a little bit more confidence in practice, so maybe he did have a hit with the wall. There was a little coming together, and maybe yeah, not car not 100%. We're going to see that story play out throughout the rest of the weekend with a lot of cars here, I think. But instead of bailing out, David scoring a zero, he still went for the run and put a score on the ball. That could count when we get further through qualifying. We go back to the line though. Yeah, Christoph Romanovsky. This is a man I've been waiting to see oh, back yeah. on the line. What a <laughs> performer he is! 900 horsepower, 2JZ representing Poland here in his home nation. He wants to put a show. 
show on as Romanovsky fires in heavy into that first corner. Oh, too heavy. Wow. That's a big hit with the wall, and he went in way too fast there, Ian. Yeah, he was carrying a lot of speed there, David. I think that is the consequence of doing those straight line initiations that you spoke about earlier. You know, you carry way more speed, and you jump on the handbrake, and I'll break it down in layman's terms. If you've got the rear wheels locked in a straight line, you're just skidding. So you're not actually slowing the car down because the car actually picks up a little bit of speed. So and you can see that here. Watch this. He doesn't really flick the car. He grabs the handbrake and it just washes and it's gone. As soon as he gets out that far, there is no slowing it I'm down. I'm just going to put it out there. It didn't look to me like he, he went in and it didn't look to me like there was any power. So it looked to me like as he transitioned, there was no smoke from the wheels. I think he'd already, I think you already realized by that yeah. point, Dave. I think that was when he didn't get on the throttle because he knew he dragged the handbrake and he thought, wow, I'm not going to slow down here. Just initiated a little bit too late. Yeah. It happens. I mean, he locks the front brake in on, on, on the initiation. I mean, he's been doing this all through practice and it's worked. So yeah. this is just, you know, of course, when it matters, right? right. So that's what always happens he drives they do the practice everything's going pretty good and then when it matters for that qualifying run all of a sudden in an instant it goes wrong now you're in stress now you got to fix the car now you got to get your time you're, you're on the clock now to try and get back out and get your car back out there and Romanovsky now will have a zero on the board and all the stress in the world trying to get back out there so not the position you want to be in he's more worried about his bumper though Dave he may he may sure to be fair to be fair, he's done the marshal's job for them there. He said, you know what, I'm not going to have anyone run for this. I'm going to get it myself, but we know that we're going to need a recovery on the track here to get this car off. It looks to me like the steering on the uh, front right-hand side of the car. Yeah. Um, his passenger side are, you know, when we're in Ireland, the UK, the, the driver's the side. The driver's side, yeah. Yeah, but we're out here in Poland, so there's definitely the, pa the passenger side. A zero for Krzysztof Romanowski from Poland, another wild card this weekend, and it's the first time we're going to see the recovery truck on the track, and for some reason, I feel like it won't be the last. <laughs> no, no, I mean, this is going to be a common uh, occurrence this weekend, Dave, and uh, this truck's going to be doing more miles and probably more laps around the circuit than most of these guys will. Yeah, well, a big difference from the previous stadium events is, is actually these concrete walls. So the mm -hmm. walls look the same as they were in previous events, and we've done co a couple of stadium events in Poatsk and Watch and Touron in the past, but they are now three times the weight. So what was a one-ton block is now a three-ton block, so you ain't moving them. Well, I spoke to the guys, and they said uh, the cars are hitting them like this, and they do not move an inch. So the car is taking all of the force. And that's where we saw last year, big delays, but the blocks move, which means the car itself, it, it's sort of an impact zone, a crumple zone, right? Yep. So the block moves, you don't do as much damage. You get it wrong now, all the damage is internal on the car. So as you can see, a little touch of the wall, that wasn't a spectacular crash, but it's definitely done a massive amount of damage it to the steering. On, it, well, it hurt our feelings. <laughs> yeah, my feelings. You don't want to see these beautiful cars get messed up. <laughs> but what I liked about it was that, you know, you can see, not liked about the crash, but liked about that it's safer for the drivers that the blocks yeah. don't move, so you don't get a hard edge on the next no. block, right? So the car will bounce along, it'll run the rail, like that crazy NASCAR guy everyone saw on the internet of running around <laughs> the outside. Not, not a look that Kevin O'Connell's going for this weekend, but he, the thing about it is that we have got safety for the audience and also I think for the drivers that the car can also dissipate some of that energy as it runs along the roll. There's no dead stops. But a light touch, no movement, you break a steering arm. I think that's definitely the front. It's definitely the front is taken. You're, you're going to pull the front in. Just the way the corners curve, you hit the back end, it slaps the front in. Yep. And now you've got to fix the back and the front. And the front, yeah. Just to make it harder for the guys in the, in the pits. So an interesting start to proceedings here. Uh, you know, we're still in our wild cards. So we haven't even got to the drivers that are competing in the championship. And right now, we've got a couple of those guys just, just stuttering a little bit. We've got, you know, Lopez from Spain, Kozlovski and Romanovski all on zeros. LZ jumping in with a 64. Hipke with a 70. Biagioni with a 78. And Cavia, business as usual, with an 85 at the box. First driver on the track. So, Becky, you're down in the paddock. What's the feeling down there? Surely some tension before this massive event. Absolutely, Dave. Everybody at the moment is glued to their screens to see how this is all going to end up. But as I'm taking a look around the paddock, I want you guys at home to take a look at the size of this stadium. Can you believe how far Drift Masters has come that we are going to be packing out this place? So they say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. We have a lot of our top championship contenders all right next to each other here. We have Juha Rintanen, we have Peter Wiensek over here, and the Shanahan is just beyond me here. All of our fans are able to take a walk around and have a chat with some of these drivers, but I'm telling you, there is gonna be a few nervous heads around the place because it's all coming down to this round. Let's have a little look, see if Laurie Heinenen is in. Oh, we can see, is Laurie around? We can see if we can grab him for a quick chat. As I say, everybody's watching the live stream, seeing where everyone's gonna end up because qualifying means it depends on where you qualify, what end of the bracket that you're gonna end on. So everybody's looking to see where it's gonna, who's gonna end up on this side of the bracket here. Laurie, 
Here we go. Hello. Hi, hi. How are you? Uh, good, good. Uh, all good. Uh, car is feeling uh, not so good, but uh, I'm confident it will be better in this. Can you believe the sound of your car in this stadium? It absolutely screams. Uh, I'm sad because I cannot get to hear it. <laughs> Everyone is just talking about it. It's a good, but. So we have to talk about it. The championship. You're sitting in second right now. It's looking very hopeful. What are your thoughts coming into this weekend? I think uh, for this season we have already achieved what we uh, like set up to, but um, uh, everything from here on now is just winning for us. So we'll try to do our best. So you're in bonus time right now. Everything that happens from this moment on, you're a happy chappy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the track? Uh, the track is uh, quite tricky, but it looks easy, but it's tricky. And uh, I think the surface is all, uh, constantly changing because of the rubber. Do you have any predictions ahead of this weekend? Do you think any of our wild card drivers? I mean, we've got Torin and Kavir back in here. He's not one to be counted out. He doesn't have any championship bothers around him. I feel like he's in it to win it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think we will definitely have surprises. Um, there will be tough, tough guys already in uh, top 32. So <laughs> let's see. Brilliant, Laurie. Thank you so much and good luck in your qualifying run. Well, guys, I'm going to hand it back up to you. I'm going to see if I can grab the Shanahan's in a second. But Dave and Ian, it's all happening down here. Back to you. Thanks, Becky. Great to have Becky down there giving yeah. us the inside scoop because that is so far away from everyone in here. <laughs> the weirdest thing about this being in a stadium is you can see nothing outside the stadium None. because everything is pointing towards the track. So we are back live on the track with another wild car driver, teammate of Adam LZ this weekend. It is David Sposop. And he was sensational in Wash last year. Got himself into the mix as a wild card. Can he do it again? Well, he's going to go for it, Davey. He's not going to want to mess around. Look at this big initiation for Spossop right now as he fires that car to the wall. As the drone gets into the smoke, he now picks up that inner clip, goes for the transition. Oh, and he's a little late on that transition as he fires back in to the wall, goes past the gate. He's absolutely nailed. He's on that qualifying line, exactly where the judges wanted to see him. And now he comes through the center of the circuit, picks up that touch and go, that marker perfectly. And look how early he is into outside zone five as he nails it to the wall, one at last outside zone to go, as Spossop takes it across the line. That is a banger of a run, Dave. A big run and a big statement from David Spossop, 850 horsepower, 2JZ, and I'll tell you, almost an identical car to the one Adam LZ is driving this weekend, so the Spossop team busy all morning fixing things, but what I love about this is the aggression on the entry, fired it at the wall, and you know, at every right not to get away with it, did, as you mentioned, a little bit late on the transition, but made it work, got through it, look at this, right up onto that inner zone, the tire, debris just flying all over the track and this is such a cool shot from the drone we get to see the car at full tilt full speed as Laurie Heinen just said when he was speaking to Becky it looks easy but it's not easy out there and easy to make a mistake I like this as well watch this through that outer zone absolutely spot on not an outer zone touch and go touch and go we call it a reference but you know what I mean that's where they want the rear wheels of the cars going through looked pretty solid to me and I mean not afraid to just have a little tip a little kiss with the wall as he came over the finish line solid run Really aggressive driver. I think he's going to do some damage this weekend if people underestimate him because he's got all that ability, all that talent, and the machinery to do very well. That's a very cool car, Dave. Very cool very car. Cool and you know what? He drives it so well. It, lo it looked to me dialed perfectly in for this circuit. I think he's took a lot of time to get the car set up exactly how he needs it for this circuit. And, and you know what? We see him at these circuit, at these walled events again. He's one of these drivers that loves these, these kind of events. And he comes back and proves why he's here and why he's one of our wild cards. Absolutely. We got another uh, wild card in Matthias Suski. And Suski, 29 years of age, from Poland, 2JZ, 800 horsepower. Who doesn't have a 2JZ <laughs> with 800 horsepower around here? But he's another driver I haven't a, a huge amount of experience watching. I mean, this is what makes it exciting for me. We get to see new names coming through. And there you go, Davis Bossop, 89 on the board, goes ahead of Kavia. We have two drivers in the high 80s, and we're not even out of the wild cards yet. Incredible. It's going to be... It's gonna be uh a spectacular afternoon here oh, in Poland. Qualifying is it just about to get a bit interesting. And this is a very bright, luminous car from Mateusz Suski. And Suski is, uh, he's done stadium events before, but we haven't watched him on a Driftmaster stage before. Let's see how he gets on here. Could be a wild card. Yeah, it could be a wild card, but he could be coming in here feeling wild. And he looks wild at the moment on that initiation, fires the car in, gets himself set up. He was a little late there on outside zone one, but now he starts to get himself dialed on that qualifying line. Comes through that inner clip, nicely done. 
uh, struggled there on the transition, seemed to slow the car down on the handbrake. It didn't really work for him, and now he's starting to fall out of that long outside zone. And can he pick that qualifying line back up again to the touch and go he goes? That little reference point picked up nicely. And he's out to outside zone five, but he scrubbed the speed. He knew he was going in too hot there, and that's affected the line in six as well, and that was, had all the potential. Yeah, I mean, no shortage of aggression. Uh, he definitely wanted to take the back uh, taillight out of the car. However, some pretty big errors along the way, you know, tried to, to adjust a couple of times and the car didn't react the way he expected it to, meaning that I feel, from my perspective, this is going to be really hampered on his score, especially that inner zone. A couple of those things where, you know, you could see when he transitioned back, he just, like, he wanted to tip the handbrake, but it locked kind of one wheel or something, and then obviously he just loses the momentum there. Um, just got a little right, he falls out of the zone at this point, so he's in the middle of the track. You know, judges want to see them right up on the wall, he's kind of a little bit way off that. Transition here though, he kind of starts picking it back up again, does get to the touch and go, transitions back to this wall. Look at this shot as he comes in, and then this is a little too hot and heavy here as he fires the car into the wall, loses the tail light, um, but it's, it's affecting the front wheels. Watch the steering on the car again a little bit way where it goes off the line. So yeah, it's gonna hurt his score. But I love the excitement of it. I like the, the ability to go out there and just put on a show. And that's what we're here to watch. The judges definitely not watching it from that perspective. Me, me and you, Ian, yeah, we're fans. We, we love a good yeah, show. Yeah, we love a good show. We're, we're, big, we're big fans. So we're golden buzzer moment for us. 62 on the board for Mateusz Suski. And uh, he'll be happy with that for his first ever uh, you know, professional run here at the Drift oh, sure. European Championship. We now move in to regular business all comers. As I said, the guys that have been fighting it out all year, yeah. five rounds, they're still in the mix, they're still surviving. And the first up of those will be Henry Hampa in this S15, 800 horsepower, 2JZ from Finland, ex Finnish champion. Hasn't had the best of luck with this new machine this year, and now he's trying to turn that fortune around here in the finals. He did a good job of getting out to that wall. Nice on the inner zone. Carlos, absolutely exceptional. A little wide from the inside zone. Snappy transition back from Henry Hampa, the Finnish driver, sending that car out to the wall. Rare man to wear a spoiler this weekend with those catch fences but he's doing it over the touch and go as he transitions back Henry Hampa getting through his own smoke and very oh. heavy and that's why you don't wear the spoiler because it gets knocked off on the wall in the last corner and he's absolutely destroyed the back end of the car it's entertaining to watch there's nothing left of Henry Hampa's car and you know what that was a spectacular run but it had its errors it certainly did have its errors but you know what I think he was willing to risk it all there it had all of the potential there for me I'd like to say look back for the initiation because no he did he get he he got there bang on time to outside zone one. He stayed in there. He picked up that inner zone nicely. And you can see him in the car. Very dialed, super concentrated as he works his way around. this custom built circuit here at the PG in Aradov way. And you can see big clutch kicks across the circuit. Handbrake drags to position the car into these outside zones. Does a very nice job. I think that that one mistake where he took the back end off of the car, yeah. I think that's the only real big mistake it is, to take away it, from it. It's a big one. At this point, we're, we're sitting here, we're admiring the car. We're saying, oh, if that was my car, I'd polish it on you know, a Saturday. <laughs> I get my three-stage polish out. Everything's going great. The next thing, bang, there's no back end of the car whatsoever. Oh, he was wheel onto he, the wall at that point. really deep. And he's lucky he didn't do any more damage to the suspension. He may have, but he, it's his rear tire that actually stopped. And the entire back end of the car flips over underneath the car. Are you not entertained? I mean, I am. I am, Dave. I feel sad because this is one of my favorite cars on the grid. Beautiful car. We'll, we'll take a memory here in memory of the back of <laughs> what Henry Hampton's like? car. You, you, it was your fault. This you, is what it used to look like, guys. It doesn't you, look like this anymore. You cursed he, him saying that he shouldn't have run a spoiler. No, he shouldn't have run a spoiler. And he gets a 65. But I think that just a big error with the wall. Up until then, I think he was he was on for a big score. Yeah. But then just that, that, that error. And the Finnish fans out in force uh, for Henry Hampa. And our start line marshal, Marston. Handsome man. Yep. And he's got a lot of suntan because he's been standing out on these start lines pretty much five rounds in the sunshine this year. But uh, next up, we have Enver Haskasap. Enver Haskasap is on the start line in this S15. He's taken uh, an approach of maximum attack in practice, and it's worked for him. Let's see if it'll work from here in qualifying. Here yeah, well, we go, the North Cypriot driver. What can he do as he flicks the car from left to right across the circuit in to that first outside zone? Nice and close to the wall. No damage, though, picked up for a technical driver is Enver Haskasep, a little uh, shallow on that inside clipping point, but now works his way back onto that qualifying line, into the wall he goes. He's going to stick it all the way to the wall. Look at that back bumper dragging as Enver Haskasap doing an absolutely beautiful job so far. Can he keep this up? He's really early to outside zone five, and that's paid off for him now as he pushes the throttle once again to the floor in outside zone six across the line. Haskasap, that was beautiful. That's a great run. Great run. You know, Enver this year hasn't had the best turn of fortune, hasn't had the best qualifying runs. 
in fact, even struggling to get through qualifying. But if there's any event where you're going to do it, and this is the one, the biggest drift event of all time, and you can see he approached that run with a, with a certain level of calculated aggression. He was in all the zones. I think that's going to be a good score. I mean, there was from looking at it from the outside, there wasn't much I could pick that, you know, could have been a little closer here and there, but when it comes to a fundamental line around the track, it was pretty spot on. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, well, for me, it was, I'm going to say it's probably one of the best runs we've seen so far in a qualifying. It was very, very calculated. It wasn't slowing the car too much. There wasn't a lot of use of handbrake. Like we say, that front inside zone was probably the only mistake for me that I would say. But look at this. It's so, it's exactly where the judges wanted to see him. And yeah, I just think the only thing they'll probably mark him down is just, a, you know, a little bit more speed, a little bit more aggression. There was a couple of handbrake drags just into those outer zones. It just made a little safer. It looked good because he's close to the wall, but how he got there wasn't like super aggressive. Like he wasn't firing the car. And then again, you've seen Henry Hampe do that and go straight into the wall. So what is the correct approach? <laughs> Get a score on the board or smash into the wall and lose. Either way, you're kind of ended up with the same score, right? You've got to get course. absolutely perfect. You go too little aggression or too much, an 82 on the board for Enver Haskasap. We don't know where the cutoff will be today, but that's a strong statement for the first half of qualifying. I wasn't too far wrong there either. I said it was going to be one to trouble the top there. Yeah, there <laughs> so you go. You up in the eight. Three up. drivers now up in the 80s. I mean, we're, we're rattling through these qualifying runs, but you know, we're waiting for that. What's going to be a 90? What's, what does that look like? Well, the judges will answer that question for us. If we see one, Maciek Jarkovic, our next driver from Poland, is the oldest driver on the grid. He certainly is. Yeah, yeah. 800, 800 horsepower 2JZ. I just keep saying that over and over again. Everyone's got an 800 <laughs> horsepower 2JZ. Firing into that first car. Oh, a little bit of a sketchy entry. Kind of got a little bit too much angle, the wrong direction. Slowed it there, but he made it work. He balanced it back on the throttle. And look at this, close to, oh, another kind of strange transition for um, Jarkovic as he had to kind of handbrake to get himself back going again. Just dipping a wheel into that outer zone as Maciek Jarkovic as he fires through the track. Will he get the touch and go? It's over the touch and go. Not the correct line, but it's okay. And a little bit of a slowdown into that last zone. So a couple of errors there, but you know what? He's making all the zones work. And across the line it goes Maciek Jarkovic. And yeah, there was a weird initiation there. He just kind of got away from him a little bit. Yeah, I think he, I think he caught himself out there a little bit. And I think that it, that happened twice. That happened on that second inside zone and it happened on initiation. He kind of didn't realize that the car was going to go all the way over. And I think he realized as soon as he flicked it that far, he knew, ah, this is going to really mess up my initiation. And he didn't really get as close to the wall as he probably would have hoped to have done. And he did it here as well. As he transitions, watch this, carries big angle. And the car is almost 90 degrees to the wall at one point. And uh, that really upset the line. And then he kind of had to start making the corrections and it, it puts him off those outside zone entries to where the judges wanted to see him. So I think that's going to really affect the score. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I think, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I said the, the balance of how aggressive you go, you try and throw caution to the wind, you end up in the wall, you've got damage to fix and you're not going to get a great score. You go too safe, again, the judges know you should be doing more. So it's threading the needle here. You've got to be absolutely pinpoint perfect. And there's no generosity on the judges' part to say, we're going to give you a few extra points for being a bit more stylish. It's all about the criteria. A 61 for Maciek Jarkovic from Poland as we head back to the start line to one of my favorite cars on the grid. This Wiesmeyer from Switzerland in the GR Supra, 1,010 horsepower. This thing is beautiful. Hey, also unusually, the actual engine that came in the car <laughs> is still in the car. It's a brand new car, brand new engine. This was built from a brand new car. Yep. This is a it's just a spectacular build. And there's two of them. We'll see them back to back. Yep. But he hasn't, you know, he's had some tough times getting used to this, the Swiss driver. Can Meyer do better here in the stadium? It just absolutely closed your eyes if you see this car go into that first corner. But look at this from Meyer as he fires through. Not thinking about how expensive and new this car is as he fires on the inside of that zone. This is more like it from the Swiss driver as he fires out to outer zone three. Oh, oh. and a shutdown, a problem with the car. And it just goes to show the minute. You think it's all going right and drifting. It just turns the other way. Heartbreaking. And you know what I was going to say? I was going to say, I watched him in practice earlier. I think him and Eves went out to, uh, sorry, him and Joshua Reynolds went out together, the two team cars. I think it was like final round, Dave, we'll just go out together and, have, and get one of those photos, you know, the video, the highlight reel. And they were both absolutely on it. And Eves Meyer's runs were perfect on the walls. The line was really nice. And I thought, hey, this could be the round where he comes alive. And, and right here, I was thinking, he's on it. He's on an absolute flyer. And then the car lets him down. Yeah, that's right. It's some sort of shutdown to me. I'm not sure mechanical. To be honest, I think it, looks, it looks electrical electronic, to me. Electronic, yeah. Something strange happening with the car because it's still on power there as he comes off the track. So it's not a differential or a gearbox. And uh, 
You know, the driver sitting on a zero after the first run, it's, it's harsh. You know, you're going to come in, do or die on that second run. I can guarantee you the second half of qualifying is going to be very, very interesting here because it's going to be such a tight margin between in and out of that top 32. It certainly is, yeah. Look, and these guys have had five rounds of hard competition already, and the cars now are asking the question, can they do this final round? Can they push through and get these guys to the podium, to the championship step? We move it back to the line. It's going to be Joshua Reynolds, Yves Meyer's teammate from Switzerland, 27 years old. B58, another super with the correct engine under the bonnet. What can he do? He's had a really tough year so far as his debut at the Driftmasters European Championship. And now comes in in this incredible looking A90 Supra, fires it to the wall, stecks on the throttle now, starts to pick up those inside zones and washes wide of that one as he fires back across nice and early into outside zone four as he gets it absolutely dialed. Looking good so far. It's Joshua Reynolds as he goes for the touch and go, gets it dialed, looks for outside zone five, back through his own smoke, treacherous as he gets there nice and early on the throttle, foot brake locked. This is it, one more outside zone to go, and he's across the line safely, and that is a real nice run from Reynolds. Very tactical run, you can see making adjustments when things weren't going his way, he was able to move, maneuver the car to get them going back. <laughs> I'm looking at that crossover with the amount of smoke these cars are throwing up now, and you're almost going into your own smoke, yeah. and then you got a wall somewhere in there that you got to figure out. I think muscle memory's got to be the way they're, they're negotiating that. I'm just assuming where the timing is. Joshua Reynolds doing a good job, as you say. Could have been a little closer to the inner zone three here. Just, you know, kind of washed through it. Not too bad. But everything else was pretty okay. Got through everything. You know, was it the most stylish, flared run in the world? No. Was it a solid technical run the judges will like? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I agree. I think it was just what the judges wanted to see. Yeah, it didn't have the impact. It wasn't the big 90-point score that, you know, we'll probably be looking at later on as qualifying heads through. But for me, it was a good run. He, he threw caution to the wind on outside zone five. He went there very, very early, and I'm not sure how the judges will look at that one. But for me, I liked it. I'll be honest and say that one of the things from <laughs> you can see the suspension travel on the front <laughs> of the car here is absolutely look how jacked that is because the rear tire is so much grip it's lifting the front of the car insane so wait for the score for Joshua Reynolds it drops in it's a 72 for the Swiss driver as he will uh, I presume think about improving on that because I'm not sure 72 will be enough I mean I'm, we don't know we, we, don't ne know. we never know we don't know but we move on to our next driver it is going to be uh, Christian Samre from Estonia and he has the E82 plus, it's the bad bunny. Yeah. 800 horsepower with a NASCAR Dodge engine, which is just a thing you shouldn't put in the BMW, but he's done it anyway. And the Estonian fires into that first corner as he just misses that outer zone. They almost misses all that outer zone. Very tentative so far from Samre as he fires through inner zone. Smooth, but not a lot of angle. Back out to the outer zone again, missing that outer zone. The judges are going to be bleeding away points here as he comes through the course. He's missed the entire zone there. He does get to the touching zone. He's got to make a move here and get these last two outer zones where he will be in trouble. Oh, gets deep into the wall. That's more like it from the Estonian. But he's missing that last outer zone and a little bit of a spin over the finish. Like, just didn't look fully in control of that one. Ian. No, we see him in Germany at Feropolis in his BMW 1 series. So this is a different chassis. He had engine problems with that car. So he switched chassis to his E36 BMW. And for me, I think he's not as comfortable in that car as he is uh, in his BMW 1 series. And I think it shows he had a big impact with the wall earlier on in practice as well. So maybe feeling a little bit shaken and taking things a little tentative. But staying out of, out of those outside zones is not what the judges wanted to see. And that's going to really hurt his score as we see a replay here does a good job on this inside clipping zone but apart from that there was a lot of mistakes to go through and pick out as Christian finished up his run yeah I'm just I'm having a look at, at the run again and I'm just wondering if the judges are going to be incredibly harsh on this one because there was so many mistakes throughout the run um, not sure what way we're going to see the scores drop in so the spin over the finish line counted as a zero, Ian. That's oh. what we're hearing from the... Yeah, you can see it. The back wheels went over the finish line before the front wheels, which is, by anyone's standards, a spin, right? Yeah. So I it's mean, a zero. He may, he may be the most well-dressed man on the grid, but he gets a zero this time around. I, th I thought he was across it. They, the judges had a look at it on the replay, and the rear wheels passed it first. So that's the, the key, that he was over-angling as he was going over the, the finish line. But anyway, it's a zero on the board. 
And Ian, we move on to our next driver, and it's going to be Tobias Kuschan from Poland, champion uh, in 2022 in Poland. 760 horsepower and E92 M62. This uh, E92 right out to the wall. This is what we wanted to see from the Oscar Kuschan as he flies through the, oh, the inner zone. Nice big angle transitions, but it's almost a tough getting back on angle again. But he does a great job. Look at this shot as he flies out to the outside of the track. A lot of smoke laid down by Tobias Pushout as he fires through the, uh, the... Oh, this is where he's got to be clever and careful. He does stall up the car, gets it to the wall. This is more like it for Pushan as he comes across the line. You know what? He's, he's a feast or a famine, Tobias Pushan. Sometimes he has struggles, sometimes he's exceptional. Maybe this weekend is his weekend. Yeah, I mean, look, I was going to say, we've, we've seen glimpses of highlights from Tobias Pushan throughout the season, and this kind of really has started to come together for him now. The final round This is a very nice run. Uh, uh, through the circuit from Tobias Pushan did a good job, risked it all on outside zone five. I didn't think he was going to slow the car down enough uh, to make that outside zone, but you know what? Doing exactly what the judges want to see. Like we say, not really bouncing the back end off the walls um, or risking anything at this point, but it is only the first qualifying run. You know, they still have another run to get in the bag. And Tobias Pushan doing a good job. Yeah, I like the run. I think, you know, when you see the big smoke, the big angle, that's where, you know, the judges will want to see angle without slowing dramatically. Yeah. You, know, you don't be sitting on the lock stops just going nowhere. But big angle gives you that style, gives you that flair, allows a little bit more smoke to kick up from the back of the car. It just looks more fluid. You have more time on the transitions. And that was a nice run for me. I think that there's a driver that looks a little bit more comfortable than some others on this circuit. Yeah, he certainly does. He looks dialed. And in. And another driver that I think that's got it worked out for this weekend. I think they've got it absolutely figured out in their mind. And they know what they're doing, and they just go rinse and repeat every single run and see what they can do on the second qualifying run. So we wait for the score to drop in for Tobias Pushen, the Polish driver, trying to do everyone here at the stadium proud. And a 76 on the board for him, fifth position at the moment. That's not a bad score. Will it be enough, no, though? No, it's, it's a good score. And I think 76, I mean, yeah. Sure, we, we, we want to see above an 80 really to start talking about safety in the top yeah. 32. But it's something to work with. You know, it doesn't really matter if you get a 76. You can get another 10 points in your second run, your 86, you're in the game. And that's what it's all about. David Karkoshik on the line. A man used to these stadium circuits, podiumed a lot of them in the past. David Karkoshik in this Nissan S15, firing into that first corner, representing Poland this weekend. A lot of the Polish drivers feeling the weight of expectation of their home fans here in this record sellout venue. As David Karkoshik fires through the inner circle, looking very smooth. You can see the experience of these tracks starting to count now for David Karkoshik, who hasn't had the best of seasons by his standards, but now looks like he's going to try and finish strong here in qualifying. Oh, a little bit of a hesitation as he comes out to that outer zone. Just a little, you know, had to dial a bit of the speed out, but everything else pretty spot on from Karkoshik as he comes through. We've been waiting a while to see this side of Karkoshik again, Ian. <laughs> and I mean, I think even he, as in the car, Dave, throws a punch across the car and says, that's how you do it. I think he was really happy with that run. It looked good. It had all the impacts onto the walls and uh, visually as well. And I think Karkoshik there was uh, was feeling comfortable in the car. You know, this is a new chassis for him this season. Stepped into the car and didn't really have a turn of fortune with it. And look at this. I mean, looking confident. Look at the way he's laser focused, Dave. Looking at the wall looking at those zones, trying to get himself positioned exactly where he needed to be. For me, I, I liked it. I, you know what? Is it going to break the 80s? I'd like to think so. You know what? I, I mean, I'm looking back on this, on this run. I just look at the laser focus of David Karkoshi. He looks like he's punching a wall as he goes <laughs> through the track. He's that laser focused on what he's doing. I mean, it means a lot to him. I mean, finishing strong is huge in this championship. It gives you that boost of confidence going into next year that you feel like, you know, I haven't had the best season, but I still have it. I can still do it. I can still hang with the best. And Karkoshi looking, you know, he did a great uh, finish to the season last year. An 83 on the board for him, third position so far. And he finished top four last year in the stadium event. And I think there is kind of speciality, the special move. Special for, move for David Karkosh. Just a little look around the stadium, guys, just to let you know that right now we have a limited capacity to 15,000 people on qualifying day. Limited capacity. This is more that's been on a drift event all year for Driftmasters. So <laughs> when you think about it, how busy it's going to be tomorrow is pretty crazy. Timor Lipsky, how this young man is back on the grid, I have no idea. Huge crash of practice, yeah. Ian. Absolutely tore the front end off the car. You can see the damage still there. Is it 100%? We're about to find out, but they've been rallying to get this one back on grid. Yeah, we certainly have. As Timor Lipsky, the Ukrainian driver, now fires that brand new carbon Kevlar Supra to the wall, but he messed up. He stayed in that outside zone. One, two, long. Whoa, wow! How 
how did he even pull that one off? I thought he's going to take the front end of that super clean off on the wall, and he's going to risk it all this weekend for a spot in top 32. And look at this, as the Ukrainian goes for it, hits that touch and go, he's coming across the track very fast. A little wobble and a waver, though, as he gets into outside zone five, keeps it dialed, he's on the foot brake for that final outside zone, slows the car down, but absolutely destroys the tyres and the wall. All I want in life, <laughs> all I want in my entire life right now, is a replay of that inner tip zone on the wall. What did he, how, how did, he, how did he even get away with that? This car was in a bad state in practice. He comes out, you know what, Timor, take it, take it, just chill. Take it, take easy, it easy. Yeah. He threw this thing in crazy on that run. Now this inner zone, I mean, he is talking millimeters here. He transitions back, look at this. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Where would you even see that anywhere else in the world of drifting? This camera angle, watch. That is just crazy. Phenomenal. Absolutely perfect Phenomenal. from Timo Lipsky. But it was a massive mistake in that run, Dave. There was, missed, yeah. He missed the first inside zone. I hate to say I it. I know, I was getting excited. But the reason I think he got close to the wall on the front clip, on yeah. the second front clip, was because he ran so wide in outside zone one. Yeah, well, he's only... Six, I'm sorry to burst only, the bubble. He's only 16 years of age. Yeah, I know, it's you know, ridiculous. So it's ridiculous what he's doing out here. It's great to see the youth of the sport coming through. And also, we've got a couple of guys out there. You know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Timur Lipsky, Ite Sada. These yep. are, you know, 15, 16 years of age at the top level already. <laughs> Give them two or three years and you'll be know. Superhuman who, yeah, by you'll, the time everyone 20. in the world will know who these guys are. But uh, Timur Lipsky still put a score on the board and it's a 78, so not bad for the error he had on the run. He could tidy that up. So I'm just going to put it out there and say, if it wasn't, if he stayed, if he came away from outside zone one a little early and picked up inside zone one, that could have been top it, and, and Kevin O'Connor agrees, that could have top qualified. And it could have been enough to get him in the show. So, you know, he's, he knows what he has to do now. We move on to our next driver, Christian Erlinson and the Subaru BRZ over a thousand horsepower. I'll tell you one thing, Christian Erlinson, you, you always talk about it, suffers a little bit with his nerves, said he was nervous today. He's just got to forget that now. This is a track that will swallow you up if you don't win confident. And Erlinson throws into that first corner. He's being cautious, Dave. Yeah, look, I yeah. spoke to him as well, and he said, I'm super nervous. He said, not only the fact that there's a lot of people here, he said, but the concrete walls, this sort of circuit. He said, I know I've driven them thousands of times before. He said, but I still get those nerves. And he was super nervous earlier on today, and I think that shows that now he's feeling a little comfortable. He's getting himself into those zones. He's flirting with the walls. He's taking the back end off. He's putting towel lights to the concrete. Finish of that run, Dave, was lovely, but the, the initiation of first outside zone was, was not what the judges were looking for. He was building confidence. Because was, the first yeah. corner, I said, oh, that's a very tentative approach. And then he went absolutely bananas for the second half of the course. Took the back end off the car. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, look, if he would have just got to that first outside zone and fulfilled it, that could have been a really nice run. And I think that would have been the, probably one of the best runs of Christian Erlson so far this year. I just love this inner, this, I mean, an inner wall run. And it, this, I think this, this must, be the, for you this you must be the yeah the only circuit in the world that has an inner wall clip. I don't think I've ever seen that before. We're the only place that does it, Dave. And I'm glad because it's very <laughs> exciting. I mean, every time we see it, he just absolutely smashes the back end of the car off on that outer zone three. And look at this, just missing that touch and go. I mean, it, it does get to the wall here and there, but the first corner, you're right, just a little tentative, just yeah. a little bit of an error on the way in. Uh, beautiful looking car though, and I mean, just to see this level of machinery. I mean, we're talking 20 years now since the first European drift event. And look how far we've come. These guys, well, they've got the right time. You know, the sun's coming in. Yep. They've got the solution. A lampshade on their head, I think, is what <laughs> they've done. They've gone down to a local uh, hardware store, I think. 64 on the board for Christian Erlinson, 11th position. And uh, not a bad score, but I, I, it will need improving. I think we, anything we see in the 70s or 60s, I'm not going to guarantee that's no. going to get you to the show. Norbert Samich, he's already got the back end of the car completely taped up, which means he's been having fun in practice. The Hungarian driver ready to go. Look there, you can see the boys are ready. Everyone's ready. Norbert Samich about to take this one into the first corner. Big initiation. Yeah, slowed it down massively though, Dave. Jumped on the handbrake and really started scrubbing speed. I was waiting for the big flick onto the wall and never really came uh, off for Nova Zamic. And as you say, back end already destroyed. And big mistake there on that transition. Slowed the car down once again. I think these guys are being a little tentative, but Laurie Heinlein said the track changing constantly. Is the grip now affecting these guys as more and more runs get laid down? As Norbert Zamic gets himself into the second to last outside zone, hammers the throttle through the floor, lights up the tyres, and absolutely destroys the back end once again. That had hopes in there. There was glimmers of, of real brilliance, but 
for me, there were so many mistakes creeping in. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with Gene. Uh, for me, it was it was like he wanted it to be wilder. But yeah, it just, yeah. it just didn't work out that way. And uh, Norbert Samich doing a, a reasonably good job. It was smooth. I, there was no major, you know, craziness in there. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the best way to approach this is because yeah. you've got to look at it from many dis different perspectives and say, is the safe run the right option? You know, not break up your car and end up in the wall, or is, you're better off having two goes at the big run because if an 85 or more is the cutoff, which it may or may not be, we have no idea. Um, could be lower. I mean, I'm looking at it now saying it could go a little bit lower than that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is all just speculation. We have absolutely no idea. We have no idea. Yeah, I don't even know why they put us in this position. No, no, we're, no. we're struggling to understand what's going on. But to me, yeah, it was a good run, not a great run. Um, still more in the tank, I think. I know Norbert Samich. He's a man that likes to run a few walls, but he knock off a few taillights. <laughs> I was just going to say, I mean, he, he, he might go too hard, don't they? He's done that before. Yeah. Actually, the first man I've ever seen go over a wall once in Driftmaster. Yeah. Remember that in Austria? Yeah. Yeah. He went over the wall. 77 on the board for Norbert Zamich from Hungary. Seventh position for him right now. Um, score is pretty, you know, reasonable at the moment. Nothing too crazy. It's going to build confidence amongst all the drivers. Beautiful car on the line next. It's Max Miller from the Ukraine. F22 2 Series 2 JZ. 1,000 horsepower. Fresh build this year. And Max ready to attack this track with Max Attack. Oh, I like it. It took six rounds when we got there in the end. There he goes. And he is full max attack now. Oh, I thought he was going to slow that car down massively, but he didn't jump straight into it. Dabbing the foot brake, getting that car dialed into that first outside zone. Now starts to put it where it needs to be. A little shallow on that inside clip, but I wouldn't want to put the front end of that immaculate F22 onto a wall. But he puts the back end there, no worries whatsoever to Max Miller now as he comes through the center of the circuit, looks for that touch and go, times the transition perfectly. But he gets to five very late, and he only fulfills a quarter of it now as he goes for the final outside zone, so Max Miller absolutely flying. Abs the rundown on that car when it comes off throttle, the amount of anti lag is just echoing around the stadium right now. It's absolutely crazy. You see the Ukrainian flags waving for Max Miller. Um, it's amazing to see the amount of support from all corners of the world here this weekend. I was just going to say, Dave, that I think that this event has dragged in fans from every single driver's country because I don't think I've seen not one flag from any driver. Mean, every nation. Every nation is here. Like, there's Hungarian flags, there's Czech Republic flags. I said to uh, Klim Van Ort in the pits earlier, I said, you, well, you're the only Dutch driver. I said, did you bring any fans? He went, yeah, yeah, I brought like 30 fans with me. But they all came out. They all came out and they've got the flags and they're waving them. Well, that's the beautiful thing to see. You know, a lot of the championships and we've seen before, you know, everyone comes, watches the drifting, have fun. This is now about national pride. Yeah. Someone wants their driver, regardless of who they are, you know, there's a couple of Finnish guys in there, a couple of Irish guys in there, a couple of Polish guys in there, in the mix for the championship. And they want to see their nation win. And they're all here in Poland cheering them on. Look at that, an 85 on the board for Max Miller. Second position so far. Big score, and he's been waiting on one of those this year. Yeah, I think it was all down to, to the flair, you know, taking the risk. And again, if it wasn't for those little mistakes, I think that would have been a real banger. Look at this, view inside the car of Mikkel Johansson's BMW. The Swedish driver sits on the line, E46, two Jay-Z, a thousand his power this time, Dave. He's uh, upped his game, he unoed everyone else on the line and said, here we go, look at this. Oh, he's absolutely ripping, no messing around. Final round, time to get it done. Mikkel Johansson this year really been making some moves and proving some points, but he missed most of outside zone one. Time to put it back together now. As he looks for that qualifying line, dials it on angle, but he's on a very shallow line as he now gets in to outside zone four, puts foot to floor as he looks for the transition across the circuit to outside zone five, back for his smoke he comes, but he's too late and he's shallow once again. As Johansson looks for that final outside zone, he just about gets there. Across the line he goes, and that was scrappy. I think, you know, it's all about timing. I yeah. think that, you know, from that run for, for Johansson, to me it looked like very much so that he was, he mistimed his transition, it put him too early on the lines, he had to work the car a little bit, and that can affect your, your psyche across the run. If it's starting to flow, if it feels natural, you add that little bit of flair. When it doesn't flow naturally, you're just trying to adapt to get back onto those outer zones. And, you know, Mikel doing a little bit of that throughout the run, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's a good run. There was not too many mistakes, but then the timing on that last transition for me, judges watched it. It's heading straight back across the track towards us here in the tower. 
Um, when I say tower, what I mean is the whole place is a tower. So we're just <laughs> in a window in the middle of the stadium. But from this perspective, it looked to me like he transitions too early. So as he gets to that zone, he transitions back, but he just slows down and then it misses this outer zone. So yeah. the only real error in it, everything else looked pretty solid to me. Yeah, exactly that, Dave. It was just, uh, like you say, missed timing, put him on the wrong place. And uh, I think it's going to massively hurt the score as we see some beautiful slow-mo shots of Mikko Johansson. You can really see all the inner workings of his car. 64 on a board, 15th position at the moment for the Swedish driver. Yeah, good point you made earlier, Ian. I mean, this is the first time the drivers will have practiced uh, as the temperatures are cooling. Yeah. So this is the first time the sun has set and the track conditions will now become, there'll be less grip because it was very warm in here earlier on. The sun was beaming down on the track. Now we're starting to get the sunset. Losing that little grip. So it's going to be interesting to see how these guys get on. Next up, we got Alexander Kosahov from the Ukraine. Did an absolute number on Connor Shanahan in Germany in the last round. Connor had to take uh, two goals that beat him. He came out of nowhere. Kostov showing that he's a real contender here as he fires through that first corner. 2JZ under the bonnet as he fires back to the outside zone. Look at this, rubbing the rear end of that 180 all the way around the outside of this track. Nice run so far from Alexander Kosov. And you know what? He's one of those guys that at any moment can't surprise. He could win the whole event here. He's building confidence throughout the season and another strong qualifying run and strong finish. Alexander definitely won not to be tampered with this weekend. Wow. That, that was a very good run. But he's been doing every run very good for the second half of the season. You gotta say, he really has. improving. He has, he has, and you know what? He, like you say, he was, he, he did, a, he pulled a good card on Conor Shanahan in Germany. Shanahan came out and thought it would have been a, an easy win, and it certainly wasn't. And he had to work for it. For me, Kosahov here, you know, I think he's shown his card a little early because I think that was an absolute banger of a qualifying run. This really, technically, Dave, there isn't a lot wrong with this run. No, I think this is one of those, you know runs where the judges will be thankful he's everywhere <laughs> he, everywhere he said he would be now you're really just looking at flair and aggression yeah you know what i mean you're looking at flair and aggression um to say where where does it sit because the line to me was pretty solid i think the line was good i think it's flair aggression did he did he risk a lot out there you can see it, the left foot breaking a lot of people wondering you know what that what that's all about when you're locking the front wheel with your left foot in order for the rear wheels to stay spinning and you can actually slow the front end of the car down while not coming off the throttle. That's why you left a brake. At least those are the notes I've been given. Fountain of knowledge, Dave, you are. Very intuitive. There we go. An 88 wow. on the board for Alexander Kosahov. And you know what? I think it had everything they yep. wanted. And I, it did. I'm, I'm the back bumper was on the wall pretty much the whole way round. Totally agree. 88 on the board for Alexander Kosahov. We now have Axel Francois from France on the line. We go from the Ukraine to France, and we've got all the nations here this weekend. <laughs> got all the engine setups too. This man has a GT86, but it has a 1UZ with 700 horsepower, and the turbo is in the back of the car. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't look it's like Axel Francois. He is a hell of a driver as he fires into that first corner. Francois, a little lock up on the front brakes, steadies the car on that outer zone, but a little bit of wobbling as he comes through. Oh, he's missed that outer zone massively. And the inner zone good, but that's a big mistake on that first corner, missing that inner zone. And now he's back onto that outer zone, outer line, taking the rear end of the car. The GT86, very low amount of overhang on the back of these cars, meaning they've got to be super aggressive to the walls. And Mom was putting the tire on the walls to get the perfect score. And he fires out. Axel Bronson well. doing a good job. You can see the smoke bellowing from the car. That inner clip on that first corner was just a little, a little bit too much of a mistake for me to score, you know, really high up the order. Yeah, I, I agree completely, and, and you'll see it on the replay, Dave. I think he, he stayed in outside zone one way too early, Watch uh, too late. Watch this, he gets into it, stays in it, he stays in it, and he keeps staying in it. Look at the shallow angle, and he continues to stay in it and misses that inside zone. And I think that is where it all went wrong because then that really upsets the rest of the line for the rest of the circuit. And he has to work hard to get it back into those zones. Picks that one up easy enough, though, on the transition to get. Just didn't have the wow factor even. Judges will be taking that one into consideration. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind to agree. And I think it's a, it's a good run, not a great run. As, yeah. as I talk about, he gets the zones, but not all the way to the wall. It's tough in a GT86. You got to remember, you go too deep in the walls. That's your rear wheel running the wall. You can do suspension damage. You can DB the tire, and that's the run over. So you got that. They're a great chassis, but that's the one design flaw that they're very short on the overhang, very little on the rear end. And, and you go to the wall, you can do major damage very quickly. And even where they have the space to put a rear radiator on these cars, there isn't a whole lot of space. A 61 for Axel Francois, 19th position so far, and I'm, I'm just getting more and more nervous for these drivers as we head later on to the second half of qualifying. What score is going to be enough and how many drivers are going to be eliminated almost off the bat? Exactly that. We go back to the start line to Clint Van Oort, the Dutch driver. 
this year, not really finding any kind of fortune. Missed out in Germany, put in an absolute banger of a qualifying run, but the cutoff was so high that he just didn't get there. Can it be the weekend for Klim Van Aert? He's willing to risk it all. He said he's going to put the car to the wall, and he does, as Klim Van Aert now absolutely nails outside zone one. And look at this, closer to the wall than anyone else on that line. Lovely job so far from the Dutch driver, and this is really nice from Klim Van Aert. Can he pick up that touch and go? Can he get the transition time perfectly? He can, as he balances the car perfectly across the circuit. Nice and early to outside zone five. On the foot break he goes to get it dialed in. One last outside zone to go as Klim Van Aert absolutely ruins the car to win qualifying. I've got to say, that's a spectacular run. The rear wow. boot lid flew off the car <laughs> on the last corner. Klim Van Aert, I spoke to him yesterday and he said, look, I'm not winning any championships. I don't care anymore. I am coming here to do what I came here to do, which is put on a show. And I don't think anybody watching at home or here in the stadium could argue that was a show. That was a hell of a show, Dave. He risked it all. And you know what? I've been winding him up all weekend. I'm very good friends with Klim Van Aert away from the scene. And I just said to him, if I make you angry, Maybe you'll drive harder. And he said, I'm already angry. I want to win this. I want a podium. And I think it proved it right there because that had all the aggression, all the flair, the style, and the line for me was, was very, very good as well. Well, I think it's for me, it's a risk factor. I mean, he went deep in all the walls. Yeah. You know, at any moment, that could have been a big disaster. And again, the last wall, he absolutely <laughs> obliterated the back of the car. There was marshals running for about 10 minutes afterwards, picking up bits of yellow parts here and there. Look at this. Watch absolutely, the boot lid. Watch the boot lid. Buries it in the wall just here. Watch the rear boot lid. Boom. Boom. Leaves the room, says, I've had enough of you. <laughs> And oh. 90 on the board for Clint Van Oot. What a run. Do you know what? Oh. That, that's redemption for Germany, Dave, where he didn't make it. I think that's yeah. the aggression coming back You know out. what? He will be absolutely delighted with that. Oh. Unbelievable run. He won't run. know it, though. No, he won't know it. He'll be mildly <laughs> amused. Yeah, but then, <laughs> then he'll come back out going, what do we do more after 90? And we're on to our next driver. It yeah. is going to be Manuel Vaca from Italy. Yeah, certainly is Manuel Vaca in this uh, S. Uh, 54 turbo a BMW E36 and fires through that first outside zone. Looks to be like that clipping point. Now the bar is starting to get raised. Now everyone's starting to feel it. Now I'm not sure on that transition, Dave, as he come through that inside zone. It was a bit wandering and wavering. He kind of followed the curb, but now we're going to get back into it as he comes across the circuit. He's going to get to outside zone five very early, and you can see him slow that car down a little. Does get to that zone a little late because he slowed the car down so much. Now into outside zone six. He's off the wall. He's across the line. There was some mistakes in there, but you know what? Yeah. It, it, again, he, what I find find with Lars Travers is they get a mistake and then they go harder from that point, knowing <laughs> I've got to overcompensate for that mistake by doing something crazy. Something special. So there was moments there of brilliance. I think you picked up on it correctly, Ian. That the transition on the inner zone for me against the wall, it was just a little bit sketchy afterwards. Up to here, he goes a little too soon. He transitions a little too early. It, Less it's angle. Very straight. Yeah, very straight. And when he tries to transition, he almost sort of drives through that section, not perfectly. And the rest of it's pretty good. I mean, he's yeah. a man well, he's a great driver, he's a great character. Um, beautiful car, by the way, tons of power. But just enough to, to cause some distress, I think, in qualifying is the fact that he's made those errors. Yeah, exactly that. You say tons of power, 940 horsepower. I think that's just about enough. That's a bit. It's a bit. It's, it's a bit of horsepower. You know, it's, you, you think about stadiums and they always say, oh, you're, you're coming here, it's crazy, you're in a stadium. But like, you do realize people are building Bugatti Veyrons in their sheds to come here and drift them. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the level of, <laughs> with better power to weight, actually, than yeah. a Bugatti Veyron. You just realize these guys are a bit like self-taught most of the time, learning how to build cars faster than some of the fastest supercars in the world. And then they're using that power to overspin the rear wheels. And of course, you'd want no grip. Oh, no, wait, you want to put drag tires almost <laughs> on the back of it. Crazy stuff. And what's even more crazy than that is who's on the line next. It is the current and reigning WRC rally champion, Kale Rovampera, all the way from Finland. Kale Rovampera, 900 horsepower, 2JZ. This is a Supra, which is brand new, but it has the engine from a 1993 Supra built up. So, you know, two generations of Supra in the one car. Hasn't had the best of luck in Finland at his home event earlier in the year. He had a bit of a smash with Connor Shannon. Went to Sweden and the interior of the car went on fire. So he's, I think it's been building for a big moment for Kale Rovampera. And is this it? Yeah, this could be it. He's been on fire all weekend, not literally, but physically as he's been firing this car to the wall. No messing around as he puts it through that inside zone. Look at this. Oh, wow. Rovampera is willing to risk it all this weekend and he makes it work as he now gets into outside zone four. He is not messing around this weekend. He has been holding back all year. He's met so many
many problems. And now this could be the round where it all works for Calais Roven Pair as he gets into the outside zone. He goes for that final zone, doesn't risk it, puts it to the line. That was ridiculous. <laughs> I threw my hat across the room. What was that on the inner zone from Calais Rovenpera? I had to catch a chair as it went backwards across the oh room. Oh, my God. I mean, we know how good this kid is. He is the youngest WRC champion of all time. He's the reigning champion. He's probably going to end up as two-time champion by the end of this year. This is, it's kind of silly what he did here. It, it was going for that 100-point run. That's what he was doing, going out there to try and be incredible. And as he goes through there, he goes, uh oh And it just, I mean, this camera angle is going to be absolutely full of Cali Roven Perry in a moment. Look at this. Into the wall he goes, oh. Just have a little sit back when you're at home. Just a little sit back. Look at this. Oh. Look at this. Oh, that's the wheel on the wall, Ian. It doesn't even make sense. He doesn't need to. But I think he scared himself a little because from then on out... He <laughs> I would have scared me. I wasn't <laughs> even in the car. He didn't really put the back end to the wall because I think he thought, if I go too much here, I've risked a little bit too much. Oh, and but I mean, the, the flare, oh, the it risk. Had it, it had it all. I mean, that was... I thought he was going to go up the ramp at one point for the motorbike. Don't he tempt was like, him. A 93 on the board for Cali. Roman Pera, the Finnish fans go absolutely bananas in the stadium um, as their hero. I mean, they have two championship contenders in Rintanen and Heinen, but you know what? In the back pocket, they've got the current WRC champion out there putting in 93s, and they've got smoke lingering out into the sunset here outside Warsaw. Look at that backdrop. We're in the city. You know what? For years and years, for 20 years, we've been trying to bring people to drifting. This is the first time we brought drifting to, to the you. people yeah. in the city. And most people got here in a taxi, very like what Felix Dinval is in, <laughs> which is an E-Class Mercedes. But this one is almost as light as a Nissan Silvia. And the engine from a Toyota Supra. And it is a beautiful car. And if he fires in, he's going to have a tough time staying out of the walls with the length of this thing in. Yeah, he's certainly not going to wait. Oh, oh no. I was just going to say, I don't think he's going to risk it. And he did. He did risk it. He went too much. He knew he had to put it. You have to go for the 100-point run. You, you've got to you do have it. to. There, there is no compromises now. You have to go in here wanting a 100-point run. I mean, we were just commenting on a run he had in Finland earlier in the season where the entire car from the, the B pillar back just left the just, chat. Yeah, it was just gone. flew off the car halfway through. So it's incredibly light, this Mercedes. Even though it looks like a big car, they actually say it's only, what is it, 100 kilos or less than 100 kilos more than a Nissan S15. Yeah. Which is crazy for the size of the car. But um, it looked like that left foot brake just unsettled in there. Went in a little too hot and it over rotated on essentially on the initiation. Um, yeah, just didn't get it right. Just, I think he thought he was going to the wall, Ian. I think, yeah, I, I think that was it. I think he was trying to balance the car on the foot brake and the handbrake to try and keep it out of the uh, of the wall, and it never paid off for him. So it will be a zero there for Felix Linval, all to do in the second run uh, as we head back to the start line, Dave, to another small car. Another small car. Yeah, I mean, practicality seems to be the theme here for the last two cars. We've got, now we've got a BMW Estate, and uh, this is a... I'm not sure if it still has the Ford Bar engine in it. I'm not sure as he moved nope, on. It's it got is, the BMW it's engine, running right? the BMW, so yeah. it's now running the M50 Turbo underneath the bonnet. Ke uh, Mika was quite... Uh, Push me on that the other day, so make sure you, you let everyone know this is running the BMW M50 engine. It is, of course, uh, Finland's very own Mika Keski Korpi, who's looking for, again, another turn of fortune this year, kind of been making more moves, he's building a brand new chassis for 2024, and he said, this is the last time I'll get to drive this car competitively. He said, so I'm willing to risk it all, and he's now putting down a really nice uh, run so far. Very big car. The perception of where you sit in the driver's seat to where the back end is isn't uh, easy, and you can see that there on that... Um, Touch and go, the outside little zone that uh, judges have put down as a marker. It gets into outside zone six, across the line. Had it all, I think, that middle part of the yeah. set track, though. I was just about to say, I, you can pick out the error, obviously. I mean, this is quite self-explanatory, the line yeah. here in this track. But everything other than that, I was just about to say, it was so smooth. Yeah. He was so in control. You know, I, I love his driving style. He's so confident. He's a confident young man. And I just, I mean, look at the views here. Coming through the stadium, <laughs> down into the track. Our uh, FPV drone pilots, they're having some fun this yeah. weekend as well with, with all of the uh, the new and quite elaborate obstacles they have to get around at a drift event. This was nice through the inner zone. Everything was nice except for the transition, really. Yeah, it, he cut it too shallow, and Judgey said that in the briefing they didn't want the shallow transition, hence why they put that marker on the circuit, that, that you know, touch and go, because they want the drivers to go wide so the chase car can get up into the pocket in top 32 battles. And Mika didn't do that. You can see that he's like a meter away, and that's not really the line they wanted to see. So he'll get hurt on the score for that. But you know what? The rest of it, Dave, it had it. It did have it all.
It was very smooth. Was he rubbing the bumper along all the outer zones? Not quite everywhere. Some moments of brilliance along the way. But I just what I like about this is this might not be the, the you know set the scoreboard light. It's an 83, very reasonably good score. But I think there's enough in Mika Keski Corby to go out top qualifying. If he just adds another foot around the track and just tidies up that transition, he's got it in the, the machinery and the experience now to go out there and be a top contender tonight. 100%. On the line, Jakob Kroll, though, a man, Dave, that came out of nowhere and surprised a lot of people this season with some incredible qualifying runs and some top 32 battles that really turned everyone's attention. He comes off the line now as Jakob Kroll in this E46 BMW 2JZ fires into outside zone one. And again, another homeland hero, the Polish driver, looking to wow the crowds and get some home support as he fires it on big angle through that inner clip. Makes it work, though, slows the car down enough for outside zone four. Doesn't risk too much, puts the back bumper where it needs to be, and keeps the wheel in that inside zone as he fires through now. He looks like he's on an absolute dialed line. He's going to get late to outside zone five, and he does. He tags the wall. He's carrying a little bit too much speed. Keeps it going in outside zone six. Front wheel locked up across the line. Jakob Kroll doing everything he can. Even just the concept of how ridiculous... I mean, we've watched drifting for so long, Ian, we've probably completely lost on us, but if you're new to drifting, the fact that the front wheels are completely locked solid <laughs> and the back wheels are over-spinning, it's just... There's so much going on in the cockpit of these cars that they have to... And no other motorsport where they are working. The handbrake, the clutch, the brake, the steering, the accelerator, and the gears. There's so much going on at the yeah. one time that it's unnatural, that your right foot is on the accelerator, your left foot is on the brake, and your hands are on the steering wheel facing the opposite direction of where you're going. Welcome to drifting. It doesn't make any sense, Dave. And Jakob Kroll doing a good job of uh, showing us how excessive you can be on the throttle and on the front brake as he transitions back. This is just where you look, watch the front wheel just locks solid here. He goes, boom, and then he dials the rear end of the car. And it's not entirely slow, even on the brakes, because no. the rear wheels have so much grip, it's almost over. Look at that booted smash off the wall. Jakob Kroll doing a good job. Was it? Is it a 90 plus? I'm not so sure, but um, you know what I will say? I'm looking back at this now and I'm saying, did he make any errors at all? Except for the boot lid. I think outside zone five, I think he got there a little late, personally. Yeah, 79, there we go. And uh, I'll take a look across at Kevin O'Connell and see if it was that outside was zone five. Was it the five. outside zone five? Yeah. yeah. We're, oh, yeah. I'm getting good at this, Dave. You know round what, six, and you know what? Round I six. think I know what's yeah. happening Final now. Final round, and you're finally getting I'm it. getting it. I'm working Excellent. it out. Now, this young man on the line, it's a Sadeh from Israel, took out Jack Shanahan at the last round, Dave. <laughs> what an upset. What an upset. He, this weekend, pushed Peter Vincek around this circuit like Peter was a toy. What can he do? He fires into qualifying. He needs to get a score on the ball. He needs to be in the show because this young man in battles comes alive as he now puts the front bump of that E46 BMW 2, that inside zone, lights up the tyres, looks for outside zone 4. He's not doing too much. He's doing enough right now. He doesn't want to risk the car. He doesn't want to risk anything as he goes for a real nice transition. Look how early he is to outside zone 5, and it pays off as Ite Sede now looks for the final outside zone and it's job done and business as usual for the young man. Well, I'm going to say that was the best transition across the track I've seen all day today. He went so early, so wide and so smooth. The judges are going to love that because yeah. they want that kind of wide pendulum across the centre of the track and that's what Ite brought them there. This young man, growing in confidence, I mean, go out there and beat Jack Shanahan at round five. You're going into round six feeling like, well, he's top two in the championship, top three in the championship. Can I beat him? I'm that good. And I meant 17 years of age, building confidence, first year in the championship. I'm expecting big things here. Yeah, I mean, look, he's feeling confident. Like I say, I watched him in practice earlier, and he was, you know, he was showing Peter Vincek. I did watch that run, and I did think it, it was going to end up... took the back bumper clean off the car. I thought it was going to be a big crash, <laughs> and it wasn't. He, he held his aggression. He, he stayed with the, the current and reigning two-time champ, Peter Vjainsek, who's really good around here. So he was close to him, showing that the level is high, but the difference between the drivers, maybe on, you know, maybe setup speed and grip, a little bit less important here on this circuit. And 87 for Ite Seda puts him into fifth position. And Ite will be happy with that one. Well, that's a big score. That is a big score for your first run. Like I say, I think he was keeping it safe. I think he wasn't risking anything. A man that will risk it all and doesn't care about anything else. Timo Pelazola, the man from Finland with the twin, the compound charged diesel Mercedes Benz estate. You want to know what compound charge means? It means turbo into another turbo before yep. it comes out of the car. That's, that's the right. layman's term. <laughs> Here we go, Timo Peltola, he's the entertainer, the showman from Black Smoke Racing as he fires into that outside corner. That is a big entry from Timo as he now can go close to the wall. Look at this big angle, just comes away from the wall a little bit there and a little bit wavering there, but he gets back out and look at this, not afraid to take that Mercedes 
to stay to the walls as he transitions through the center track. Now look at this, the black smoke firing out, the white smoke on the rear of the car. This is what it's all about. And this is why Drift Masters is just so fun to watch. What a ridiculous machine. I mean, this car has the most <laughs> unusual setup I think I've ever seen. 1,200 newton meters of torque. 3.2 litres of a turbo diesel. Do you know how, how hard it is to get 800 horsepower out of a diesel? Yeah. Very hard. Easy for these guys, though. Well, it is when you put a turbo into a turbo into a turbo into a turbo. <laughs> and I think the bus that they came in is the same turbo as the car, <laughs> the same two turbos as the car. But uh, they are showmen, and that's what oh, it's all yeah. about. You got that mix. Of course, he, there's more competitive options for Timo Pultola. But is there more fun? No. no. No, no, they're having fun, Dave. They've been working on this recipe for many, many years now, and these guys at Black Smoke Racing know how to have fun. And this just looks so ridiculous, it doesn't make sense. But Patola, to be fair, Dave, that was a really nice qualifying run. Look at this, you can see him working away inside the car. You, no dash in his vehicle, so you can see the feet working that left foot brake, working the car around the circuit. And that was a really nice run, you know? This is a big, again, a big car. They're not I was, easy. I was just reading some commentary info that was in front of me there with Timo. An 84 for Timo Patola. And it said on his commentary info that 15 years ago, Timo Motola um, decided to drift a diesel car. 15 years later, he's been making the same mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he knows where he's going wrong. He right? does. That's the sense of humor. But he's in the show. So we have got Alex Holovnia up next, if I'm not mistaken. It is indeed. Yeah. In the Alex. BMW M2 all-carbon Kevlar. Beautiful machine, this. Um, one of the B58, more modern engine from the Toyota Supra 890. In this 800 horsepower. Big smoke on the entry here as he fires in. Holovny a little late handbrake just to correct, and that's a nice line through the first corner from Alex Holovny. Can he get close to the wall? Indeed he can. It's really tidy from Alex Holovny. Tidy being the word right now. Very smooth getting to the outside zone. Oh, the taillight says, please don't. Not this early in the event. And as he fires through the center of the circle, over the touch. Just a really good run so far from Alex Holovny. A little dab at a handbrake just to set that car up for the last corner, and he's dialed in now. He's not going to make a mistake from here. Alex Holovny looking very strong. Comes away a little early at the end, but pretty good all round. Do you know what I'd say? That's a very nice run there. There was no messing around. That was an incredible run from Alex Holovny. Put the car exactly where it needed to be. Getting those tail lights and that rear end and that carbon Kevlar F22 BMW right up onto the wall. And the initiation for me was lovely. Look at this, into it nice and early on the foot brake, kept the car balanced and then straight onto the throttle, worked his way around the circuit. You know, and he, I mean, again, I love this inner zone. I just every time someone goes close to it, I think this is just, I mean, we've seen so many wall runs all year. To get a front wall run, yeah. I mean, the front of the cars used to be like, well, this is the clean bit of the car, this is the <laughs> nice bit. Back is destroyed, but the front is great. And then, of course, these evil judges decided that the front end of the car was now also a target. So here we are. Here we are. And look at this, Alex Olavni did a great job. Love these on the ground cameras. You can see how much tire debris is out there. As you said, some of the drivers coming back with more tire on the wheel than they came out with. An 87 on the board for Alex Olavni, a sixth position. Now the score is starting to creep up. Yeah, we're starting to get those 87s, 89s all the way through. So I think we're going to start getting those higher scores, that mid-pack starting to fill up, starting to push down the lower scores. And we're going to really start to see them getting higher and higher. As we move through a championship order off the line, it is Pavel Grolsch, the Polish driver of Subaru BRZ2JZ, 750 horsepower as he flicks the car across the circuit. Look how wide he was there, no messing around for Pavel Grolsch. This is one of the cleanest cars on the grid, clean inside, outside, underneath, everywhere. As Pavel Gros makes a mistake there after that transition through that inside zone, puts the back end on the wall, flexes the spoiler, and looks to set the tyres on fire as he fires through the middle of the circuit, looks for outside zone five. Nice, tidy job so far from the Drift Patriot as he looks for the final outside zone. And textbook as always from Pavel Gros. I'll put it this way I mean, you know. Pavel was a very smooth driver, yeah, very capable, and what I liked about it was that he was out there knowing what the judges wanted in terms of line, and he knew what everyone wanted in terms of, you know, I'd say precision, yeah. but he was wavering a little bit here and there, even though he was trying his best. Just as you said, after that inner zone, just the car sort of gripped up, and there's so much grip in these cars now, it's crazy, but as he came through there, the car looked kind of like wobbled and gripped up a little bit. Nothing major, I think it's still going to be a very tidy score, but um, love the flex of the, on the, the wall there, amazing. Yeah, just a little show there to the to the judges. You know, I can go closer if I want to. I just uh, I don't want to scratch the car. So it is Pavel Grosch taking it out to the wall, firing through this last section. You can see that the little touch and go there, really, really easy. 
um, you know, for him to come through there at that pace and transition back, it all looked too easy. I, I think that's what I like about Pavar Grosch right now is that he's making it look easy. He might, yeah. And that means you're going to get a good score. Yeah, there we go. And 82 on the board for Pavar Grosch from Poland. 12th position in qualifying so far. And we go back to the start line. Another Toyota Subaru, uh, you know, crossbreed that shared, shared the chassis between Toyota and Subaru. And uh, it will be Adam Zalewski in this GTA 6 2JZ, former Drift Masters European champion, Dave. And uh, not really finding form this year. Some engine problems and some problems with the car and accidents as well. But now this could be the weekend in front of the home ground. What can the young Polishman do as he wants to put on a show as Adam Zalewski looks to set the circuit on fire? He fires into outside zone four. Perfectly timed. The little dab of the handbrake gets himself set up perfectly now as he's on front. Look at that back end of the GT86 to the walls. He looks for that touch and go across the circuit out to outside zone four and fired for now, looks at the final outside zone, he's dialed inside the car, absolutely flying, is Adam Zalewski. Well, we know how good he is. He's an ex-Drift Masters champion. He's always been in and around the podium, and the only reason he's not there this year is the car just really hasn't worked with yeah. him. He's had a lot of mechanical issues from one end to another, but when it's working, when he's in the stadium, when he's confident, this is a kid that can win this event. Hands down, nobody can stop him. So can the car stay going? It looks like, uh, you know, it's working really well right now. And that was another great textbook run from Adam Zalewski. Yes, yeah, certainly was. And he was looking on form and Zalewski there looked doing a solid job. I think this was it for me. He slowed the car down a little bit on the handbrake and he had to really get back into it again. Uh, more apparent from the other camera angle of how much that upset the car, but he makes it look so easy. And Zalewski, look at him, the way he stares across the track the laser focus these drivers every single run no messing around well i mean if you're in a stadium of uh, 53,000 seats with just massive concrete walls <laughs> around you if you're not focused it's going to be a bad time <laughs> that's the that's the reality it's a, it, like as much as it seems simple this is still quite pacey in here there's yeah. still a lot of grip a lot of pace and a lot of eyes watching too and 89 for adam zalewski puts him into third position so far and you know what? Might just put him in the show tomorrow. I don't. I haven't seen an 89. Never. I never didn't qualify before. No. So. You know what? Could have had the whole job done in one and then maybe have a free run to have a bit of fun with. He certainly could have done. We go back to the start line to Orian Nilsson now from Norway. Orian Nilsson, the man that has been on his roof, round and around and upside down all season. But he keeps coming back, Dave, stronger and better at every single round. And we've seen this man with the potential to win an event before. And now he loves these walled circuits. He did an astonishing job before last year. What can he do this year as he picks up that front clipping point? Oh! And Gets it wrong. Yeah, went too aggressive to the end. I mean, I probably said goes too aggressive for Orton Nielsen 400 <laughs> times Time, this year. Yeah. But I will tell you one thing, that was the best wall run on the first corner we've watched today. He got a little greedy on the inside zone, went a little too close, forgot that he's in probably the largest chassis <laughs> on the grid, and he just bumped the, the crash bar under that fiberglass bumper off the wall. He might have come through it, but I think it's thrown the steering off. Yeah, look at this. You can see the way it affected the car. Watch this as he touches the, touches the wall. Boom, and it just kind of pushes the car away from the wall, and that really upsets the steering. But I will say... I don't know if the camera's still going to be alive after yeah, this shot, Yeah, the camera might have taken a little bump here. Look, oh, oh, it's still alive. And look, you can see the absolute debris flying around. And what I love about this is that we now have a new thing in drifting, which is just this inner camera zone, or inner zone camera. Inner zone camera. I've never seen it before. So uh, Oren Nielsen's tagging the wall. You can see the fans having a lot of fun already. We are in the warm-up day, the main event tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, 53,000, not one seat remaining in the PGA Narodowie, which is the largest stadium in Poland. Today is qualifying. We will be the 32 drivers going through. That's what we're trying to find out. We are midway through the first half. We're next up on the line. We've got you have Pointelaxo from Finland. Yeah, look at this. Pointelaxo been in and around the European Championship for many, many years now, and always drops in and you know upsets the apple cart every now and then here at the Drift Masters European Championship. Has another turn of fortune so far this year, and now making to look a move as he gets in to the outside zone. Very shallow on outside zone four. In fact, as he now works his way through across the circle. It doesn't get to that touch and go, doesn't hit that marker that the judges set out. Looks for the final outside zone as Point Laxco puts bumper to wall across the line. Job done. Again, another driver looking quite comfortable. I think. Yeah. I mean, we're going to say this over and over again. There's only so many ways we can describe drivers going around the track, but 
what I'm looking at is, yes, I'm looking at line and score, but confidence plays a huge part here. If you go out there and you just demand a good score, you're going to get one. You're going to get one, yeah, of course, yeah. And you know what? I think for me, it's the mistakes only really creep in on certain areas, and I think it's timing and being too uh, uh, overdriving the car, I think, is where most of these guys are, are making the mistakes and is upsetting their line. He's a little shallow on some of these outside zones. I don't think he wanted to take the risk too much, especially on this first qualifying run. I think that's going to play into effect here uh, on the first half of qualifying. I think we will lose that on the second qualifying runs. I think they'll, they'll be willing to risk more on the second run. Once they know they've got one in the bag. Yeah, but it's, it's going to get do or die. Yeah. Because if you don't risk it, you're going home. Yeah, it's fight so or it's, flight. You know, yes. you've got to go for it. So you, you can't just go out there and, you know, oh, just uh, mosey through the track. <laughs> this is going to be the best of the best when we come to the second half. And we're getting, people are showing their hands now. Point to not showing the full hand. That was a no. smooth run, 72 on the board, 21, uh, 21st position rather. But a man that I feel will go full attack is Max Heidrich next up on the line. He doesn't know anything about that. He doesn't know but that. He goes, it's a show. And that's all he keeps saying to me. So Max Heidrich, our next driver up, 780 horsepower, 2JZ from Germany. Heidrich coming in, he's going to throw this one heavy into that first corner. Expect the rear end of the car not to finish the run as it started as Max Heidrich fires up into the wall. Wow. Big angle for Max Heidrich as he throws through the inner zone. This is nice and smooth, snappy transitions for Max Heidrich. Big angle as well as he takes it out to that outer zone. Max Heidrich on a flyer here so far. Lots of pace as he takes the car through the course. Very little left foot braking as he fires back out. And big pair for him. Look at this, very smooth. And Max Heidrich goes really deep to the wall. How deep will he go on the last zone? A very, very nice run for Max Heidrich. Good stuff. That was beautiful for Max Heidrich. That was so technical, so clean. Every single part of it was so full out. And he's happy with that run. And you know what, for a man that we always say overdrives the car, normally commits too much to these outside zones and risks it, oh, I think he came back 10% there and, and didn't do too much. I, I think that's going to score high, Dave, to be honest with you. I think, does, I mean, yes, he could have been a little closer to the walls in certain areas, but for a first run, it looked smooth, a lot of angle, a lot of smoke, a lot of speed. Yeah, certainly did. It had it all, to be honest with you, Dave. And here we go. We take a look inside the car of Max Heydrich as he flicks through that inner zone and so dialed, so controlled. And the timing perfectly. Look at this. Doesn't even use a handbrake for that long outside zone four. Just jumps onto the foot brake to lock up those front wheels, slow the car down, make sure the back end's fully in the outside zone. And he's dialed. I love that angle. <laughs> the people in the background. I'm, just, I'm sitting here, I'm trying to pay attention to what my job is, which is to talk about it. But sometimes you just get a moment where you look at you the just screen have to take a and moment. you go, is this really happening? Max Heidrich, 91 oh. on the board for Max Heidrich. Big run. I, I said it, Dave. I, I think it was one of those yeah. understated runs. I think it was you watched it and said, I, I don't know, but it was there. Again, no major errors. No. I mean, you're trying to take points away. It's tough. It's tough. Here we go. Marco Zacharil now from the Czech Republic sits on the line. Uh, M2 BMW F22 V8 BMW underneath the bonnet turbo 900 horsepower what more do you want well you want it onto the wall back bumper flying that's what we want anyway and there we go Marco Zachary getting the job done so far nicely through that inner zone nice transition back Weird on the timing, but made it work nevertheless. And Zacharil now puts back bumper to wall once again, comes through, looks for the touch and go, gets it done, fires down to outside zone five. Will he get there perfectly? He does look at the entry to outside zone five. He got that one absolutely dialed as he puts the tail lights of the wall across the line. I love Macro. I love this I love this guy so much because the speed he carries through the circuit. Every time he transitions, you go, well, that's in the wall, that's a crash. And then it's <laughs> no, not. No. He just gets away with it. I don't know how yeah. he gets away with it. The car is so fast. It is very, very fast. He's got it gripped up to the nines, Dave, and there's no messing around. Marco Zacharil, for me, only one little error, and I think it was coming past that front uh, wall section, that inner zone. I think it was a little stall up on angle, or maybe a little handbrake here. Um, and that kind of upset the line ever so slightly. But we are splitting hairs because every driver now has got this dialed. Marco Zacharil, who is the five time yeah. Czech champion. That's checkmate is what that is <laughs> for everybody who drifts in the Czech Republic because he's won five times but yet to win in Driftmasters yeah. and it almost seems surprising to say it because he's a driver that I just remember from being in the mix so consistently over the last couple of years but yet has yet to take a podium but now he's taken a 92 into second position Marco Zacharel. Now the 90s are going to start rolling oh. in. Now the 90s are rolling in. Look, let's, I'm going to take a quick cheeky look over. Yeah, we're already 
We're already top four on 90 so far. It begins. It begins, Dave. It begins. Well, oh, hold on to something, and it's beginning. <laughs> it's beginning. The big scores are coming. It is Pontus Harman now in the E46, ready to leave the line, representing Sweden, 1,020 horsepower. That's the angle you want. Let's hope it's a highlight reel for this fan as he fires into the first corner. Pontus, oh, a little bit, a little bit tentative on the first corner, but now starting to dial into it. Gets that inner zone beautifully as Pontus Hartman now transitions through. Nice snappy transition. That's what we want to see. Getting that car moving left to right without any hesitations. Pontus right out to the ex extremities of the track. Everything's still intact on the back of the car. Oh, way off that touch and go. Wrong line across the center of the circuit as he gets to that outer zone correctly. So again, just one error on the track is all it takes to drop quite a bit of scoring here. And Pontus Hartman from Sweden do a Sweden do good job, but. Just, it, it, it's strange how he made that error because he was on such a good line. Yeah, hey, look, the line from uh, outside zone four where he was meant to be coming across the circuit, I think he just came off of it too early. I think and he, he cooked, uh, you know, choked himself up and that sacrificed that uh, that's, um, stop and go in the middle of the circuit. You can see everything else though, Dave, was nice. You know, he didn't risk it. He was right where he needed to be. And I think the judges will be penalizing him for that transition and that transition only. Because apart from that, it was a very nice run from Pontus Harman. He, again, another driver that really likes these walled circuits. Germany, Feropolis, that's one of his favorite circuits on the track. There is no runoff, there's nowhere to escape. And this is the kind of place where it replicates Germany in a way. It does, it's like Germany if it all went the same direction. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a similar thing. But th the one thing about this track for me is that the technical parts, where the difference in scoring is between a 68 and, say, an 85, is you've got to be perfect. You can't, in Germany, sometimes you can kind of wobble a little bit, you get back on it again, very long corners here. You mess up the transitions on the inner zone and the transition across the track. They're the two most difficult. Maybe the initiation is the third most difficult part. You've got to get all that right. Pavel Korpsinski on the line from Poland. This is a man that could top qualify, has done it in the past, has all the ability to do it, and he loves a good tech. Technical run. Let's see what he can do here in front of his home fans. But well, he's going to go for it here. Flicks the car from left to right. Big handbrake track, though. And he sacrifices a little bit of that outside zone one. And now starts to get back on the qualifying line. Looks for that front clipping point. You can see him on the brake there, just dabbing it, trying to keep the front bumper away from the wall as he now works the back of the bumper into the wall as he puts a little tag in there. Upsets the steering. He's back on it, though, now as he fires through the center of the circuit. Gorbalinski looking for a big score here in the first run of qualifying. Very tight to outside zone five up into the wall for outside zone six, across the line, Korpelinski risked it at the end. It's a good run, it's a great run. I mean, as you said, he tagged the wall, it, it upset the steering a little bit, but he was at the wall. And I think the judges will reward someone tagging the wall a little bit more than if they're way off at outside of the zone, because that's obviously where the high-risk maneuver is, right? So you can see Korpelinski, I mean, look at the precision. Just have a moment, ladies and gentlemen, to look at the precision that these drivers have. Look at this transition from Korpelinski. Little dab at the front brake, how you doing? And then he comes through. The snappy transition back, this is where the mistake is. He mistimes this coming out of the... The wall has a gap in it there where the drivers enter and exit the track. That's what he mistimed. But he got back on it fairly soon after that. Yeah. Watch the touch and go here. Look right out to it. Perfect line. Goes early on the transition, which means the last part of the track looks so fluid. Beautiful stuff from Korpelinski. We expect it now from Pavel. Very good driver. Um, and one of those drivers that I, I feel should have more trophies in his cabinet for his ability. I think he's got enough, Dave, anyway. I think he's got quite a lot. He's I got mean, a few. I, I mean, I'm just looking. He's, he's the Polish Drift Champion, Jim Carner Grid World Championship, second Nordic Drift Series Champion. And now he's got an 86. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> 86 on the board here in the final round. But I he's think he's, only, strong. he's only had one Driftmasters podium, as far as I can remember. And for me, that's kind of a crime. I think he's been one of the standout stars of the championship for the last couple of years. We move on to our next driver, Joachim Anderson. New look this this round. Switching it up. Switching it up for the big finale. Joachim yep. coming with the Styly Boy pack here <laughs> for the uh, the last round. Love the look of the car this round. And uh, Joachim representing Sweden. 800 horsepower in this S14, firing in, oh, just letting it float out, but just got a little bit of a waver there on that first corner, Ian, not what he wanted. No, I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like he went to go on the throttle, or maybe it didn't react the way he wanted it to, and it pushed him out of outside zone one. Now he's back on it, now he's back into the zone. Looks like everything's working perfectly for Joachim Anderson as he puts the back bumper and the tail light to the wall, picks up that touch and go perfectly across the circuit now, into outside zone five he goes. And now will he try and risk anything to try and wow the judges, put some more points in the bag, and he looks like he will. New look, new ambition. New <laughs> could it be? Could it be the it's weekend? A refreshed. But could it be the weekend? And I'm just thinking, 
we watched these tracks before with the big occasions, the big stadiums, the big people, the fireworks, the you know the, the motocross jumping, all oh, the show is here. Don't give away the halftime show yet, Dave. No, I'm just saying that, that people know there's something special coming. <laughs> I'm just giving you a teaser. But what I'm saying tomorrow is it's one of those nights that anything can happen. I think I think something's gonna float over I think Poland tomorrow night and I, it's gonna be a special occasion. I think something strange is gonna happen this weekend and someone like Joachim Manderson or who's sort of sitting in the mid-pack all season. We saw it last year. Who won the stadium event last year? It was Oliver Evans from Wales. Yeah. He was sitting in 30th position in the championship and he won the event. Stranger things have happened. Well, I mean, look, we've got Calais Rover Perra at the moment who isn't really anywhere in the championship in considering in points, sitting first in qualifying. He's, not even, he's, he's not even primarily a drifter. He's primarily <laughs> a rally driver. No. He's in first place in qualifying right now. A 72 for Joachim Anderson. Not bad. 23rd position at the moment. I don't know where this cutoff is going to sit. It's starting to rise now. It's, go it's going yeah, up. Yeah, it's I'm going looking up. at it on the board and it's starting to rise quite a lot now. We go back to the start line to a guy from the Czech Republic, Mikkel Reihart. Dave sits on the line. Crazy he man. Crazy man. Germany, he wowed us. Uh, he wows me everywhere he goes. <laughs> Just even if he's not even in the car, he wows me from his enthusiasm to be here. He is the tire killer. And Michael Reihard, well, he's definitely not afraid to leave some panels on this circuit tonight. Well, he certainly is an S54 turbo underneath the bonnet. 1,000 horsepower. Mikhail Reihard fires in. He's going to risk it all this weekend. Last chance saloon to get a podium or a trophy here at the Driftmasters European Championship. Wow, look at that. That was incredible from Mikhail Reihard. Now he starts to turn the screw. He's turning up the pressure. He's turning up the heat inside the stadium. And can he put on a show? Can he get this one dialed? He's got a lovely line through the centre of the circuit as he looks for outside zone five, but he's shallow. On the outside zone, now starts to shut up the angle, dials it on, turns up the heat as he crosses the line. Great run. And again. <laughs> no, not surprised he was he, outside he zone five. He, yeah, he, could, he couldn't see outside zone five. He couldn't see the steering wheel. He didn't know where he was going. He put so much smoke in the car. He actually blinded himself halfway through the run. That is a lot of horsepower in that car. That's a thousand horsepower. I'm just horsepower. trying to say, we say a thousand horsepower. We'll put that in reality of what production car has a thousand horsepower. The Veyron? Yep. The LaFerrari? Yep. Kind of getting up there? Getting up there, yep. You're, you're looking at those type of machines designed by many, many people. Michael Reihardt built this himself. Yep, in his garage. In his garage. He just went, I'm just going to go into the garage. His, his wife was like, where are you going? I'm just going to go build a thousand horsepower car. I'll be out in a week. And that's kind of what he does. And that is how mad this sport is, that you can come along and build your own 1,000 horsepower car, come to a stadium of 53,000 people, and then put on an amazing show for all the fans, get a good score on the board in this concrete wall jungle. Good run from Michael Ryer. Let's see how he scores. 78 on the board, 20th position. I can see that. A couple of little errors along the way. A little bit to tidy up over the second half of qualifying. Well, Dave. I mean, yeah, look. You got some news, Ian? You got I, some I, news? I've got some news, Dave. I've got some news. Love news. Oliver Randaloo has just pulled to the line. The Estonian driver has had no practice. No practice? Was, I saw him. I saw it this morning. He just pulled off the track in the first practice run. First practice run this morning. He pulled off the track. There was massive problems with the car. The team have worked tirelessly all day to get him back out on track. And here he is. This is possibly the first run he's going to ever get here. And now he has to throw it down in qualifying in front of 1,500 people. And the car fouls him again. That's the same problem he had. I was watching practice it, yep. this morning. He came into the first corner. Car shut down. We didn't know what had happened. Something's terminally or very wrong with that car. Um, and if they've been tirelessly fixed, seeing a lot of problems that's a worry because they don't know what that is I'd imagine because they've sent him back out again with the same problem so they don't know this is a gremlin if anything wow heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking yeah, spider Randall. hanging on there you see him he was just like he got the best view in he's the house. got the best seat in the house he's like I need to top. go up here and watch the spider-man just joining us for the <laughs> halfway through qualifying but unfortunately for Oliver Randall again McCann and this is the other thing it's about the car will the car stay going well this is the and problem we, uh, at the moment we have got Connor Shanahan He's done no practice. No, no practice I at think all. I think, I think, well, the rumor was he was going to get one run. Did he get a run? I didn't line? see the run. I didn't even see the run, so I don't know. There we go. It will be a zero for Oliver Rando. Work all to do in one run if the guys can get the car ready yep. for that one run, that second run of qualifying. We go back to the start line. Well, next up, we've got Eric Gottschall. Polish fans love this kid. Rising star in the champion, a championship 18 years of age. He I went out and gave him the trophy. He won practice because I went out and said he hit every single competitor in practice on this track, and he was phenomenal. But now he's on his own, 
he's got to do the business as well. This is, uh, this is to me, one of the rising stars of the championship. He's impressed me all year. I think he's going to be a huge household name in drifting. But this is the stage to do it on. Let's see how Eric Gottschall can get on. Well, he's carrying the pace. Look at the speed. He comes in. Oh, and he gets it wrong. Gets it so wrong. He flicked the car way too early. Tried a little too hard. Tried too hard. He hit the wall with a front wheel. And that is a massive mistake there from Eric Gottschall. And now he's going to just test the car out. Yeah, and there's problems with that car. I think he's got suspension issues now. And that's not what you want. Now, they have a pretty solid team. They'll be able to get this thing yeah. back out. But you definitely do not want to go through the first half of qualifying with a zero on the board when the stakes are this high. Eric Gottschalk will be fuming that yeah, he made you, that error. We can, look, he's just pulled off the circuit. And you can see the, the aggression he did a burnout. Look at this. Watch the flick, Dave. This was never going to work. Watch how early he goes. He flicks the car massively. And then he's kind of on the foot brake. He's saying, oh, no, I've mistimed this massively. And he just understeers. Bam, hits the wall. It pulls the steering out of his hand. And that is going to be work for the team to do in the paddock. We make it official zero on the board for Eric Gottschall as we go back to the line uh, to a man in a beautiful car with a whole host. He ha is the most decorated driver, surely, on the track. Well, it's arguable with, with Rover Perina. Because oh, we, have, we yeah. have got, yeah, we have got uh, Red Bull driver in Pishkonski, who's got all the Dakar trophies. And, you know, a lot of his, uh, he's also got motorbike trophies, Polish Shift champion, he got the Rover Perez, the current WRC champion. We've got some statistics to worry about here this weekend, especially from guys like this who love these big occasions. Kuba Pishkonski in the GR86, new chassis for this year. B58 from the Supra, A90, 900 horsepower. Actually blue carbon fiber on this car. Pretty impressive stuff, and he's coming in hot. Yeah, he certainly is coming in hot. Look at this big flick across the circuit. Gets it into the outside zone. And uh, Pushkonski not scared to put the back bumper at his GR86 to the wall, nor the front one either. And that's a very nice line he takes now into outside zone four. He's dialed, he's on it, he's absolutely flying. It's Kuba Pushkonski right now as he looks for the transition through the center of the circuit on that perfect qualifying line as he goes for the outside zone five and he's there. He risked a spoiler on the wall and he doesn't care about taking it off as he puts a spoiler and the back bumper to the wall across the line. I mean, this guy's got all the experience from Dakar, from drifting, Polish drift champion. He has done it all. Rallycross, I mean, the guy is just an absolute machine. But he has not got a top step on the podium at Drift no. Masters. And I think that really, to him, is why he's still here. He wants that trophy. Rovan Perra wants that trophy. And yes, they're very experienced and successful in other forms of motorsport. And we really commend that. But something about this drifting bug, when they get in here, they're like, I kind of want to win one of these. And it is super hard to do that when you've got so many committed drivers on this grid. Exactly, yeah. Look, it's hard. It's hard to qualify. It's hard to get a podium. It's it's hard to do anything now at the Drift Masters. It's actually European incredibly difficult. An 87, really good run from Kuba Pishkonski, ninth position so far. But uh, just to bring up the point again, it's really hard to just qualify in yeah. Drift Masters because you're getting 23, 25 champions from all over the world. Someone, something's got to give. <laughs> Something has got to give. Well, look, I didn't expect to see this young man on the line. Here's the Portuguese driver, Diogo Correa. The engine out of the car just hours ago in bits. They rebuilt the engine. They repaired everything that was damaged. He's back on the line, ready for qualifying. And here he goes, Diogo Correa, the man that took a podium in Finland. What could he do this weekend here in Poland as he puts the front bumper of this E92 BMW to the wall? No messing around from Correa. He wants this one bad as he puts back bumper to wall now. Absolutely ripping through the circuit is Diogo Pereira as he bounces the car on a foot brake through that touch and go now looks for outside zone five he's a little late getting there but he does manage to get to the outside zone picks up outside zone six puts the back end towards the wall and across the line he'll be happy to make it out on circuit I cannot believe that engine was on the ground two hours ago on the ground and they put it all back together and he comes out here and does that the, the, the whole engine was in pieces so they rebuilt the whole engine. He comes out and goes, you know what? I'm just going to absolutely send it. Yeah. And that's what he did. Yeah. Diogo Correa, well, he does that everyone. Yeah. That's how he got a, pole, a podium in Finland. That's how he's sitting at the moment, as far as I'm aware, in 11th position in the championship. Would love a top 10 finish here at Diogo Correa. He's looking like he's on track. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, 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 so, good. it's so fun to watch. Yeah, I just, I love watching that camera view. It's un unbelievable. But look at this from Correa, really flirting with danger, putting the bad bumper to the wall, no messing around kind of looking comfortable out there and I know he, he got a limited amount of practice because the engine failed in the second practice session so he did get a few laps of the track so he kind of knew kind of felt it out already but to be fair when you've had an engine problem 
to have that amount of time out of the car and then get back in it and go, you have to do a qualifying run, that's not easy on these drivers. And 82 on the board for Diogo Correa. Yeah, he'll take that all day. He'll be happy with that. Diogo Correa, 11th in the championship, means we now move into our top 10 in the championship. This is where all the movers and shakers are, and all the guys want to get top five if they're in the top 10. They want to get the win if they're in the top five. And we start off with Kevin Piscalti, one of the standout drivers this season. The Hungarian driver watched Drift Masters years ago and said, I'm going to do that. And here he is at the biggest drift event of all time doing just that. Kevin Piscotti firing to, wow, oh, Kevin Piscotti wow. tags the headlight off the wall as Piscotti lifts the adrenaline levels in the booth and in the stadium as he fires through the center of the course, through the touching up. Piscotti's on one here as he goes to the last corner, out to the outer zone. Piscotti absolutely shredding the Pegue of Naradove Stadium this weekend. And Piscotti throws a 360 in for the fans. And they are going absolutely bananas in the grandstands, the Hungarian fans right now. I have no words, Dave. Every time we go, oh, this is mad qualifying. He did this in Germany, comes out and says, oh, that's not a good qualifying score. This is a good qualifying score. Watch this. Even from initiation, this was spectacular. Look at the wheel placement on that inside zone. And then this, I mean, um, the wheel touched the wall, Dave. As my good friend Gwen Stefani once said, this stuff is bananas. B A N A N A S. Watch the camera. Watch the camera. Boom! Oh, camera said, no, Kevin Piscalti, not for me. What do you even. What's happening, right? How do you even. The camera's still alive. <laughs> the camera's we, we still got, alive. The medic was down there. The camera <laughs> has put his hand up and Reese said, I'm us. still okay. I will, I will reset. I am fine. Th this is a big run. Gotta be. 94 oh. on the board for Kevin Piscalti. It's been coming, it's happened. Oh, and they know it. They're feeling it now. The Hungarians are like, where is he in the championship? Tenth? Oh, things could change. Things could, things could change. change. And Benedict Cherba's like, oh no, I gotta follow that. <laughs> Benedict Esterba from Lithuania sitting in the car. A man used to top in qualifying himself. Now we're into the top 10. Ninth in the championship is Cherba. Can he go high on the board? He's going to certainly have to risk it all now, Dave. No messing around for these drivers. They can't put a foot wrong as now Cherba, the Lithuanian, puts a back bumper on that E92 BMW to the wall. Picks up that front clip. Look at this. He flirts with danger as well as he comes through. He looks for outside zone four and he absolutely nails it as Cherba picks it up nice and early. Sticks the car on an angle and now works his way through the center of the circuit. Cherber is on a flyer as well. These guys now starting to turn up the heat. Oh! But he risked it all. He put the back bumper to the wall and that was a big error from yeah, Cherber. He went for a big he went for a big finish. He went for the big finish and he ended up he's in, Lithuanian. I know he's Lithuanian. Oh, I was getting yeah, yeah good yeah. yeah. So what happened? I thought I'd get you back. You know it's fine. It's been all year. <laughs> But you could see what he was doing. He was lining it up from the transition. He said, this is going to be a big one. And he just overdid it. He went too fast. Look, no slowdown on the transition. And all of a sudden, he went, uh-oh, and the back end gone, bam. And once he hit the back end, that front end was definitely going in. You got a feel for Benedict Sherber there, because everything else up to that point. I'm going to have a look across at the judges. I think he was on for a high 80s there. Yep. Yeah, until, until that last corner. Yeah, the judges agreeing that he, he was ready to just send it up the scoreboard. And now Chirba buried in the wall, not where he wants to be. No, it certainly isn't. And you know what? The, the speed he was carrying, though, from the center of that circuit, Dave, was just unbelievable. He was lightning through there. There was no, and like you say, he didn't even try to slow the car down. There was maybe a little lift of, of, off the throttle. And uh, you know what? He. He, he was committed. He knew he had to go for a big run. He'd just seen Kevin Piscopi's 94-point run, and he had to try and match it. He had to try and stick with it. As we now see uh, Cherba there, I'm looking out the window to come driver, trying to get that car off the circuit, but it is in a bad, bad way. As you can see here, look at this. He tried to save the car as well on the handbrake. Still in the car is Benedictus Cherba. And our start line, Marshall Martin down there. We've been just making sure he's OK. And there we go. He can get it off the circuit himself. So Benedictus Cherba will manage to drive the car off circuit. We make it official. It will be a zero for Cherba. And he waves. He's, uh, he's still. It, it, it hasn't dampened his spirits. He's still waving to the Lithuanian fans at the grandstand. He's still saying, "You know what? I've made a mistake." But we'll, we'll, we'll but be look back at, out. look we'll at the back, back end out. of the car. Watch it's this. Absolutely destroyed. 
I don't know if we're going to get a shot of that. We could have, uh, it would have been nice to see that. Look at the fans showing their appreciation for Cherba. They're having a great time. We're having a great time. It's a party. Everyone's having a great time. This is a party. You think it's a drift to them, except the back end of Benedict <laughs> Cherba's car. Not having as good a time as everyone else. Dave, we're in a football stadium in the middle of Poland with the best show that we've ever seen is going to happen tomorrow. How can you not be having fun? But it's also, you know, this is a lot of people look at, you know, drifting and it's very serious, but it's also fun. It's fun. The, the Japanese legend, Naoki Nakamura, is about to do a run of a circuit that didn't even exist two days ago. Yep. In a stadium from Japan to Poland to the history books. This is what it's all about. Can Nakamura turn up the heat here in qualifying? He's currently sitting eighth in the championship. Could he get a top five finish in his first year at Drift Masters? That would be a big statement for him. He said it's tough to adapt, but a top five finish. Come on, look, he's hungry for it. He wants it. You know, we've seen him turn his hand. This is the kind of circuit that we said he likes. He's closed circuits. He's walled circuits. The danger is what he likes. He fires in on the handbrake, slows the car down, but he slows the car down too much. And he falls away from outside zone a little, uh, quite a little early, but now he picks up that inside zone. That was clinical from Nakamura now as he gets onto the wall once again, but he's out of that zone, he's wandering and wavering, he's bleeding points to the judges, he looks for the touch and go, and he gets there now, don't make the same mistake as Scherber, and he doesn't as he comes into outside zone five, that's better, that's where you need to be as he puts the back end of the S15 to the wall across the line. I think we should, uh, we should just take a moment to acknowledge how many taillights are gonna be destroyed this weekend, I mean, they're a rare commodity in the world, especially S15 taillights, you know, JDM taillights. There is so many that are going to perish this weekend, and all for our entertainment. So we'll take a moment, bow our heads, bow. and say a lot of taillights are going to, are going to lose, lose uh, consistency here this weekend. But it's all worth it because, look at this, Nakamura firing the front end of an S15 on a concrete wall in a stadium in Poland. It's not normal, it doesn't have to be. This, this is this is the norm, though. This now. is normal for us this after being normal. here for two days. I'm like, just remember, this didn't exist two days ago, and, and now in two days' time, it won't, it won't exist. exist. No, this will just be history. Yep, they'll just be. And I'm, I'm, I'm just looking out, right, Dave? I'm just looking. I'm taking a cheeky look out of the commentary window, and I'm looking. Limited seats today yep. for qualifying. Fifteen thousand people. I mean, say, I say fifteen thousand like it's just any number now. Fifteen thousand is looks empty in here. And I'm thinking about tomorrow when every single seat is taken. 53,000 people, nine stories high. And we start with 100 people spectating the first ever European Drift event. We end 2023 with 53,000 in the stadium. And the sport of drifting growing, and so is Nakamura's score as an 86 comes in 12th position. That's a solid one. There's a very solid score there, Dave. And you know what? I think that's a little uh, uh, a state of it. And, and you know what? Judges loving the, the, the inner clip, loving the, the aggression, especially yeah. that last transition to the outer zone. Kevin Pizor has been wowing us all year, Ian. He is the big step up this year as Kevin Pizor. He certainly is. Look, the Estonian's making moves, and he's got a big fan base now that's starting to follow him around. He's making moves, he's making his name known. He did a good job in Germany. Can he do a good job in Poland? He's going to go for it, that's for sure. As Kevin Pesurpa's back bumper of the F22 BMW to the wall, fires through, looks for that inner zone. Very nice line as he comes down now into outside zone four. Look at this, a very technical driving from the Estonian driver as he looks through the center of the circuit, fires it through, big speed, big handbrake drag though, but he gets that car dog absolutely perfect to the wall in outside zone five. As Kevin Pesurpa puts his hands in the air and says, that is how you do it, and I'm going to keep doing it like that until the Final run is done. Another pick. You got it. You cannot you count him, him out. In there. You can't count him out to win this event tomorrow. He is on a rise at the yep. moment. Every event getting better and better and better. Kevin Pazor, I've got to be honest, I didn't believe in Kevin Pazor at the end of last year, but now I am a believer. This is a guy that will podium and eventually could be a championship contender. He's going to be, he could be in the top five at the end of this tomorrow in the championship. And then where does he go from there? So Kevin Bazaar won't be stopped. No, there is no stopping him. Look, he's had a he's had a taste of the champagne on the podium, Dave. He took home a podium, yep. took home a trophy, and he says, I like these trophies. They look good in my ma in, on my more, mantelpiece. Nice. Yeah, yeah, a few, a few more, more wouldn't nice. go amiss. So Kevin Bazaar, look at this. Absolute technicality as he comes through the, the transition on the center of the course. I see Dwayne McKeever lining up as we head towards the top six in the championship. Every driver from here in the first half of qualifying can technically win the championship at the biggest drift event in the world. 
just going to say that again. The biggest drift <laughs> event in the world. An 85 for Kevin Mazur. The big score is stacking in. 16th position for an 85, ladies and gentlemen. That crept up on us real fast there as scores starting to get. And look at this. The Irish are out in force here in Poland. It's the first Irish driver. It's going to be the Irish, the Polish, and the Finnish. Fatting in, uh, I was going to say fans all over the stadium right now. Fanatical of who's going to take home this from a nation's point of view. They got multiple drivers this year from one of the O's for the Irish is Dwayne McKeever. It certainly is McKeever. Look at this, hot out the press, hot off the gate. He's not messing around. McKeever wants this. He's hungry, but a little stall up though into outside zone one. He had to think about it for a second there now as McKeever hammers the throttle through the floor. He looks for that inside zone. He collects it beautifully as now McKeever gets into outside zone four and it's textbook as always from McKeever. Absolutely screams the rev limiter as he comes through the center of the circuit. McKeever going for a big one here. Big, smoky, fast, aggressive run as McKeever puts back bumper to wall. No messing around. He's going to completely fulfill five and six as he crosses the line. McKeever throws it all down. The flames erupting. He didn't come off the throttle from his first zone to the last zone. He only used the clutch to modulate the throttle. The foot was to the floor the yeah. whole way around that circuit. That is how Dwayne McKeever drives, and the Irish fans will await the first score this weekend for their hometown heroes. You know, as you said, came in there a little bit late on that first yeah. zone, but after that, got settled in it. I think he came in a little hot, and I don't think that. Do you know what I think? I don't think the grip on the initiation is where it needs to be. I think there's a there's a slight section of that circuit where it might be a little bit slippery, and then a lot of guys are coming in there and then going, "Oh, I have to think about this for a second. Then they're getting back on throttle. But McKeever made it work, Dave. You know, he he plowed through it, and he's been so close to a championship before and he's been denied it multiple times but he is a national champion in his own right and he has got that experience yeah you know ex uk and irish champion multiple time and dwayne mckeever has multiple drift masters wins under his belt he's a guy that can come to an event like this and pose a threat to everybody else on the grid he drives with that all, you know, crazy style that everyone says, how does he drive like that? He's just on throttle all the time. I just looked through the wheel arch of McKeever's car as he come around that last outside zone and the manifold was glowing. Wow, 88 on the board for Dwayne McKeever. And you know what, the, the Irish fans will know that's probably enough to put him in the show. It might and it mightn't, but I'm pretty sure it will be enough to put him in the show for the top 32. Now, this is the man that's chasing the pack from the back this year. With all the pressure on his shoulders in front of the biggest home attendance he's ever performed in front, it is the two-time champ and reigning champ, Peter Vjainsek. Now, he has got to attack this track. Big initiation from Vjainsek, big angle as he goes to the wall, and that's what we expect from Peter Vjainsek as he pushes that S15 ever closer, that inner zone. Very fluid, very fast, snappy transitions as he comes out to the outer zones. Peter Vansing running the rear spoiler all the way along the wall. Look at that, flexing the tail light, cracking the tail light. Here's Peter Vansing, a big wide pendulum swing here, very wide indeed, wider than anybody's been there before as Vansing goes through five and puts foot to four and six, a job done for Peter Vansing in the first run. That's got to be a very high score there, but you know, could have been a little closer on the inner zone, could have been a little closer here and there, but the fluidity, the speed, and more importantly, the confidence. That's what you're looking for right now in the competition. You're looking for a guy that's out there saying, I'm winning this thing this weekend. And that's the first man I've looked at on the track saying, he has the pressure on his shoulders of the championship, but he's performing impressive stuff. He is very, he's performing so, so well at such a high level. But for me, I think there was a mistake, Dave. I think there was a mistake through the center of the circuit. And now I might be wrong, but I think he missed, missed that touch and go. I think he was very shallow. Watch this as he comes through. And I don't, I hate to speak bad of these drivers because they are world class. But we have to do our job. And um, as he comes out of the outside zone, watch where he positions the car in the middle of the track. I don't know if we're going to get to see it. I'd love to see where he put the car uh, on that touch and go because I don't think it was right. So as you come out here... Yeah, look, watch it. Oh, we're just going to get denied it. Yeah, yeah, and an 87. And I'm going to look to Kevin O'Connell. Kevin, is that right? Yeah, yeah it so was he missed, shallow. Yeah, missed the touch and go. And if he had hit that touch and go, we're talking way up in the 90s there for Peter Vjainsek. So a little bit of work to do, but an 87 and an 88 for the two championship contenders. They're in the game. We're back in that scenario, though. One small mistake, your score drops through the floor. Yeah, it's massive. Look at Yuha Rinton. He's pumped up. Oh. Normally a very reserved character, but he's online for the championship here. And Rinton from Finland has to go extreme here. Rinton in the GR86. 
999 horsepower in this car as he fires in Rinton and right out to the edge of the course. Another car with now a huge amount of overhang and look right close to that inner zone. This is really good from Yuha Rinton as he fires into that next outer zone. Look at this, running straight out to the edge of the circuit as he fires down through that center section, then does go over the touch and go. Very wide line, these drivers taking a strange line through there, but this looks pretty good from Yuha Rinton. Very solid, very smooth, very consistent, and a guy that wants to be in the mix in the top 32. Never count out Yuha Rinton. He is currently sitting in fourth position in the championship, and he's like a shark in the water. The fin has been coming all year. Now the teeth are starting to show. You know what, for me, Dave, I think all that lacked was a slight bit of aggression. He was a little tentative here and there, and a shallow angle he took through these outside zones. But apart from that, that was textbook. If we were judging this purely, purely on line-based only, that would be phenomenal. But we still have a few other factors in there. We have angle, we have the aggression, the style. And if you look there, look, shallow angle, and there's no real aggression. He isn't really overdriving the car, which I think is going to set him apart from Kevin Pascoli. I would agree. I think Kevin Piscotti is one of us far livelier, far more... Uh, <laughs> Hair-raising. Yeah, risky. But uh, you know what? Maybe that's not the right approach if you're in the championship hunt. Maybe it's to get into the 32. Let's remember, everybody online starts talking about qualifying, starting about score. Who remembers qualifying after the battle? Nobody. It's about getting in the show. And 87 for Yuha Rinton at 10th position. People remember podiums, people remember battles. Qualifying rarely, unless it's way up there in the 99s gets remembered so these guys know that they're sitting there going oh it's all fun and games i need to be in that top 32 or i'm going to be out of this championship well i know a guy that likes 99 point runs what's his name jack shanahan oh and he likes what to, a coincidence and he likes to sit on the top of the table when it comes to qualifying he's on the line right now jack shanahan third in the championship through the gears he goes he's super confident this weekend he's feeling it he said he woke up on the right side of the bed this weekend and this is where it all counts look at that first outside zone are you serious shanahan is closer than anyone he is absolutely ripping he's got the style he's got the flair he's got the angle and the speed right now as shanahan is lighting the scoreboard up as he comes through the center of the circuit shanahan wants it he's hungry for it puts the car right to the wall 90 oh. degrees and spins it you know what i was just <laughs> this is the problem with jack shanahan if you look at jack shanahan as a driver he says he loves to perform he drifts not because he wants to be a racing driver but because he wants to be a performer an entertainer and that's what cost him he had it absolutely in the bag that was in that was creeping for a hundred but he overdrove. He went too far. He went on too much angle and he made a massive error. And you can see what it means to Shannon now as he sits at this moment in time, third in the championship, zero on the board. The drama is about to begin here in Driftmasters. And Jack Shannon straight away, you can see it in his facial expression, knows that's not good enough. Dave, that was going to be a 99. If, if not 100, that was spectacular. Every single point of the circuit he was there and he backed that car into outside zone five and as soon as the whole back end of that car was 90 degrees to the wall i knew it was all over there was no way he was going to rescue well, it. we just had a quick word with the judges so they were saying that at the point where he spun there was zero deductions oh my god but that's a pretty big 100 deduction <laughs> when you spin it so is. it's the biggest deduction so here we go laurie heinehan has a look over sees jack shanahan spinning out who is just one step ahead of him in the championship and the finnish fans get up onto their feet ready for their hero laurie heinehan to take to the track this car screaming around this arena and heinehan has got to get himself into that 32 and look at this heinehan goes for it flexes the bullet he's been reserved in practice he said he's leaving it for the big show big snappy transition from laurie heinehan as he slams the front Big slams the wall. Lori Heinen is coming for blood here this weekend. He can believe still that he could win this championship. And with performances like this, can he survive that last corner? Lori Heinen takes it to the wall, takes it to the scoreboard, and I think takes it to the top 32. Wow. That, that was exactly the same as Shanahan's run without the spin, Dave. And there was, I was about to say, he had a little bit more overhang and he, boy, did he use it. He smashed that boot that into the wall about 20 times on that run. And you can see the Finnish fans out in force this weekend. Rintanen with a good score on the board, but can Heinehan go higher? 
This was special. This was so special, Dave. He was absolutely dialed to these zones. He was so close to every single point on the circuit. That front, the, the front inside zone, the wall, maybe could have been an inch or two closer, but nevertheless, this was absolutely phenomenal from Laurie Heinen. He was not messing around. He wanted it, and he just sees Shanahan spin the car. He knows now if he can secure a high enough score, he can put himself exactly where it needs to be. Is it enough, though? We know Piscotti was the one. Oh, it's a 94 for Laurie Heinen, and he goes top. And we are not even halfway through qualifying. If you came for a slice of drama this weekend, Ian is serving it all weekend from the cafeteria here in the tower because another big name arrives to the line. It is Connor Shanahan, your current championship leader. Here's the story for you. Not one driver this year has entered as the championship leader and left as the championship leader. Connor Shannon is trying to break that mold this weekend, take home the championship, but he's had zero practice, no practice runs. They've just put an engine in the car and Shannon fires in. Oh, he's going to go for it, Dave. There's no messing around. The championship leader knows he needs a big score. He needs a 94 or more to try and seal the deal. Oh, and he clips the front bumper on the wall and he keeps going and he's in it. Shanahan with no practice whatsoever this weekend is risking it all. He doesn't even know the layout of the circuit. All he's done is watch practice as Connor Shanahan was back bumper to ball. He follows through, he looks for outside zone six and he dives it in. This is phenomenal. That's unbelievable. With no practice, you can't just turn up with no practice on this circuit and do what he just did. He hits the wall too heavy on the inner clip. It's a heavy hit, it's a mistake, but the rest of it's pretty flawless. For me, Connor Shannon to even be on there. Look, the car barely starting, barely going. They're throwing engines at it. They're throwing cranks at it. They're throwing half of the cars in the car parks parts at it. And Shanahan goes out there and does that. That's why he's in number one in the championship right now. Did the wall run? Did that wall hit upset him? Watch the front wheels. Did it upset the car? I, I don't think, think it did. I think it does. I, I think, don't think, I think it did. I think it does. I think that's exactly the I same think, as I Kevin Piscotti. No, I think he hits the wall here, and I think it upsets that, but not majorly. But it definitely upsets the car. It definitely upsets the camera anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> the judges are looking at this one. They're, pu they're pulling it's, this one apart. Look, there's there's going to be a big score, but is it enough to top qualifying? I'm just thinking. It's obviously a big score. He's hit every zone on the track, but is it enough? For even to get into the quali through qualifying was all Connor Shannon wanted, and he's still got another go with that. We're, we're not even halfway through. We are exactly halfway through, in fact. Yep. But this is... Oh, nervous times. I'm feeling the nerves. I hope you guys at home are enjoying the action because it is nerve-wracking right now. A 95 for Connor Shanahan. He just did that with no, not one no practice, practice. Not one practice. It's, uh, there's something, he's inhuman. I've, I thought he had a practice and I, I got told he had no practice. Like a 95, I mean, I'm looking at that run and the only error I could see in it was that little wall up. Everything else was absolutely inch perfect. And that could have been close to 100 if you hadn't touched that wall heavy, in my opinion. So now we move on to the second runs. And this is starting where we, we start off with a man that has a great score on the board. It is Tor Arne Kavias, an 85 on the board at the moment. He currently sits in 20th position. Kavia, well, he's going to come in strong here. Wildcard driver from Norway, ready to throw down. He certainly is ready to throw down. Look at this. Kavia did it in Germany. Can he do it this weekend here in Poland? He's going to risk it all this weekend now. And he puts back bumper to wall. He's going deeper than he did before. He's going faster and he's going closer to the front wall than he did before. Now Kavia starts to turn up the pace. Now he starts to turn up the heat as Kavia flexes the back end of this Nissan 200SX across the circuit. He goes absolutely dialed on that touch and go as Kavia fires through he's shallow on five but now starts to make it work as he picks up the pace sticks the back end to the wall on six and says that could be enough i mean you got to look at the way the judges are scoring this and right now even people talk about clipping zones they talk about zones and if you get all the zones you get the high score getting all the zones isn't the only thing that matters what matters is how you're getting them are you aggressive are you on angle are you running that wall are you putting it on the line any driver on this grid can drive around easier on this track but it's about putting it like that nose to the wall 
big initiations, big flicks. That's the difference between an 80 and a 90 here, not just getting the zones. And what I love about this sport is that it's rewarding the risk. Shanahan smashes the front of the car off the wall, but stays in it. He rubs the wall off every car, and he's also in a car that's deeper in the zone than any other driver on the grid, just to do to the rear wheels. Kavia watches that, then comes out and says, that's where I need to go, and does exactly that. 93 on the board for Tor Arne Kavia. That's what it's all about here, learning from the driver in front, saying, oh, you want me on some walls? I'll be on some walls. Kavia jumps way up the order. Bagsy's got to be watching the same thing right now. The UK driver said, my score on the first run is 78. It's not going to get me there. I need this to be up the order. It certainly does. Well, that puts him in 29th position at the moment, and the man from the UK needs to put it all on the line as Bagsy flicks the car across the circuit, now wants to risk it, now starts to feel out the back of that PS13 on the concrete wall as he comes through, and he's closer on that inner clip than he was before. He's earlier to the wall than he was before now as Bagsy picks up the pace and he wanders and wavers in outside zone four, but he picks it up right to the end now. Comes through, looks for that touch and go, gets it dialed, slows it down for outside zone five, but he may have struck too much speed. He was late getting there as Bagsy looks for the final outside zone. Across the line he goes. Now we're seeing everybody up their level. Now everybody's looking at the cutoff. We didn't know when, when Bagsy, Kavia, these guys ran the first time, they don't know what the cutoff's going to be. Now they know. The cutoff's sitting definitely going to sit very close to 80 in the next couple of runs. You've got to put in a big run, and Bagsy does exactly that. Goes to the walls, big aggression, big angle. He went for it there. There's definitely a lot of risk in that run. Yeah, he definitely risked it all, Dave. Look, at 77 at the moment is the cutoff in top 32. Zamic sits at top 32 cutoff, and you have to go out there now and put the bumper to the wall. You have to risk the car. There was a few moments for me where Bagsy made some errors, though. He wandered away with it a little bit in some of those outside zones, but he'll be the first man to tell you that he's not the best at qualifying. The battles is where Bagsy comes alive. He loves the chase driving. But for me, I think he's done enough there to secure a spot in top 32. You know, you've got to just watch these runs. You know, everyone's got their fit. Look at it, 91 on the board for Steve Bagsy Biagioni. And I mean, I've watched drifting a very long time. I've watched how the judges work these runs. It's about that risk reward. You might think, oh, my driver's been out there. He got all the clips. How did that other guy get a higher score? He was going more gangster. And that's the, that's the only <laughs> phrase I can give you. Bagsy puts in a stormer there. We move on to Ruben Lopez from Spain. A zero on his first run. He's got to do it here or he's going home, Ian. It's all on the line for the Spanish driver right now. Well, he took it too tentative on that first run, and he knows now he needs to risk it a little bit. The initiation for me was where he all got it wrong, and it looks like it's gone wrong again for the Spanish driver. He does find outside zone one, but right to the end, he needs to pick this one up. He needs to really really think about it. He needs to put foot to floor and show the judges why he deserves a spot in top 32 as he now puts the back bumper on that BMW E46 to the wall. He's on and off the throttle though. This is not what the judges wanted to see. He looks across the circuit. Oh, and there's a problem with the car. Yeah, it's a shutdown from uh, Ruben Lopez and it's going to be a zero in. Unfortunately, for this current Spanish drift championship leader, he will be out of competition. Unfortunately, first driver out of competition guaranteed. Yeah. We'll be able to tell you that straight away with a zero, two zeros on the board. It would look like a zero to me on the second with that straightening up. Um, and Ruben will uh, exit the competition in qualifying. It's a big task coming into this. I mean, it's, as I said, it's sometimes it's like throwing a puppy, a, a puppy into a dog pen because, you know, you, these guys have been weathered from yeah. the five rounds all over Europe. They've smashed into every wall and every driver. And you come in at the last, you know, the final, and everybody's got so much experience over you that it's very tough for someone like Ruben Lopez to just walk in and expect big things to happen. And we, we watch a lot of wildcards suffer with that. I mean, you look at Kavia in that position. He's had the Germany experience there. He's got a bit of confidence. Steve Bagsbiagioni has been competing at other competitions over yep. the years. So it's just, yeah, Gregor Shipke sits uh, outside the top 32. Polish hero. Hipke, we would have watched him in that E30 long time ago, back when we first started the European Championship here in Driftmasters. But he's back in a Ford Bauer, a four-liter powered um, S14, firing big into that first corner. It's Dregor Szybki from Poland. Yeah, look at this, so he's out of that outside zone, and that's not where you need to be. And I'm going to tell you now, Dave, I think we're going to get into the same scenario that we had when we were in Germany, where you miss one outside zone, you miss one of those inside clipping points, so you're slightly off that qualifying line. I think that is going to be it. I think that's going to seal the deal. A 77 is the cutoff for the moment. You can see it on your screen. Uh, Savage on that drop zone. I'm telling you now, if you're not absolutely glued to the walls and you're picking up that perfect qualifying line, I don't think you're going to get a shot at this. And I don't know right there if Gregor's hip, he's done enough there to improve on that score of a 70. I think he probably he maybe has. I don't know. I'm, I'm <laughs> you, not a judge. You, you started that with really confident Yeah, and then there, I thought Dave. back and I was like, he wasn't really on the wall there. I mean, <laughs> look, he's a great driver. I mean, I just think 
maybe since Thregor Shipke leaving the championship until now, this might have been enough of a run yeah. three years ago. But in the last six months, something has happened in Driftmasters where every driver has suddenly just become incredibly consistently good. And I think we're looking at the highest standard we've ever seen in the sport. Yeah, and that's, sure. my, that's my honest opinion. And I think what we're looking at here is that being a good driver is not good enough sometimes. You just got to be exceptional. Yeah. And I think if you look at Shanahan, and especially a good point of Jack Shanahan, spinning out, trying too hard. Too hard, yeah. And he was probably already in the high 90s. You're in a situation where doing these kind of safer runs is going to get you 69. It's going to put you out of competition. Unfortunately, for Drago Shipke, you can't just come out here and drift well. You, you That's can't. Not what, we're not looking for drifters here. No, no. We're looking for superhuman, crazy superstars. people. Yeah, superstars. Yeah, And that's what it's all about. And we've got the best dressed man on the grid, <laughs> Peter Kozlowski, in the S15, sitting on a zero as well. Ian needs to improve his score here. Got to get it done. He certainly has got to get it done, Dave. He backed into the wall in his first qualifying run, uh, which ended that run. And he now needs to really pull the nerves together and see if he can get it done. He picks up that inside zone this time. And he's got a nice line at the moment. Transitions through, looks for outside zone four. And he seems clinical this time, a little bit more cleaner. He's thought about this one. As he works the car across the circuit, he starts to turn the screw on the throttle nice and early, but he's going to get to five way too late. He completely sacrifices outside zone five, in fact, and he now gets into six across the line. And Kozlowski, another guy that now will be sitting in the car thinking, did I do enough? Yeah, do you know what it looked to me? Just went a little too much angle after the transition and just kind of had to go where the car was going and not get out of zone five the way he wanted. Other than that, really clean run. Yeah. But again, as we were in Germany, we're going, is one mistake enough? to I not get into the 80s and there I mean if the scores keep rising as they are does one tiny error just not get out of competition straight away I, I think that's the situation I think that's where we're at now, right now that I think this is going to become the whole layout for the rest of the championship for 2024 I think if you miss a clipping point you could be out of competition absolutely and Kozlowski you know good run yeah to, to, I mean everything's a good run they're all exceptionally good, good drivers <laughs> this is really tough to commentate on people because everyone is so you never like turn up to a, watch a soccer match and there's 22 Ronaldo's playing the match <laughs> like people have some sort of gradient where they can go this guy is better than this guy or this guy is these are 22 Ronaldo's out here and then there might be just one guy that's having an off day and that's enough to go home one Ronaldo's got a fault yeah it's one Ronaldo didn't shy, tie his shoelace properly and that's just enough and that's be. enough so that's the problem so Kozlowski puts in a a really solid run, but maybe not enough um, in, it's, I don't know. Where's the cutoff right now, Ian? It's 77. The 77. cutoff at the moment is a 77. Kozlowski sits with a zero at the I moment. Think, I think he's going to do more than that. I think that maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I am, the I'm, problem is now that I don't know if I feel confident saying that I'm, that is good enough as a 77. And it's not. It's Look not, at that. It's that. a 60. Yeah, so it's not. I mean, he still is the richest man in drifting, as you can see. I think that's fake. It could be. But uh, <laughs> we'll speculate that it's all real. And uh, 47 position. Unfortunately for Peter Kozlowski, it is not enough to get him through. And next up on the line is another man sitting outside the top 32. It is Adam LZ from America. Only the second American to ever attempt the Drift Masters Championship. So he's up for the challenge. Borrowed car. Never driven this car. Never driven on these tires. And never driven this track. And he's had steering issues in the first run. Now he's got to get it done here as he fires into that first corner. LZ takes it to the wall. And this is better as he fires through that first zone, dropping out a little bit, getting that inner zone. Now has to get it tight to that inner zone. Very wow. tight from Adam Alzi as he transitions back. This is much better from Alzi as he goes on big angle into that second corner, dropping out of the zone a little bit as he fires through the inside zone. Can he get into the touch and go? Does just touch the touch and go. Transitioning back out, big angle into that last corner from Alzi as he takes the car to the wall. Much stronger run from Alzi than his first and a big angle finish. But will it be enough? I mean, look, he was there. He was fulfilling all the zones for me. I think maybe the line that he took to get to him or, or the proximity of the back bumper to the wall may be the defining factor uh, for the judges to uh, of where the score sits. But you know what? It was a lot better run than his first qualifying run. He is out of that top 32 at the moment. He's in uh, 64, so 42nd place at the moment. Let's take a look from the drone, though, at LZ's run. Nice enough. I think he had a wheel in the zone at least at all times. For me, the most spectacular moment was when he transitioned to this wall uh, in a zone. I'd done it again, flexed the front bumper, put the tyres to the wall, incredible stuff from LZ. I think he could do that all day. Absolutely loved it. And then transitions back to the outside zone. And once again, I think outside zone four, he kind of wandered and wavered a little bit in it. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm not a judge, David. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, well, was just, man, there was plenty of commitment, a lot smoother around the track than he was on his first run. 
And um, from where I'm sitting right now, let's see if it's enough to get him into the top. We won't know what the score enough is. It's moving fast. Well, this is the problem. It's going to start moving fast. This happened in Germany, and we got yeah. to at the end of top 32, and it was like an 80-odd was cut off yep. for top 32. 85. Yeah, and I mean, we, I think we we're almost going to be bordering that in the next 10 runs. We're getting very close Yeah. to another event where almost impossible. One mistake is enough to knock you out but of But how can you not reward these drivers, Dave, and when their the level thing. is that good? I mean, this is a run that should qualify anyone any day yeah. in any competition, but unfortunately, the way things are here tonight, it is sometimes going to be borderline whether people get in or get out based on small errors, whether the judges like the aggression or they, you know, and I think it's, it's very hard to say. Let's see what the score comes in as. It's going to be a 75 for Adam LZ, not enough for top 32 for Adam LZ as he knocked out of competition. And we move it along to our next driver, who is going to be Christoph Romanovsky. Another driver sitting on a zero, Ian. Another driver under pressure here. Yeah, a big mistake, though, on initiation, Dave. And that was where it all went wrong. You've, there's so many limited factors here as well. There is no runoff. There's nowhere to kind of drop a wheel into the dirt and save it. This is... You get it wrong, you get it wrong in a big way. And we see Romanovsky take this car to the wall. Now time to prove if he's still got what it takes to get inside the show as Romanovsky fires into outside zone one. And this is more like it. He's absolutely dialed in on the foot break as he picks up that inner zone, picks up inner zone two, fires through, looks for outside zone four. He's there nice and early. You can see that front brake absolutely locked. Tire smoking from the front as he comes through the center of the circuit now. Looks for the touch and go and collects it nicely. And this is coming together to be a nice run for Christoph Romanowski right now as he dials in that final outside zone. Looks for the finish line and job done for the Polishman. You know what? After the big hit of the first one, you got to say the confidence surely knocked from Romanowski there. Surely he's under pressure. They've had to repair the car, realign the car, and I, I felt he might come into that first corner a little tentative. He did exactly what he did on the first <laughs> run and fired in him, but this time it worked. Yeah, it certainly did work. It, pulled, it, it, it all came into play for him, and he, it was absolutely dialed. Look at this, you can see him picking up that front zone. It, it, clinical stuff, and I think that was a very nice qualifying run. He was on that line. It lacked maybe a little bit of the aggression that the judges were looking for to, to stamp himself right up there in the top ten, but... Nevertheless, Christoph Romanowski, you know, to take an impact like that and come back, fair play. I'm in complete agreement. I think I think this is, you know, the trials and tribulations that each of these drivers are going through, whether it be in front of the cameras or behind the scenes, it's commendable. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. You know, it's got to be one of those situations where, and, I, and I've been watching all the runs tonight, and I think I'm learning from watching the way the judging is working, that big risk, big reward. Yeah. Just being smooth and tidy and, and getting around there, you've got to do something special. You certainly have. You've got to do something very, very special. And... Uh, and I think if we, look at the, if we look at it right now, and in terms of who's right there at the top, I mean, we have Connor Shannon. I, I completely agree with that. That was a, an insane run. He hit the wall the whole way around. He got Romanowski 80, just enough to creep into 29th position. And then we got Laurie Heinehan in second position with a 94. Piscalti in with a 94 at third. Like, that's a mixed bag right up there at the top, and it could change very dramatically as we move along. One man that could change it is David Sposob, who was, you know, 89 on the board from his first run. Like, he's in 11th. He's pretty safe at the moment. Could he go high 90s? Let's see what he's got. David Sposob from Poland firing into that first corner, out onto the wall. He goes, oh, big angle from Sposob as he runs the rear end of that car nicely to the wall. A little wobble on the way out, but not bad. And Sposob nice and close to that inner zone. That's kind of what you want, that fluid transition. Look at that angle from David Sposob as he takes it right out. This is a really good run so far. Comes away a little early from the outside wall, but an overdoes the touch and go. But rather than missing it all together, he goes to that last wall. Look at that, burying the taillight in the wall. It'll bounce off the wall from David Sposob. A great driver. A driver I'd love to see it every round of Drift Masters. Really impresses me in Poland when he comes out. A little 360 for the fans. <laughs> That's what we came here to see. The local fans are going to love this. Oh, they love that, Dave. You know what? He loves that. Look, I'm out the window waving to everyone. That was a really, really nice round for Sposs up there. Uh, the aggression for me absolutely came in flying, no messing around. And it was the angle as well. He, he didn't. He, he risked the car to try and score the points he needed to get inside the show. And the car just looked absolutely dialed as well on circuit. I said it earlier. I think he's got the car worked out. I think they've got it set up perfectly. And it's just performing so well.
Well, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of, you know, obviously we, we don't have the time to go through the, the hour-long briefing the judges <laughs> have given the, the drivers. And obviously the judges know exactly what they're looking for here, right? We don't have time to, to bore you for an hour with every single technicality that goes on in this track. But with Sposs up here, you can see, as opposed to some of the other scores, big aggression. Again, similar score than his first one. I, I would agree. I think he had a couple of wobbles in and yeah. out of the zones just at the end and the start. While you might have seen him on the wall going, that's exceptional. How he got there and how he got out of there was probably not perfect. So, you know, it's always a balance with this stuff. We move on to our last wildcard driver, which is Matthias Suski. 62 on his first one. Needs a big improvement here. Yeah, a 62. Not going to cut, make the grade this weekend. A four, in 45th position. And Suski really needs to pull it together. He's coming out of the gate really hard. Fires that car in. And he knows what he needs to do. But he's way off. And he tags the wall. And that completely upsets the line. And I think that initiation was where it could have all gone wrong for Suski, Matea Suski. As he looks for outside turn four, stands on the throttle now, follows it all the way around. He's going to try and fulfill the run, but I think this one is done and dusted. And I think this young man's weekend is over already. As he looks for outside zone five, parks the back end in the zone. Once again, looks for six and does exactly the same thing. Across the line he goes, but that one mistake, Dave. I think that was an nail in the coffin. Yeah, I mean, he, he really did slam. Look at this view. Look at this view. Look at that. Those drone pilots are having an absolute blast up there. I see him outside yeah. earlier, and he was like, I'm going to fly through this, and I'm going to do that. And I'm like, are you having fun? He's like, fun is an understatement. Yeah. I feel like he's going to fly it off, get a takeaway for himself in the town, bring it in back through the stadium, bring it back to himself. That's what I do. We can see Suski making that big error, smashing into the wall. Ian, it's definitely going to hurt his score massively. It was a big error, big correction. And the rest of the run was pretty OK, nothing spectacular. But on this level, one error. OK is not good. No, but well. one error is yeah, yeah, and being OK is not good enough anymore. He, he, could, know, he couldn't really mask that error. It was pretty obvious. Was he smashed <laughs> into the wall. <laughs> he kind of triangulated the corner of the circuit. So there we go. So we see Matea Suski there finishing up his run. We make it official a 65, 41st place. He's not made the grade this weekend. And unfortunately, the last of our wildcard drivers uh, done and dusted as we go back to the start line. A man that missed his first qualifying run is Kalen Kjorten. So he's way out of the order now. Problems with the car. They worked hard to get it done. A look at the sunset over the city, Dave. It's like a backdrop from a video game. Yeah, you're here, you're here experiencing history in the making. It's like a movie in here. It's a movie. It's a movie. And here we have got Caleb here, and we didn't see him. Did no, so he, so he missed his first qualifying run. Problems with the cars now. All to get it done on one run. Probably one of the toughest rounds of the year to get that job done as well. As Caleb Kjorten fires through, looks to make a move, gets into the outside zone. Nice line at the moment. The Romanian driver doing everything he can to try and score as much points as he possibly can. Nice transition, though, to be fair. Gets into outside zone four, sets the car up perfectly, dials on the angle, starts to find the wall, the back bumper of this S15, comes through the center of the circuit. Now, two final outside zones to go for Kalen Kjorten as he parks the back end in outside zone five, almost over-rotating. He's standing on the foot brake, and he slowed the car down massively into outside zone six. Across the line, he goes, is it enough? Yeah, you know, I've, I've had a look at the screen, I've had a look at the, at the track in the background, because we're up quite high here, and I think the Perception of speed and depth of depth of field here does play a little bit because Kalen on the last corner you could on the, you know look at him and say oh he's, he's flying along the outside wall he was going very slow on full angle with a lot of throttle which you know it's easy to see from some angles not from others um, and it's not what the judges want to see because when you're chasing that it's very difficult because the car yeah. in front of it it looks like it's going really fast but it's actually going quite slow it certainly is yeah so there we go Kalen Kjorten putting down the only run of qualifying that he'll get here at round six. And we'll see what the judges' thoughts are you in a moment. For, for missing his first run, i got to say this is a really solid run for the second. Impressive that yeah. he came out. You know, you're going to be a little shook up. You're going to be a little panicked. You've only got one shot to do it. He did as best as he could. Not the perfect conditions, right? And you, sometimes you need the perfect conditions to actually compete here. You can't just go out there. I mean, we saw Connor Shannon come true. But again, the confidence is with Connor Shannon. Kellen Kieran, unfortunately, only scoring a 66. And, you know, a really, really solid dude behind the scenes. We love Kalen. He's a great guy. But I think that whole day just didn't go right for him. No, he's, he was, he's always smiling. He's always got uh, a good smile on his face. He's always happy. But Kalen Kjorten won't be happy. And look at this. I mean, 
Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, this is a dangerous move for me personally. Well, he saw Henry Hamper saw the GT86 is doing pretty well and said, I'm going to make an S1586 because he has no overhang on the rear of this car. Completely wiped it off the back of the car on the first run. Hamper coming in here, got a 65 on his first run, got him improved. He certainly has got improved. A 78 now, the cutoff, that score starting to climb up run after run. But now he runs a risk of putting the wheel on the wall. Is he going to risk it all? Is he going to try and do everything he can? Henry Hamper missed out on an opportunity in Germany. Put down an incredible run, but it just wasn't enough on the night. As now, Henry Hamper does risk it. He puts the back end of what's left of this S15 towards the wall. He comes down into outside zone five, and he could risk everything right now. As Henry Hamper runs the rear wheel along the wall, looks for that final outside zone, and job done. Yeah, that car has been through the wars this weekend. A whole back end loss. Henry Hamper doing a much, much better drop job that time around for me of putting a good score together, but I'm not sure it's enough. He dropped out of the outer zones quite heavily. Nice initiation. I mean, he's got no rear end on the car, so I'm not sure if he knows where the rear end of the car is at that no. point. No, and, and for me, the, the risk is you don't know where the back end of the car is. You kind of risk it, and you see the radiators in the back of the car, the fuel cells in the back of the car, and you put, you're exposing the rear wheel. There's nothing really to cushion anything or get any gauge of where you are. And uh, I think that I, I don't think that didn't really help Henry there, to be honest with you. No, and, and watch here. You just you know, He's got moments where it's great and then moments where it kind of wanders a little bit. Um, there was some, some good bits, but here it doesn't get to the outer zone at all with the rear wheels. Gets in there very late. So I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to get him through. I mean, he gave it a valiant effort, that's for sure. He certainly did, Dave. Yeah, he wasn't holding back, that's for sure. And Henry Hamper, we wait for his score to drop him. Still looks good from the front, Dave, anyway, yep. at least. This is the best angle. This is this the best is, If bit, I yeah. was to look at this car, this would be the angle I look at it right now. The other angle, not so much. A 73 for Henry Hamper. I can see that. There was a couple yep. of waivers in there. 36 position for Henry Hamper. So a finished driver out of the competition. Much to the dismay of a lot of the finished fans here in attendance. And Haskasap is up next, and Enver has scored an 82, so he's in 28th position. So now we're creeping those scores up. That an 82 is just 28. So I think he's really going to want to improve here. Rest is going to feel very nervous for the rest of the night. He certainly is. Well, he's off the line, full throttle. Look at this, Enver Haskasap, the North Cypriot driver, not messing around as he fires that car, and he's very shallow though. He's going to have to work to get the back end into the wall, and now he does. Now he starts to put the tail light to the wall as Enver Haskasap comes through that front clip, that second front clipping point now. Very shallow on that transition as he sets himself up for outside zone four. On the throttle he goes, but he's not close to the wall this time. Flirting with danger of getting a lower score as Ember Haskasap comes across the circuit, looking for outside zone five, gets in there nice and early. Now starts to turn the screw, putting the heat on right now as Ember Haskasap tags the wall, puts it in across the line. Yeah, he's put the, I'm not sure if that's going to score. Was he over the line in the wall? Very hard to know. Yeah, I mean, he tagged just, the wall quite heavily. He heavily tagged the wall and then he hit the wall and then he drove. I'm not sure if that was at the finish line or after the finish line, but it was pretty close. He was was he driving across the finish line hard to, he was, again another driver pushing that a little bit too hard. Yeah, and I think you had to. You know, he didn't really risk too much throughout the run. Kind of left it all towards the last part of the circuit. And I think that that wall tag, um, you know, upset the car. And I, I think he drove across the line, Dave. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and say that that was a big mistake. Oh, I yeah, it's kind of I don't know what the way the judges will look at that. He, he kind of um, he maybe just barely got over the finish line with a little bit of angle. I'm not sure. He definitely crashed over the finish line. He crashed over the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure what way the judge is going to judge that. I mean, he definitely was going for it. He was definitely going in there pretty hot. He, he was trying to bury that car in in this, as close as he could to that wall towards the end. And we'll see which way the judges go on this one. Will it be a zero? Will it be a score? And there's a lot of bits and pieces all over the circuit right now, Ian. Yeah. Enver has uh, dismantled some of our signage. Some of our signage, yeah. He comes across removed. the finish line. A little bit of a cleanup. A 77 does score just about, gets across the finish line. Doesn't improve, though, stays in 26th position. Yeah, so that, that 82 is going to be the score that he's going to have to hold on to for quite a bit now, as Enver Haskasap yeah. nervously awaits the rest of the competition. We move it back to the line. It's going to be Maciek Jarkovic. And he's happy, hometown hero. First run, 61 points on the board. Yeah, he's outside top 32. Needs a big, probably the biggest run of the year for him here. Yeah. He, he struggled with qualifying throughout the, the championship. 
He needs this to just be the one. He has to go right or he's going to go home. And he really wants in front of his home fans to get into that main event tomorrow. This has got to be special. It certainly has got to be special, Dave. A lot of guys saying that they're willing to risk the car this weekend to get into the show and be in the, for the fight. And now Maciek Jakovic needs to be one of those guys. As he comes through the two inside zones, fires the car across the circuit. Nice transition, looks for outside zone four, but he's wandering and wavering. You can see that there, just about picks up the end of it. As Maciej Jakovic goes for that touch and go, he's way over it. Now he's going to be shallow. He's going to get to outside zone five very late. Look at this, he's almost barely catches the end of the zone. He gets in outside zone six, put flat to the floor across the line, and I'm not sure, Dave. I, I'm trying to figure out what just enough is. Yeah. But I, but enough is, it's got to be nearly 80 points, so which means it's almost, it's you're, almost you're somewhere yeah. between fantastic and exceptional. Yeah. It's where you need to be. And was it fantastic or exceptional? I'm not sure. No. I, and I sound really harsh saying it, but yeah. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. You can't, I think at this level now, at this point of the competition, on these kind of circuits, you can't miss a zone. No, and I think that's where we're going to, we saw it in Germany where we were like, if you miss a zone completely, you'd want to be either incredible everywhere else or if you're on a safe kind of normal run, it's not enough. So yeah, no. you know, this is this has got to be the the most extreme you've ever driven. That's I think the, I think you got to go out of the comfort zone. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I said earlier. I think the norm now will be if you see a driver that misses a zone, he's out of competition. 41, 69. Look at that, wandering yeah. and wavering isn't gonna get you in the show. So harsh though. I mean, that was still a pretty good run. I mean, you know what I mean? Like he got around the track, he got most yeah. of the zones. It was smoky. On a national up. level, that would have oh, been. Oh, that would have been top ten, top, yeah. top five on a national level. But now, what sort of a level is this? Is it the harshest level ever in drifting? There's other championships that are high level. You probably automatically qualify, or you, you get in the mix. Here, we're losing what 25 drivers in qualifying, and this cutoff means that if you get anything less than really brilliant, you're going home, and you've travelled different countries to be here. Yeah. And here's another driver in trouble. Yeah, Eves Meyer. Scored a zero. Eves Meyer scored a zero. Well, look, I just heard in my ear, the car shut down, right? On his first qualifying yeah. run. Had to take it back to the pits. The car just wouldn't start a second ago trying to come out of the tunnel to get oh, on circuit. Something's so, up. Something's up. This could happen again to Eves Meyer. Now the cars, like we say, the cars are under pressure. Not only the drivers. I think, and I, and I think a lot. If we're thinking a lot. I'm trying not to hurt myself. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that from my perspective, the cars are going to suffer here with a lack of airflow. You've got a lot of heat, and it's a very unusual sort of layout. You've got to come in and be ready to rock and roll, go. You don't have this backtrack where you're driving for a mile like Riga to just see if the car is okay. Yeah. Turn it on, go. That's how it works. That can suffer. You know, some of these drivers don't know if the car is ready to go. And this car has got to initiate and make this first corner, or he's in trouble, and he goes in very oh, heavy. Oh, wow. And that car is trashed in the wall. Oh. You don't even want to know how much that car is worth. A lot. And I think that's the same problem. I think that car shut down on initiation. I think that car has had an issue again. And again, what was he going to do? He had to throw it in, right? Yeah, he, he had to try it, Dave. At the end of the day, there was there was this, there is no test. Warming the tires is the only test you get. And, and I can tell you now that that front wheel was completely ripped off. Um, because the way the car hopped across the circuit after he came off the wall. So this is going to need a full recovery. He is OK. As you can see, that door is open. Eves Meyer jumping out. Yeah, not the end of the weekend he wanted. No, at not all. at all. Yeah, and, and you know what? They're such good guys. They're a great team. They're, they're experienced, not just in, in drifting, but in motorsports. Yeah. Huge experience. Built these two new chassis, and they said it's going to take us a season to get to know them, to learn them. It's not easy to learn them when they don't turn on and no. the switch off and again that's again a new build figuring out new things that's what it's all about and i think for ian from my perspective right now we've got a driver in meyer who has the experience has been all over the world doing this but is struggling with this new chassis and this new build and you can see watch this when he initiates do, do those rear wheels spin for me no no there's no, no power there's there no he power. just handbraked into a wall yeah. that's essentially what he did he hard parked that into the wall and that there's nothing a driver can do about that no, there's no getting away with it. There's no escaping it. That, that is, that's a, you know, a situation where you just have to kind of let what happens go. Oh, there we go. We're making an official zero on the board as we see the, we see the um, uh, lor lorry come out. Sorry, just having a look across the circuit. And uh, 
seeing what's going on there because I could see I could see Joshua Reynolds at the gate and I thought that they were a broken down car as well. So we can see the Budmat lorry out to recover Eves Meyer and Eves Meyer weekend over. And look at that, very dejected. Had a very good practice session. That's the worst thing as well for these guys. But Joshua Reynolds, though, let's have a look where he is at the moment. So he's in 38th place with a 72. And Joshua Reynolds may be feeling the pressure as well. Now nervous to see his teammate wrecked into the wall, knowing that that is the end of the weekend. As we see uh, Eves Meyer walking back across the circuit. He's had enough. He doesn't even want to go in the lorry. He's just going to take a leisurely stroll back across the track as we get Eves Meyer's car recovered back into the paddock before we move on with qualifying here at round six of the 2023 Driftmasters European Championship. And as I say, his teammate, Joshua Reynolds, up next, ready to rock and roll. Oh, so there we go, our safety marshal, Macek Polody, just taking a look underneath the bonnet to see potentially if there was an oil leak, I'm guessing or any other serious issue with that car. As the long, slow, painful walk for Joshua Reynolds makes his way across and he catches eye with Becky down there who is ready to catch him to straight away and a little dab. You know what, look, still in good spirits down there is Eves Meyer as he walks across. And Becky is with Eves Meyer. Becky, not the weekend for these guys. <laughs> not the weekend at all, Eves. We know you had some trouble with your car before you came out and you were you just thinking do you know what i'm gonna try it i'm gonna see what happens and then as soon as you got out the gate did it shut off yeah you know like um finally we find the setup finally i got comfortable in the car i really liked the track practice was on fire and uh even the beginning of the q1 was like so nice and then uh, the fuel pump did go away right in the transition so first run, uh, nothing, and as we see the level now of driving is incredible. So you know, you need to push as hard as you can, and it was too hard, so. We have the off-season to learn from it, so. How have you found your season so far? It's been quite up and down. Definitely, you know, like, de building and developing a car, you know, we built it for 14 months in our small garage with three guys. And then developing the car during the season is hard because you only have like those little time to shine or to find something out. But um, at the end, we're very, very happy with it because we're now on a whole different point than we have been in Mondello. And um, now the off season starts and we can't wait for 2024. Absolutely. And any words of encouragement for your teammate over there? Are you about to go over and have a chat with them and say, look, it's all on you now? Definitely, definitely. Thank well, you. it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. So there we go, an up and down season. But still, nevertheless, Eve Meyer very happy with himself and saying, look, it's hard to develop these new cars. It isn't easy to build a brand new chassis. They built two brand new chassis, two new engine setups for 2023, and they're confident. And look at that, the little reassurance as Eve Meyer goes over and says to Joshua Reynolds, it's all on you, buddy. You've got this, you can do this. These guys, well-traveled, they work together, they drive together, they have a lot of fun together. And as we can see, that beautiful Toyota Supra getting lifted onto the back of the uh, Budmat lorry recovered back to the pits. It's going to be a sore weekend, but nevertheless, he will enjoy the rest of the weekend because we have got one show ahead of us this weekend. So there we go. We're down in the paddock looking at the championship contenders. Peter Vince XS15 sits waiting in the paddock, ready to do battle. And them guys in the lorry, they'll be watching the broadcast as we see. Look at this, Yuha written, and he's got the thumbs up. He's confident as well, chilling with the team, watching the broadcast, working out where these guys are sitting, where everyone's formulating. Oh, and look at this. Could we see problems underneath the vehicle? I just want to have Laurie Heinen. While I'm here, you know, I just want to have a quick word with Kevin O'Connell, who's one of our, our head judges here. Just a quick one, Kevin. What's working for you? What's not working? We're talking about Connor Shanahan's run hitting the 95. What was impressive about that run? Like, you know, versus his, his opponents there in McKeever and Heinen and Rintanen. It's a tough track, right? It is a tough track, but I think what you can see from the very top drivers compared to the drivers that are getting quite high scores but not breaking into those 90s is all about the fluidity and how they're connecting those zones. All of these drivers are at an extremely high level and they are able to get all of those zones, but the, some of the drivers are connecting them up exactly like we asked in the briefing. 
In the briefing for some of those longer zones, we were asking the drivers to get out to those outer zones a little bit earlier, to commit to those walls, and then make the transitions from those zones nice and fluid, and again, get back onto the wall immediately on afterwards. And especially during that center section as well, you can see some of the drivers not nailing that touch and go. I think that's a critical point where a lot of drivers are losing uh, fluid, or losing line points as well. So yeah, lots of small mistakes that are kind of adding up to more major deductions over the course of a full run. Yeah, because you know, if you're a layman, you're watching this, you're saying, hey, you got all the boxes, should be getting 100, right? But it's not about that, it's about how you stay fluid, style, angle, getting closer to the walls, not just in the box. And also, as you said, the line being so important through the track. Little mistakes adding up to quite a few. Well, Ian, we've heard it from uh, Kevin there. And we, we, you know, I love to get a little info from the I don't like talking to him. He's always negative. But this is, he, that's his job. Yeah, he's trying to find... He's very robotic, he's trying, to, he's trying to reward, and then he's trying to be negative about whatever. Yeah. I mean, again, trying to decide between these incredible <laughs> drivers is no easy task. They don't. They have a very, very hard task. And right now, the judging eyes are set to the monitors as they look down and see Joshua Reynolds making his way around. He just sees teammate Park. He's identical super into the warm now. Joshua Reynolds... Is not doing the perfect job. Misses all of outside zone one and inside zone one as well. Now starts to find some form. Gets himself into outside zone four. Starts to pick up the throttle a little bit. Nerves now will be creeping into the cabin of this A90 Supra. As Joshua Reynolds fails to get to outside zone five. Looks for the final outside zone. As Reynolds says, this is all I really want to do this weekend, Dave. I'm nervous. This is a dangerous track. Well, I'll put it this way. I think you look at these two brand new chassis from this team. And, uh, you know, you look at Ismaier and you look at Joshua Reynolds. They are trying to learn at the highest possible level in the scariest places. Yeah. That is not an easy task. And I think this season they both said, we want to learn, we want to get data, we want to make sure these cars come back next year as brilliant as they can. And they have been suffering a little bit because, you know, you, you notice a lot of guys staying in the same chassis as last year. Now, have a look at it. Just think about it. Look at your top 10 drivers. Yep. Bar you have Rintanen, who moved from pretty much the same chassis, GD86, GR86. Underneath, they're the same. None of those drivers moving to a brand new chassis, as far as I'm aware. So, therefore, they've got all this testing out of the way. They're at the best of their abilities. So, you know, these new chassis, how many of them have really succeeded in the championship this year? Not many. No. No, they're, they're, you know, you, you need to be in this car for one to two to three years to make sure that it works and that every single kink is found out. And there we go, look, a worse score than his first 62 for Joshua Reynolds. And unfortunately, the Toyota GR Racing Team are out of competition this weekend. We go back to the line to Christian Salmeru, who scored a zero on his first qualifying run. Took that car to the wall in practice, so still feeling a little shaky, Dave. Yeah, I think this is the thing. I mean, you know, he, he has to improve his score. He's on a 50. There's no, it's do or die. Yeah. Like right now, forget about your nice qualifying run. You got to go hard. And that's what he's doing. Here we are. Salmer goes in the first car, misses that outer zone. Already the points start to bleed. And this is how harsh this event is going to be. Oh, he's in the wall. Oh, big awesome. hit. Big hit. Massive hit with the wall. And that, he's out of control. Cannot stop the car. And he got off the track with one wheel completely broken. Hey, listen, 10 out of 10 for getting that car clean off the track. Look at this, he's going to push it. He's just going to drive it home. He's driving it into the pits with one wheel on the car. Oh, I look at the mark he's left on this brand new tarmac. They're going to be furious here on Monday when they're tearing it up <laughs> that, that that tarmac has been destroyed. If this was any other racetrack, this would be quite the incident where a tarmac has been damaged by a wheel. Here, well, the tarmac no one, no not, one cares. It's not yeah. going to be here in 48 hours, so <laughs> no it's not cares. such a big deal. But, uh, yeah, look, at that was a big hit with the inner zone. And we, we, we were trying to make an entertainment product out of this. We're trying to have a bit of fun. But for him, you've got to feel for it. He missed that outer zone, totally wrong line. He's almost like an arrow here going for that inner zone. Too early on the transition. Yeah, way too early. Look at this. Bam! Look at that contact. Look at and the wall didn't even move a millimeter. It just goes to show you these new walls uh, designed and built here in Poland. They're doing their job because they're taking no prisoners this no. weekend. And, you know, it, it's... Last year, we had a lot of walls falling over, and you know it took a lot of time to fix yep. them, and obviously to make things a little bit speedier through the competition, a little bit more, I think, safer too, because the walls moving isn't safe for the drivers either. No. But it is very unforgiving if you do hit them, and as you can see there from Salmeri, the car moved, the wall didn't, and that's a lot of damage. But uh, right now, we got another driver lining up on the start line. It's Tobias Pushan from Poland, and you can see the Polish flag starting to wave, Ian. If you're just joining us here, it's the final round of the Drift Masters European Championship in the biggest stadium in Poland, the Pegue Naredove. I mean, I'm talking about looking at the, the list here earlier on today. I was in the elevator, it said, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Harry Styles, The Weeknd, Driftmasters. 
Do you ever Beyonce. Think, Beyonce. You ever think you'd see something like that? That's crazy. But you got to get all that out of your mind if you're Tobias Pushin. <laughs> He's got a job to do. And all they're looking at is not all these people here. They're looking at wall, 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 clip, clip, clip. And that's what they need. Polish getting involved. Limited access today for fans. Only 15,000. I say only 15,000 here. Tomorrow, 53,000. But will Pushan be performing in front of them? Got to put a good run in here. Yeah, he certainly has, David. He's uh, doing a good job so far on the outside zone one. He risks it all there on that transition. Times it very, very well. Gets late to outside zone four, but makes it work now as he puts the back end of the wall into the sky. And now fires through the middle of the circuit as Tobias Pushan wants to risk everything. He's going to put it into a oh, spin, he's though. Gone. He's out of the, he's out of competition. He was sitting in 34th position. Yep. That's a zero. Oh, heartbreaking stuff for Pushan as he goes out of competition. And he can't see where he is or what's going on, but he will be furious. Did exactly what Jack Shanahan did earlier on. Did exactly what a couple of drivers did earlier on. Overcommitted on that last corner. Put it, I mean, these cars have probably 70 degrees of steering angle yep. on the front. So when you're spinning, you're in real trouble zone. Yeah, you are. You took on beyond. I mean, all these cars have huge angle fits. And he's still over rotated, which shows how difficult that part of the track is. I think the outside zone five is a place that will catch you out because you carry too much speed here. Look at this, he was full throttle. He did lift off the throttle ever so slightly, but it wasn't enough. And he just carried the speed back the car in towards the wall, and then that was it. He knew to save the car for a hope of getting in the show, he had to put it into a spin, but unfortunately, what Christian didn't know was that he was already out of the show for the weekend. And there we go, we make it official 34th place for Tobias Pushan. And that'll be the end of the weekend for the Polish driver. And unfortunately, the Polish flags drop from the sky as hopes for him fall away. We go back to the start line, though, to another Polish driver. It is, of course, David Karkoszek. And he's hyping himself up. He knows he's focused. At the moment, sits in 24th place with an 83. He's going to want to improve that to secure a spot in top 32 for tomorrow evening as he fires down. Look at this from the initiation now. On it nice and early is Karkoszek. Big angle through outside zone one, flying with danger as Karkoszek goes very close to the wall. No messing around, dials it back in again. He's going to be very early to outside zone four, and he fulfills it. Doesn't get too close to the wall, though, but sticks a wheel on the white line, but he's gone over that touch and go. And that's going to lead him late to outside zone five. But look at this, he dials it in, gets there eventually. But now, outside zone six, the easy one to get to as he comes across the line. I'm not sure if it's better than the first run. I don't think I'm it is. I'm not sure it's better than the first run. It's still a very solid run from Garkosh. I was just thinking about this going. You're watching this right now, and you're thinking, this is pretty entertaining. This is just one car going around. <laughs> this track is not built for qualifying. It's not built for lead runs. It's built for chase runs. Yep. That's where this track excels. This is just a warm up. We've got, you know, a third of the audience, if less than a third, a quarter of the audience here in the stadium. But to be in the big show and everyone wants to be there, you've got to be near perfect. And Karkoshik making some wobbles there. As you said, overshooting some areas, not getting quite deep enough in some of the zones. He's still in the show right now with an 83 from his first run. But that scoreboard starting to get really interesting right now. We still have a 78 as the cutoff. And our next driver, Timur Lipsky, you'll see next up, is on the drop zone. Yeah. But from right now, I think you've got to be almost pinpoint. Pinpoint perfect. I think that's what it takes. And an 80 on the board. So not enough of an improvement. Sits in 24th position. You can see there losing a lot on the line. The angle was good, but the line got to be perfect. Over that touch and go, not good. It's not a clipping zone. No. It's just a guide for the drivers but he was way over that, showing that he, he was offline at that point, exaggerating him. Now, Timur Lipsky up next, the youngster from Ukraine. A, a crazy first run with a 78 on the board, but he's got to tidy it up a little bit here. Yeah, he needs to clean it up a little bit. He needs to still go for that aggression, he needs to still bring the heat, but he needs to be clean. Oh, and he tags the wall on initiation twice as he now finds himself in a sticky situation. Could that have upset his run massively? He touches the front bumper on the wall, he puts the front and the rear to the wall, and another one falls foul to the danger that is Poland. That's a second big hit this weekend, and I think Timur, I mean, look, he's trying to score this 100-point run. He knows, you know, a 70 is not going to do it, a 75, an 80, a soft run. A run where you go around this track getting all the clipping points is not enough to get you in the show. You've got to do it with fluidity, angle, a bit of flair. You need everybody getting a little bit, whoa. That yeah. needed a couple of moments where you're like, oh, he's going to crash. He's no, he's okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, he did crash, and that is the big zero. That young lady is like, folded up on her seat. She's like, I can't even watch these guys. I can't watch a brand new Carbon watch this. Kevlar A90. Watch this, ready? Boom. Boom again. And then he goes, all oh, right, okay, I need to dial it in a little bit. Gets deep on this zone and watches this. 
goes way too early on the transition, and that's where it goes wrong. Hits the wall, but he has nowhere to transition. He's actually no. pinched himself in there, and when he transitions, it's too late. He's taken down barriers. He's taken down the whole right-hand side of the car. Watch this. He ends up in this corner too tight. Watch. Yep. So he gets away with this, but he's no room to transition. The minute he transitions, he hits the back end of the car, front end of the car. And uh, I just want you guys, you know, at home, to take a little Google of how much the front headlight on a Toyota A90 Supra is, and you'll realize what just happened. A very expensive mistake. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they're real, though, Dave. I think these are, uh, you know, fakes. You think so? I don't think they look alikes. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure, oh, unless you already dispersed them. Let's have a look. Yeah, the covers. The covers are fake. Okay. That's fine. Fake, Dave. That's fine. I mean, you guys, I, I say it's fine. There's still carbon fiber covers. But he's got Kevlar and he's got, he got blanks on the headlights, so it's okay. It's not as bad. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's good, but, you know. It's a zero on the board for Timur Lipsky from the Ukraine. He's still in the show. He's, he's going to have to do some repairs if he is still in the show. There's but a lot of zeros show. to come, though. So we're down. Becky's down with Timo. Timo just tried too hard, Becky, and a big hit with the wall. Tima, always my first question when we see something like this happen. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I guess. The car, we saw you come into the second clip, the inner clip there, and you looked like you just got away with it. At what point did you realize the angle was just too much? I think it was just as I transitioned. I was like, ah, I tried my best, but you know, sometimes I just overshoot it. Well, you know what? You've been driving incredibly. You're still so very young. How have you been finding the track? Because I know you've had a couple instances with the walls so far. And maybe this one was a little bit bigger. Yeah, well, I've actually been liking the track all the way through. It's been amazing, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to qualifying, I had to push. I did, and it just didn't work out this time. Absolutely. And look, things can be fixed. You've been driving so well this season. How have you found being in Driftmasters? Have you found the caliber of the driving higher than you realized? Or are you getting along with it? I mean, I thought I was uh, in Ferropolis. I still think I am. It just, you know, it happens. But yeah, I'm amazed by the level of competition here. It's like it's nothing like I've driven before. Well, we're delighted to have you. I hope everything goes OK with the car. Thank you so much, Timo. Thanks, Becky. Well, team, I mean, he's putting a brave face on there, Ian, and you, you got to feel. For, I mean, we're we're having fun. It's a fun weekend. It's a party weekend. But you got to feel for these guys that come out, but so much. And, and I mean, you got to remember that the distances in Europe to travel to six different countries, so all the way from Ireland to Sweden to it, all over the to, to Latvia. This is the whole east to west of Europe. Yeah. Tons of time, tons of logistics, lots of stress, just to perform in one what 50 second run. And you get it wrong, you go home. Very harsh sport. I was just going to say, one wrong mistake, end of the weekend. And that doesn't happen in many motorsports. Of course, you'll have your incidents and your crashes. But here, I'm not talking about you have, and we, I was only speaking to uh, when we, Becky was on air, uh, to David Callas, one of our judges from the Czech Republic. And he was saying, you know, there's going to be some really good runs that are perfectly fine that are not going to make top 32. Yep. So that doesn't happen in normal drift championships, where a fine, good run like, I'm not talking about mistakes. This is just a, a normally a normal, fine run yeah, yeah. that you got all the zones, but how you got them weren't super flared or big angle or whatever, and that's not going to be enough. This is where we're at right now with European drifting, which is a strange place because being, you know, you, you, you think there's no one here is a bad driver. Everyone's an exceptional driver, and you can go through all their credentials. You can look back at everyone that's not going to qualify here today, and they have championed something, won something, trophied something. And that poor Supra is another example of how hard you have to push. Can Timo Lipsky do a lap to this track with his eyes closed? But to try and get a 90 or a 90 plus, which is what he wanted, this can be the result. That's exactly what he wanted. Look, he, he, he knew he needed a 90. And uh, look at the damage taken to that car. Rear wheel gone, front wheel absolutely destroyed. I mean, there's no... There's no compromise anymore, Dave. You, you have to be superhuman. You need to be exceptional now to score high enough to qualify at any Driftmasters event. And I've said it before, and I've said it again, and a lot of drivers say to me, now, if you qualify at these events, it's like a win anywhere else in the world because the level of driving is so high that even making the show is a massive bonus. Well, that's, that's the point we're trying to make here, is that... 
you know, we, we, we all watch it casually, but when you took, look at it, reality, you've got 800 horsepower cars in a stadium that's sold out, right? So this is 53,000 people. Come to watch exceptional things. If you are an act, a musician, whatever, and you're coming here to fill the stadium, you're not coming here to be good or fine. <laughs> they don't go, oh, there's this really fine, you know, uh, artist coming this week. He kind of plays the guitar, he's okay. It's got to be exceptional. And that's what we're expecting from everybody. And people say, hey, the judging's so harsh, and you know, they don't agree with this, and they don't agree with that. And it's, of course, it's an opinion-based sport. It's subjective, that's the whole point, right? We accept that as drift fans, that it's subjective. But to get to a point where it's so harsh that being, like, doing what the judges say is not enough, you gotta be even beyond that. How does a judge set up for that? How does a judge set a track up where everybody's able to do it, and you've got to be exceptional to divide them? That's very difficult, and it's going to create a lot of opinions, a lot of subjection, but what I like about it is you're watching the best drivers in the world at the same time, just randomly all come together, and how do you, you usually have five, ten outstanding drivers, the rest on the way up, learning, you know, trying to be good, bad, some there just for fun, that they kind of have a good day and a bad day. The 32 drivers that we're going to see start the competition tomorrow are all capable of winning the event, and all want, and even more importantly, believe that they can win the event. I was just going to go back to your statement where you said, uh, you know, having one good, exceptional singer. We want 32 of them. Yeah, well, they're not exceptional singers, I'll be honest. I've heard no, some of them yeah, in, in no, nightclubs no. after some of the events. They, they're pretty poor. But as drivers, <laughs> exceptional. Yeah. And I think we're now looking at people like Christian Erlinson, you know, a, a national champion here. He's on 64, got to go for it here. This is where it gets risky. It certainly does get risky, and we've seen everyone risk it so far now. And look at this, as Christian Erlinson goes for that risk, and it doesn't reward him, Dave. He puts the car into a spin after he this contacts is gonna the happen, wall. But it's going to happen more often than not, because yeah. think about it. If you're watching this right now, and you're a driver, Put your, put your mind in the driver's mind. Okay, I can do a lap of this track. I can get these clipping zones, but I'm not going to qualify. So i got to do something absolutely outrageous to get through the event. Now you do what Christian Aronson does. You go too hot, you go too hard. You start making big, uncharacteristic mistakes, and you put yourself out of competition. It's fascinating to watch. From someone who's been in the sport for you know, 10 years like I have, yep. I've never seen this level of tension, stress, and that's a big playing fight. People think, oh, just go drift in the car, like, 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 like a simulator, just drift around. You're talking 800 horsepower, your entire life savings in this car. You're in the stadium, everybody's watching you, everybody online is judging you, just like the judges are judging you. That, in your mind, knowing that you got to go sometimes to 110%, that's difficult. It certainly is. It is very, very difficult. And you know what? I sometimes walk through that paddock and look at these drivers and I wonder how they do it. Weekend after weekend after weekend, how they perform to such a high level with such high stress. We go back to the line, Norbert Zanich now comes off the line, the Hungarian driver. He has to do it all right now. He's in 33rd place. He is just outside of the drop zone and he fires it in now and he almost over-rotates too on initiation, but he makes it work. He holds on to it, picks up that front clip, picks up the second front clipping point, now comes through, looks for outside time, for, but it was a strange transition, but he made it work now as Norman Zamich absolutely hammers the throttle through the floor, looks through the center of the circuit now to that dangerous outside zone five, puts foot to floor, dials on the angle, puts the back bumper to the wall, looks for the final outside zone, sees the finish line and says, I'm home and dry. That was a wild one. That was a pretty <laughs> wild one. The entry was wild. I thought he was going in the wall just like Christian Aronson, yeah. but somehow he managed to dig himself out of it. And then, as you said, some strange mom moments and transitions, but made it work. Got around the, like this. I thought he was going in here, and then all of a sudden he went on the throttle and went, please don't go in the wall. <laughs> and once it got out, the grip, the car gripped up. He was on it. Confidence started to build. This is the transition. We heard Kevin O'Connell talk about fluidity. So when he comes through here, it's kind of, you can see it. The car doesn't naturally slap, snap one direction to another. That's where you'll bleed a few points. Other than that, foot to the floor, really good stuff. Big angle, too, if you got you got to look at that. Impressive stuff from uh, Norbert Zamich. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where the scores are going to go here. I'm not even playing that game no, tonight because no. it's way too difficult to... to we're, we've got to look at it so technically that it would be impossible for us to talk while doing it. <laughs> and I can see the concentration in the judges' faces when these runs are on because it is very tough. Not enough to improve his position. Norbert Samich sits outside. I can see that. Look at that first corner. Misses the whole start of the zone. Yeah. And kind of gets to it halfway through and it's, it's just enough. With that little wobble on the transition, that, that's, you know, you're 90 down to an 80, down to a 70, and see you later. And then you're out of the show. We go yeah. back to the start line.
by Max Miller now. 21st place at the moment for Max Miller with an 85. Looking confident, looking strong. Can he improve though? He's going to want to get himself way up the order into the mid pack. That's where he's going to want to sit into the top 10 potentially now. As Max Miller puts a back bumper to the wall, look at this, this is very nice from the Ukrainian driver as he comes through, risks it all there, just takes the car as close to the wall as he dare. Puts the back end now towards the wall, look at that, flexes the tail light, flexes the spoiler up onto the wall he goes. As Max Miller looks down the barrel, stares at outside zone five, but he comes up a little short, gets to it late and tags it, he gets the line wrong. As Max Miller still keeps on, holds onto it across the line. There was one point where the entire back end of that car had disappeared. I don't know where it went. And then it came back. It came out of the smoke and it still had it. It just flexed the whole car in. You're absolutely right in. It was a phenomenal run up until that transition and he hits the wall too hard, yeah. wobbles the car and then falls out of the zone. Again, overdriving, I think. Just trying a little too hard. I mean, up until then, it was so good for Max Miller. He nailed every zone. I love this transition. It was really fluid. You know, he's close to the wall. He's like hitting the wall in that transition afterwards. But then he comes in here, watch, a little late. I thought this was going to be hit, but he just gets away with it smoothly. This was perfect for Max Miller as he goes to the edge of the track. This is impressive stuff, but watch as he transitions across the track. That's where he starts to make the mistakes. He buries the car in the wall there, goes through the touch and go, looks spot on. As he comes back, this is too late. He's on too much angle, too much speed. Doesn't get to the zone early, gets to it late and then hits the wall. So at 87, that could have been way up there if it wasn't. A really good score for Max Miller. 14th position, but if he had just got that last wall run perfect, I think we could have been looking at mid 90s for that that was exceptional stuff from him a very very good run there from max miller and i think he'd be happy that he improved he did move himself up to that mid pack we now look for a man that's outside in 64th place it is Mikko johansson right now off the line in this crazy bmw e46 comes absolutely tearing down to initiation he knows he needs to get it early and he does he picks it up nice and early but he wanders and wavers out of it now as he picks up that front uh, zone, the second front zone picked up now, the danger part out of the way potentially as he goes to the wall, flexes the back end on the concrete as he comes through the center of the circuit, he looks for that touch and go and he nails it perfectly and look how early he is to outside zone five, he's dialed in on that line, just what the judges wanted to see as he puts foot to floor across the line. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here going, 75% ah, of that run was really good. The yeah. first corner, though, he misses yeah. the whole outer zone. And he's happy. Like, I would be happy with that run. Anyone would be happy yeah. with that run. It's just a strange night. It's going to be strange. It's going to be. Yeah, I that. told you, you're going to see great runs not getting in the show. Yeah. Johansson sits outside the top 32. He missed the whole outer zone. Are we harsh enough to say now that that seems to be the pattern of not being enough? I think, the, like I said, I said it. We said it earlier. I think the, the Germany, whole Germany effect is coming back into play. We said if you miss a zone in yep. Germany, you're not qualifying. Yep. I mean that's harsh. Very harsh. Really harsh. But is that? Is there an argument then to say that that's the top level of the sport? You you have to be perfect. You miss a hurdle in one of those races where they jump hurdles. Yep. You fall over. Yeah, you're out of the race. You're out of the race. If you mistime it, you're out of the race. Yep. So. It's more of a sprint than a marathon, right? So you look at rally driving or circuit racing, you can, you can recover. But in drifting, it's really hard to recover. Yeah, you, you, there's no way you can make it back. If you've made a mistake, there's no way you can impress the judges enough to score enough points back That's in the it. Thing. Look at this, an 80 gets him into 29th yeah, cre position. Creeps in, and I said, that is a great run. Missed, just a, missed a bit of his own, and it's on the borderline. Like he is now what, 29th? 29th. 29th of an 80. Wow, and the scores are creeping up. They Even are. more. And we've got Alexander Kosahov now on the start line, the Ukrainian, impressing me no end. Currently sits with an 88 in 12th position. Hold on to your hats. This could be one to go into the 90s. Yeah, he's going to want this one. And he's been looking stronger and stronger every single run of the track and every single event that we come to. And look at this, shallows up the angle, but bangs the back end in and on the wall now as he looks for these front zones. Oh, look at the angle. Look at the transition. Oh, wow. How does he hold on to that? He's earlier into outside zone four than anyone. And but he, he makes a mistake. Wall. Oh, Ian. Ian. I was about to say, well, that's just incredible. How did he get it? He did what Timor Lipsky did and someone got out of it. He's the only person I've seen that's done that and pulled it off. He pulled it off and then he gets, it's okay, everything's okay, and then he just goes in the wall. How? What's happening? <laughs> the level of pressure that these drivers must be on to try and impress. This is, you know what it's like. You're trying to show off here. This is what the sport's yep. about. And he did. He this is absolutely insane.
Look at this. Have you ever seen anything in drifting quite like that? And he goes, oh, I'm stuck in the corner. And I'm out. Everything is great. He ran the wall he ru he, way That earlier. was as good as you could do it. And then you go, OK, he's all right. And next thing, bang, just hits the wall. I'm like, what? what? How do you hit that wall? That was a big hit, too. Watch, he just mistimes it. He, he misjudges it. He goes too heavy. Yeah, hits the wheel, hits the tire. Yeah. Yeah, the back ends of these cars now are so soft that there's nothing behind the back bumpers and the rear quarters. So as soon as you get too deep in the wall, it's the wheel on the wall. Look at that, a zero. Stays in 12th position where he is. I'm going to have a look at Kevin O'Connell. Kevin, did you like the inner clip snap transition? He gave, oh. me, he gave me the chef's kiss. He said, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. But after that, not so much went in the wall. Yeah. But, and again, I think his first run... <sighs> not enough to get... Don't, don't, don't even just... Is there, I think we'll it's, wait. An 80, wait. it's an 88, come on, surely. Yeah, but we <laughs> surely said this in Germany. Not a lot of wheels on that car in the right direction right now. No. They're all, you know, there's a couple of guys at the car show with the camera like that, but it shouldn't be on the drift track. Shouldn't be on the drift track. No. That's a severely buckled wheel. Look at it that. is, yeah. <laughs> he did okay. He got away with it lightly, I think. He bounced out of it. Didn't take the front end too badly. And the Ukrainian fans. You can see the sadness. Yeah, I mean, this she is... Was like, she was like, did you see that inside wall clip? And then it was the best ever, and then he crashed. But... <laughs> Up until then, up until then, we were we were winning. We were winning the whole thing. Up until then, Axel Francois in the car right now. Nice handbrake there. It's a quite an extended handbrake. Very easy to get to. Looks like a lightning rod. Yeah, he's made it. He's made it accessible. Yep. Yeah. And again, we love. We you know we were walking the paddock earlier with some, with some of our guests from the USA, from from Japan, and they love the different personalities they said in the cars because you know it's not the cookie cutter approach. You've got 23 countries worth of drivers. They've all found their own way to whatever machine they're driving. And you've got Axel Francois, he's got a turbo in the back of the car. Why? I don't even know why he's got a turbo in the back of the car. Do you know? No, I have no idea. Exactly. And that's the point. It's absolutely fine. It works great. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if he's got a turbo in the back of the car. No, he said he likes it. It works well. And, and I'm not arguing him because he's one of the best drivers on the grid. Yeah, I mean, Axel Fra I'm one of the most likable characters in the paddock. <laughs> Axel he Francois is always smiling. Yeah, he's a very happy man. And I'm sure he won't be if he doesn't qualify. And at the moment, he's sitting outside. Yeah, he'll still be happy. Yeah, he'll still be happy, he'll but still be happy. he's competitive. A top 32 finish is what he wants, or into the top 32 bracket for tomorrow's main event. He currently sits in 48. He got a 61. Big improvement needed. And you know, and there he is. Look, he's <laughs> ah, ready to rock is. and roll. But you know that he knows this has to be knife edge, do or die. Yeah, this has to be. And all we got to do edge. is sit back and watch Axel Francois throw it in late. This is much later. Francois tags the wall, stays wide. Oh, a bit of a wobble, and he misses the inner zone. It might be enough just to cost him qualifying. It's a straighten through the inner zone again. Oh, and he's, he's made a real big mistake there. He's completely missed outside zone four, Dave. This is falling, all falling apart for Axel Francois. And look at this, he's, oh, okay. he's aborted yeah. the run. You know yeah. what? It was uncharacteristic to me. Something's up with the car. Yeah. Something's definitely up with the car. And you can see the concern. I mean, if you're here in the state, Stadium, the, the fans know from looking at it firsthand how much stress, how much pressure, how much tension, how difficult it is. They've watched practice and they've watched a lot of crashes. And this is not easy. Track looks easy, it's not. Not when you're driving an 800 horsepower car that close to the walls and every there's not one inch of runoff around this track. No, Laurie Heinen said it. If Laurie Heinen sits in second place in the championship and says the track's not easy, that just shows something to you. Well, yeah, you could take his word for it. I mean, yeah, you over could anyone much, el you Over could, anyone else's opinion, I'll take, Lor him, I'll take right? Laurie Heinen, second in Driftmaster, say this is not an easy track. Out of competition, Axel Francois, French champion, yep. out of competition. This is harsh all the way through. Next up, we got Clint Van Uten. Now, he is a man that's absolutely ducked to water here I mean, in I the think, stadium. I think he's found his form this weekend. 90 on the board from his first run. He's in ninth position. I, I'm 100% sure if a 90 doesn't qualify, I'm just going to give up. I've worked it out. What have you worked there? He has had no fans at any other event. He needs to bring 20 fans. So you got 30 fans here. Yeah. And his score went up 30 points. Just keep bringing Brilliant. the fans. That's Same what he sits on 90. I'm a little concerned for his well-being now, because he knows he has a 90. Nothing to lose. What does he do next? And the car already got wrecked in the first run. Let's see what he does. The Dutch mastermind, Clint Van Oot, fires into that first corner, locking up those wheels. And he's into the wall again. He has this dial to the back wheel with the back of the car. Absolutely. On the front. Look oh, at this. Yes. Clint Van Oot is going. Going for it here as he goes back on throttle. Wow, every wall run on the track. Clint Van Uden is absolutely smashing the rear end of the car into as he hits the touch and go, which has almost disappeared on the center part of the track. He's out again to the edge of the track. Look at the commitment from Clint Van Uden as he hammers the throttle, hammers the limiter. Wow, what a run. Whoa. 
That that's, was, that's what I came here to see. That's, that's better what than I came the first here. run. That is better than the first run. I'm not sure if it's better or worse. It's just great. <laughs> Either way, it's great. That I'm telling you, that had more impact, literally. Literally. Is, is the rear of the car disappeared about look four times in that run. It twerks as he makes his way into our side zone. But look, the car just like flexed the whole back end over. He's buried in the wall. I think he's more clinical on the zones. This, and if, this inner zone is just closer off. to the inner look, zone as well. This, Watch look, this. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful on the inner zone. The camera here is going to be like, what up? There we go. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh it's man. good. It's good. I think this is better. Thumbs up. Thumbs yeah, up from I, us. I, I, massive golden buzzer moment for me. That was spectacular from Clint Bennett. It was exciting. It was a little bit I thought he was going to crash all the time, which I like. And I, think I think that's the level. That's it. If you feel he's going to crash, if it looks like he's going to crash, he doesn't. That's a good score. That's a good score. If it looks like he's just in control of pottering around. Oh, man, he, he gets to outside zone five so early as well, and I thought this is where he could crash. If this is going to go wrong, he's going to crash here at outside zone five. No. I'm not sure. Is it is it going to be up there? I, I liked it a lot. What was his first score, Dave? His first score was a 90. That's a very that's, good that's, score. That's a very good score. That's better than a 90. You think it's better that's than a 90? That's better than a 90. I'm telling you now, I could bet my bag of Haribo in front of me on it. <laughs> that's how confident I am. And I love sweet. We love sweets. Willing we do. To, I'm willing we to. Do. I'm willing to. Oh, oh my God! Clint Van Oud goes top of qualifying with a 96. Business. I told you, Dave. You were right. It's taken six rounds, Ian. You've only, you've only done it, it once, I've but you were right this out. time. Incredible. Wow. 96. Are you kidding me? Spectacular. From that, you know what? It was the most exciting run of the night. It got the highest score of the night. Now we know. Manuel Vaca, follow that. That's not going to be an easy task because that was sensational. Vaca also sitting outside the top 32. He's got to go for it. Everyone's got to go for it now. He has, certainly has. Look, he's got nothing to lose. The Italian fires it in, but he doesn't react. Oh, and he saves it from the wall, Dave. The but Italian driver just nearly ended it. Well, let's be honest. Let's be real here. That's a zero. It's, 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 it's a zero. It's a failure to initiate. Fail failure to initiate. The car is broken, and yeah. that's out of competition. I told you, it's do or die. Clint Van Oud, 96. Manuel Vaca, one tiny error of understeer on the first corner. Boom, you're, you're out. out. Oh, well, the grass is ruined there in the middle as well. That was lovely earlier <laughs> on. I don't know if you know, but it's fake. It's fake grass. It's still ruined. Fake grass, though. Fake grass. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go out at the end. Just, just, just go. Just go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so next up on the grid will be a zero for Manuel Vaca, and then Calais Rovenpera. So Rovenpera. Of course, if you're unfamiliar with rallying, and you shouldn't be because he's very good, he is the youngest and current reigning world rally champion for Toyota. And he also is pretty handy at drifting. And he also says that he wants to win this event so he can say he's won a rally event and a top level drift event, which I'm pretty sure no one has ever done before. No. So that would be quite the statement from young Cali Rovapera, and he, with a 93 on his first run, is starting to make a few people get a little worried that he might just do that. Yeah, I, mean, I was just going to say, a 93 on his first run, Dave, that's quite a statement. I'm thinking that if he, if he, from my perspective, if he was to win this event, he would win the biggest rally event of all time and the biggest drift event of all time, and then he could put his feet up for the winter going, well... I mean, if I, well, if I, if I was him, I'd just put my feet up full stop. Yeah, I just <laughs> go, like, I'm done. I've kind of kind of done it all now. Roll the credits. <laughs> roll the credits. We'll start again on a higher drop. difficulty. <laughs> but Cali Robin Perry, he's not happy. I know him. He's a, a stone cold competitor, right? Yeah. Great kid, but he's looking at that 93 and also looking at Clint Van Out's 96 going. Right, that's the target. That's the target. If you're a rally driver, you're not looking. That's a that's a nice time. No, you want to win. Yeah. By yeah. the smallest of margins. And Rovan Perez said, drifting very different. It all happens within a few corners, not over a load of stages. But can Rovan Perez in this crazy Supra top qualifying? Well, he's going to go for it here. He's got the safe score in the bank, Ian. Now can he go top? Now he needs to find the limit to this A90 Supra, and he looks like he is going to find the limits. Dave, look at this. Oh, and he disposes of the back end of the car already as he absolutely fires through. Oh, wow. These guys now are starting to get a little bit dangerous as there's no messing around. Whoa, wow, Rovan Pera is trying to ask Clint Van Orr the question, can you be as good as you want to be? As, can you be as good as me? As he fires into outside zone five, I think that was a little scrapping from Rovan Pera. He gets into six and across the line, and I don't oh, know, Dave. That could be it. That could be the one. I that, don't know. That first section was unbelievable. 
I think it's even funny that we're comparing Finn Van Oot to Kelly Rovapera <laughs> because Kelly Rovapera, by any right, shouldn't really be here. He's a world rally champion, and, and this is where we're at. This is the craziness of this we get. That was bananas on that first section. And that inner zone, oh, it's perfect. This looks to me perfect. Watch. Oh, come on. Come on. They didn't even touch it. There's, he something, was that there's close. something wrong with this kid. He's just got Look at this. superhuman. Look at the splitter. Oh. I've got the scrunchiest face right now of delight, <laughs> saying, oh, unbelievable. That's just mind blown. How, how have we done? We have lost the run of our professionality <laughs> here because how are we supposed the to- The last two what, events. What do, you want, what do you want me and Ian to do? Sit here going, well, that was nice. Yeah, nice, nice run there. When he, you know when he just run the front end of that Supra off a concrete wall? Yeah, it was really nice. This is ridiculous. Look at this. Is it, Buried this is in the wall. Ridiculous. On the back end of the car, is like, can you just drop me off anywhere at all? I just don't want I've any part. Of, I don't want any part of this. It's going to be up there. It's going to be it, way think, up there. I think five is going to be the deciding factor. I think he got to five a little late. Oh, but it was still on big angle, and he didn't use the handbrake to get there. He stayed on throttle. So I'm just saying. I'm, I'm looking at Kevin O'Connell. He's mouthing words to me, but I don't know what he's saying. He was a little ah, off the I was five. right again, Dave. I don't oh. know what's happened this weekend. I think it's the sweets. It's a oh 99. Oh, my God! A 99. <laughs> what? So you're telling me the only point Mark docked was just he could have been a tiny bit closer to the wall. Yeah, absolutely. He was just a little bit off the walls and five and six. That was one point deduction. So I was right. Let's just get that clear. I was right. <laughs> For Ian. one team, yes. Yes! What a weekend! Ian. <laughs> Oh, so, wait, hold on a minute. Hold on, we just see a 99-point run. I did a promo for this, which a lot of people have seen at this point, and I said, where do we go from here? <laughs> the World Rally Champion just did a 99 in a stadium in Poland, and this is real life. I that told just, you it was special. Just, just, I told you that was a special run. And now they're taping a Mercedes so back together. So hold on a minute. <laughs> the, the top two qualifiers at the moment is Calo Rovampera, uh, Clint Van Orr, Yep. And uh, I'm just trying to alter my screen so I can see it. Connor Shanahan. And Connor Shanahan. Right, yeah. Because that makes total sense. And then Laurie Heine and Kevin Piscotti. Well. Now we got Henry Felix. Hamper. Or Felix Dinval, rather. Sorry. Felix Dinval. It used to be Henry Hamper's car. Be. Now it's Felix Dinval's car. He's sitting outside the top there. It's a tough act to follow for Felix Lindvall here. Yeah, well, he's going to go for it, Dave. Zero on the board for Felix Lindvall. Uh No, no, it wasn't a zero. Sorry, my bad. He's 29th position at the moment. No, he is out of top 32 competition at the moment. And Felix Lindvall doing everything he can. That car held together with duct tape. Me and Dave have lost our minds over the last five minutes of this competition. I don't think either of us know what's going on right now. As Felix Lindvall hammers it to the wall and across the line, you know what, these guys now are just going out there just to try and do anything they can to get into top 32. This is fight or flight, Dave. Well, what's happened is, Rogan Perez showed everyone what's possible. Van Oot's shown everyone what's possible. Now there's the benchmark. So this is harsh on the rest of the grid, because now we know the limits. And we know how good those runs can be. So obviously the scoring is the same the whole way through, but it's rising. Every, every, every run, it's rising. It's now, what, 79? Uh, yeah, seven, uh, 78 is the cutoff still, but we're hanging on in But there. we're gonna get very but high I mean, we're, we're, we've got Timo Lipski with a 78, Jakob Kroll with a 79, and then Romanovski with an 80. But we still have a ton of drivers to go. Yeah, a ton. And we've got Jack Shanahan out with a zero, remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was another bit of drama. We just forgot about it. So Jack so, Shanahan's out with a zero. So if you've just joined us, we're here in a stadium in Poland, which has uh, had a tarmac track laid in 48 hours to be a real race circuit. We have uh, the highest attendance of any drift event in the world. Um, and then also the current rally champion is uh, top, top qualifying qualifier. with a 99. And the guy second in the championship is at a zero. And his brother, who didn't get one practice run, got a 95. And then there's a bunch of other stuff happening. And now we've got Mika Keskakorpi. There you go, up, up speed. Here we go. Here we go. So Mika Keskikorpi now is ready to take off the line. Looks like he's got a water leak on the front of that car, if it looked to me. As he comes off the start line, Mika firing into that first corner. Very heavy in on the angle. Nice from Mika Keskikorpi. He's currently ranked 25th at the moment at 83. Oh, nicer oh, from wow. Keskikorpi. Big snappy transition. 
that's what we came here to see is Corby just doesn't get to the wall. He's dropping out of the zones as he goes a little bit late there. Got to tidy it up here. He's got to be aggressive here to get a good score at the end. Comes in really, really fast up onto the wall. That's better, much closer to the wall as he comes around the last corner. Can see Corby doing everything he can, Ian, just to get himself in the show. That's what it's all about now, just get in the show. Any other round, that would have been a really good score. That would have been phenomenal. But I think that wandering out of the outside zone a little earlier, the shallowness in the zone to the wall, I think that's going to affect it massively. 25th, as you say, Dave, with an 83 at the moment. Is it an improvement? Let's take a look back at it. Um, I was talking to the guys behind the scenes about some points and stuff that's going on with the championship, and it's looking... Uh, Fruity, let's just say that. That's what I'm saying right now. But I look at this. <laughs> it, you know what? It's not going to be a straightforward finish here, is it? <laughs> it, it never is in Drift Masters where you mean you go, you know what? We just love a bit of a straightforward competition. Yeah. I don't want to lose my voice in qualifying again. I'd like it just to be a bit more relaxed. Let's just enjoy it. No, everything has to go absolutely bananas every weekend. And we have no idea what's about to happen. We are as clueless as you guys sometimes because it's so unpredictable. It certainly is, and uh, look at this, I was just, that run was brilliant, look at that, I want an 85. Only good enough for 22nd 20 position. position. An 85, and that is a really good run. Like an 85 all day. Yep. But a 99 is there now? Where, where, where do we go from here? We go, 100? There's, a, there's a 100 out there. There's a, there's a 100 a, out there. I've been waiting on this 100 the whole season, and today, it has to be today. Well, we'll see. Jakob Kroll, the man who sits in 31st place right now, comes off the line. What can he do? Two Jay-Z BMW E46 off the line right now, and he fires that car in, and every driver in the paddock, in the line, in the queue to get on circuit knows they have to be exceptional right now, and they have to risk it all for the reward of a place in top 32 tomorrow. As Jakob Kroll puts the back bumper to the wall, he is absolutely going for it fires through the centre of the circuit. The line through the touch and goes unreal. You can't even see him through his own smoke and that messes his line up into outside zone five. He flexes the back end up the wall as he comes across the line. I don't know if it messed him up. I think he did okay. I think that's... It. We just couldn't see it. I think we couldn't see it. I can't see anything now. That no one can see anything. That was a banger of a run from Jakob Brawl. What's happened? Has everyone just said, oh, sorry. Everyone. Oh, it's the final. Oh. I've got six maybe months the, maybe to Maybe they just got the really wound up that a rally driver was top in qualifying. <laughs> They're like, well, not on my watch. So, Jakob Kroll, this is a good run. Solid. Throughout the, I mean, I liked the transition here. I mean, he's not overly aggressive in some areas, but, I mean, didn't make any major errors. Looked fluid to me. Went to the walls. Flexed a few body panels. Great driver, Jakob Kroll. He's been good all season. Oh, he's been he's he's re he's been reborn. He changed the engine yeah. in this car from from a V8 to a 2 JZ, and it's like he completely found this new style of driving. And you know what, Dave? I am so thankful that he done that because oh. it this guy now has come alive as a driver for sure. So he'll await his score from the judges, and uh, you can just see the amount of debris being fired around as yeah. these guys come through the course. Um, not even, there we go, 95, here we go, oh, a not 95 for Jakob Kroll, unbelievable, I told you, through the smoke, he did not make an error there. Yeah, I, I couldn't see it. I was right. You were right, Dave, first yep. one of the day. First one of the day, don't get many, <laughs> but I was like, there's nothing wrong with that run, he did everything the judges asked him, we're now 95s, 99s, what's happened, it tastes that is on the line, and now he's trying to jump up the order. He's got an 87 on his first run. Can the 17-year-old youngster from Israel, who's been looking for a big result this year, get it done here? Big initiation. And well, he's going to go for it, and he's got nothing to lose, Dave. This is all on the line. Look at this, and again, another driver tagging the wall, but he upset the line, and it shallowed him up for that first inside zone as he fires back across the circuit. Itay Sadar now looking for outside zone four, fulfills it as he absolutely fills the stadium with smoke on the foot break through the centre of the circuit. Itay Sadar now looks for outside zone five and he's there uh, nice and early looks for six absolutely glues the back end of the bmw to the wall all was good one zone the inner zone the first inner zone he yeah. missed it completely yeah he stayed on outside zone one way too late and i feel so harsh saying it but it, <laughs> it might just be enough to not give him a really good score yeah i mean he's 17 for the moment with an 87 i'm gonna say he's pretty comfortable right there he's 17 and he's 17th. Yeah. It's Coincidence? Big. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a taste of that. I mean, this is a cracker from here. Like yeah. He's on every wall. You got to just love the commitment. Everyone's out there just, they don't want to leave it, don't qualify, whatever. 
what I want from this is to give my all. Yeah. And I don't want to back down and look like I just kind of lightly drifted around, just did a few little spins. Oh, yeah. No, not enough tonight. 82 on the board. Not enough to beat his first score. It tasted ah from Israel. 16th position. So he's 17 with a 16th position. It's not bad. So let's see. And obviously he jumps up because there's tight scores. Because there's tight yeah. scores, yeah. I'm, I'm learning. You're getting there, Dave. You know how the laptop works. So here's works the diesel Mercedes is about to do a lap in a stadium. So that's a normal thing that's happening. Got an 84 on his first run, and he's probably going to get there and try and absolutely send this one. Timo Peltola from Finland, big fan base here this weekend. We love to see him on track, and he's coming in hot. He certainly is coming in hot. Look at this as he fires down. Look at the black smoke coming from the body beast way out of outside zone one. He's made a real big mistake there, and I don't think that's going to be enough to improve as he comes through that front clip. You can see him on the throttle nice and early. He massages it, works it into that outside zone, but he's off of it once again. He's in and out of the zones, and that's not what the judges wanted to see. Comes across the circuit, looks for outside zone five. He's carrying big speed and big angle, but it's too much. It's the same thing, same problem again. Going for too much angle on that last wall and just over-rotating. It's exactly what Jack Shannon did. It's exactly what you watched a couple of drivers do now. Strange part of the track. Strange part, yeah. I think you're carrying so much speed across there that you kind of get a little bit lost. I think the perception I, is hard. I think, yeah, you're coming at the wall straight. Yeah. You go on angle, and all of a sudden you go, I'm going to hit that wall. Yeah. So you go on more angle, and then by the time you put the throttle down, you're spinning around. You're spinning, yeah. That's a. Uh, I mean, I haven't driven this track. I wouldn't drive this track. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. But I'm telling you now, that's probably depth perception running across from one side to the other. That's, that's knock. And again, the smoke. Look at the smoke he's coming through. And all of a sudden there's a wall. He's like, oh, no. Spins it out. He will not be a happy man. No. But he does have an 84 from his first run, so he is in 25th position. So still in the game for the moment, Timo Peltola. And stranger things have happened right now. We don't know where these scores are going to end up. Alex Holovnia lines up on the line. 87 on his first run, which at the time seems like it would be more than enough. Now I'm getting a little concerned. Halavnia might want to improve from here. He's sitting in 20th position right now with an 87. Coming in very hot into that first corner. A little snappy transition from this F22. Oh, big angle, though, as he comes through, getting the back end of the car to the wall. Halavnia doing a great job so far. Will he go close to the wall? You bet he will as he fires and gets nice and tight in the corner. Halavnia goes out to the wall as he extends that right around the whole way on the track. Touch and go, perfect. Now this is the bit everyone's struggling with. As they come back to the wall, but no such issue for Halabni. He goes back on angle, big angle as he takes it through in his own five and six. And look at the amount of black marks on those yellow walls for how many cars have hit these walls at this stage. Halabni, not one of them. I'm gonna just say, Dave, that that was an incredible run. They're all incredible runs. But I mean, that, that was, was yeah, really, right. really good. And I've got a feeling that's going to contest some of the top drivers. To me, there wasn't much wrong with any part of it. No. And there was a bit of flair, a bit of style, a bit of wall running. It was the aggression. It was the angle. Yeah, we quite carried. like the snappy transitions. He went into the corner where most people kind of cut across that corner. He went right deep into it. I like that. Cool car. Great driver. Stepping up to the plate. I think he's going to contend it, contest some of the top guys, Dave. I think this is going to really put people, um, get people thinking in the paddock that there's a lot of drivers out there that can put down an incredible lead line. And we know they can chase well if they've given them an incredible lead. Well, think about it. If everybody, we saw it in Germany, has got a high score. Remember, why do we do qualifying? We're trying to find the best lead drivers. Why? Because we want to see close chase drivers. You can't have a good chase without a good lead. The best lead drivers. You get lead drivers all above the 80s, 85s. You already know ahead of the main event tomorrow that the chase runs are going to be spectacular. And if we've had as much hits with the wall, bumper nudges and all in qualifying, can you imagine we put two cars door to door on this track tomorrow? Oh, it's going to be incredible. Scores drop in for Alex Holovnia. This guy's pretty happy. He wasn't happy a minute ago. Now he's now really he's happy. happy. Now he he's happy. happy. He turns it on, that guy, when he wants to. He was very nervous about the score. 94 for Alex Holovnia. I knew it. I knew Fifth it was position. coming. We got some <laughs> She's happy now as She's well. Happy She's now. happy They're now. Great. She was sad earlier. She was like, oh, I don't know. And then the Ukrainian and maybe Timor Lipsky have the crash. She was sad. Now, yeah, now she's like, yep, yes. We got a Ukrainian driver guaranteed into the top 32. And Alex Holovnia as Pavel Grosch sits with his 82, which is only enough for a 29th position right now. Think about it. 82, almost, you know, three quarters perfect. Yeah, not enough. 
Roche has got to improve here. He certainly has. Well, he impressed us earlier with the first qualifying run. Flexed the back end, the Subaru BRZ up onto the wall. But this time, he stayed away from the wall. And I don't know if keeping away from the walls is going to do enough this weekend to get you into the show. He is in the show right now, but there's still a few zeros to come. As Pavel Grosch looks for the outside zone, looks for the transition through the middle of the circuit, fires down into outside zone five. There's the back end to the wall and absolutely smashes the rev limiter as he looks for that final outside zone across the line. Job done. Why? In the first one, we didn't see any of this. No. Everybody is now on it. Are Every they, run has improved. Do you know, they all sit backstage, waiting to get on track, watching the broadcast. They sit there, Dave, and they watch the scores. They watch the drivers. They see what other drivers are doing. And they sit there and say, well, I know where I am. They hear us say, well, this is where they are. This is where they are. This is the cutoff. And they know their score. So they say, well, I have to go out there and be exceptional. I have to push the car. I have to risk the car for a spot in the show tomorrow in front of a sold-out football stadium. And the risk is the, re the reward is to be a part of the main event of the biggest drift event in the world yep. of all time. Yep. I would, and if you're drifting a drift car, what's more important? If you're not in the championship race, for the championship race guys, it's a little different. But for these guys sitting in the mid-pack, to be the main star of the biggest drift event in the world is worth risking the car. Yeah. Has to be. Last round of the season, and to get a shot at the podium. This is the yeah. last chance to get a podium of the year. So if you say, I'm going to risk it all to stand on the podium in front of all those people, then it's worth it. And 82 matches his first score, yeah, it's 27. Gonna a, it's going to be a nervous wait. It is going to be a nervous wait. And I never thought I'd say that with an 82-point run. No. I'd have been celebrating. I'd be on the roof of the car with an 82 <laughs> going, this is the best thing ever. Get down, Dave. Yeah. Get down. It's an 82. It's almost perfect. <laughs> Not perfect enough. Here we go. Adam Zalewski looking for perfection. A man that could very simply try and get himself. It goes really early to the edge of the wall. Nice from Adam Zalewski as he takes it bang, right out to the... This is perfect so far from Adam Zalewski. Will he go close at all? You can bet he will as he transitions back. A little snappy transition to the GT86. Zalewski suffering mechanical issues all year, but now he wants to prove his worth here in front of his home fans. The Polish driver did a great job at transitioning. Track. This is where everyone's struggling. We can see a little, little slow up from Zalewski. He's getting that angle right, and he gets it absolutely perfect as he runs what is a very short overhang on this car right to the wall. Zalewski looks to me like he's in the game. That is a great yeah, run. That was a great run, Dave, and that's going to jump. You know, he's going to jump his enthusiasm, going to jump his confidence through the roof, knowing that he can stick that car to the wall and run the front bumper around the wall as well. He's going to be feeling good after that. And he'll want to win. Look at this, all the flags flying. Um, I mean, the support from the fans here. I mean, real fans turning up, yeah. putting on flags, face paint. I mean, this is what we wanted from the sport. You know, real support, positivity. That's what's pushing the sport here in Europe forward. It's getting people to come to stadiums like this to put on events. We couldn't do any of this for the amazing fan base that these drivers have and the championship has, but more importantly, the drivers have. Yeah. People live and die by their results on the track, and Zalewski's got a huge fan base here in Poland. Everybody wants to see each of their drivers, their favorite drivers. I'm sure you guys at home have your favorite picks. Do well. A 94 for Adam Zalewski, back in business. Anything you can do, I can do better, Alex Zalewski. It is back in business I just, for Zalewski. I just, it just uh, occurred to me how many zeros we've still got. Really? <laughs> oh, it's going to get interesting. Now, on the line, Oren Nielsen. There's a man that anything can happen, but he has got a zero on the board right now. Nielsen has to make it happen. He's been fighting tooth and nail all season, Ian, but he has to make it work here. Yeah, well, this is a man that can make it work, Dave. He's willing to risk it all. And look at this as he puts the back end of this Toyota Sora to the wall. Probably the biggest vehicle on the track so far as Oren Nielsen misses, or doesn't, sorry, get as close to the wall. We'd like to see him. He stalls up massively there and slows, doesn't get to outside zone four as early as we'd like. Now starts to turn the screw, looks down as for outside zone five and will he get there nice and early and I'm not sure he did as Oran Nielsen wanders and wavers in that like outside zone as he fulfills six and gets across the line you know what we're used to seeing Oran Nielsen right up there at qualifying one of the most talented drivers on the grid that looked a little shaky to me it there did some shaky moments in there from Nielsen and, and it's something I didn't expect you sort of I think you watch drifting and you expect these guys to be almost robotic like Skelectric's cars you just press a button and they do a thing it doesn't happen like that anymore. These cars are tough to drive, the conditions are tough, the grip levels are tough. 
And I think Nielsen suffered a little there, just didn't get, and I mean... He you, missed you, that zone, yeah. You missed a couple of zones, that's fair to what we've seen before and say, there's a big difference. There is a big difference. For, for me, it was the beginning of outside zone four. He completely missed it and didn't get it in it until after the, you know, the track entrance. And that's a, that's a big no-no. Well, body panel yeah. flex in. It's not, it's gonna be somewhere in the mix. Is it enough to go into the top 32? Just about into the top 32. But in 83 goes Oran Nielsen from Norway. 27th position. I mean, imagine getting 82 and it's 27. It is crazy. Cutoff now rising to 80. 80 is the cutoff. And it's rising rapidly. <laughs> Adam I'd, I'd Adam, say he's happy. Yeah, Adam Zalewski, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, pretty delighted with that one. Pretty, pretty happy. Back we go on back, the yeah. Line. yeah. We got you have Point Delaxo. He got a 72. It is enough for 42nd position. He's got to go big or go home. The finish driver does not want to miss the party tomorrow. He's got to put that E92 on the line. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Look at this big flick across the circuit. Nice handbrake initiation as he sets the cart nicely in outside zone one. Flexes the back end of the E92 BMW off the wall. Looks for the two inner zones. Nice transition back. Very well timed. That was so clean from Yuha Point to Laxco as he looks to fulfill all of four and doesn't really fulfill it all now. And he's shallow on the inside edge of the circuit. Doesn't get wide to that touch and go. And that's going to be a deductor. A deciding factor as he now once again goes for the wall across the line. I don't think he's done enough, Dave. Honestly, I was just sitting there thinking the same thing going. I don't, you just it was actually really good. It was really good, but I don't. Now, on this yeah. competition at this level, I don't think he's done enough. I think, okay. I think it was just to break it down. Well, the first corner was very good. He got out to the wall, did everything he needed to do. He got the inner zone here. That was all pretty sweet. A little tight here on the transition, does go close to the wall. I thought at this point, we're on for one here. Then as he transitions back, there's, there's a couple of waivers, but it's not terrible by any means. It's not like he's miles outside of the zone. Um, yeah, like look at that, it's not, it's not, he's a, just a little bit far away from the walls. Yeah, he's just it, away from the wall. Yeah, it's there, he, he misses that zone, but then he, he this, comes up yeah, short in the middle. That to me, the touch and go, which isn't a clip, by no. the way, it's just a touch and go. But, but it's a reference. It's a reference. He was way away from that. And then kind of got to the walls late as well. So I'm not sure. It's a, yeah, it's a 74. 38 position with a 74. Out of competition. You have Point Delaxo is not going to be in the main event. Multiple That's finish champion. Multiple finish champion. And now we move to a German champion, Max Heydrich. Well, Max, I, he's safe. He's a 91. But, but now he could get dangerous. This is where it's dangerous for people in the first five rows. Max Heydrich, <laughs> the leash is off. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah the, the helmet visor drops and he says, well, I'm going to go for it. But that's a very tatty initiation. That wasn't clean from Heydrich. And I, I already know that that's not going to trouble the top end of the championship. As he starts now to work his way around the outside zone. Look at this, he gets into it, puts the back end up close and personal to the wall, doesn't do any damage. And Max Heydrich now, much nicer job through the centre of the circuit. Looks for outside zone five, but once again, shallow on it, gets it deep right to the end. He's on the wrong line. Looks for outside zone six, fulfills it, gets the job done. But I don't know if that's going to trouble his first score. I was just listening to you talking, and I was going, wow, oh, like, maybe we're super harsh on it. This is obviously... People, I do people, think that a lot. People are struggling to drift, you know, two corners of the track. Yeah. And, and you know, do some donuts. These guys are out here on full grip, crazy soft tires, throwing the car at walls at about like full steam. You were like, little tatty on the entry there. Missed that, and I'm like, have we got to a point where this is normal to us, that we can criticize it and feel okay about it when we've, we've lost all reference of how incredible this is? I 100% agree. I think people watching this at home and us have just gone, oh, this must be fine. Because people are scoring 99s and 85s, and 85, and you were like, oh, a bit tatty, and you're going, have we lost the run of ourselves in drifting in Europe when we think 99s, 95s, and 96s are normal? In, in this, in competition, I think, yes. I think we've kind of lost what is the norm. This is bananas. Like, everyone here is 
unbelievable. And now Marco Zacco is going to be even more unbelievable. He sits for a 92 in 10th place. The Czech driver in this BMW M2 firing in very, very late initiation. A little double initiation on the handbrake there as he sends the back end into the wall. Look at the speed of this car through the course as he transitions on the... Look at that on the inside zone. Is he, oh, a little wobble on the transition. I don't blame him. He came so close to that wall. You can see as he fires through here, this is an aggressive run from Marco Zacco as he transitions through just about gets to the touch and go. Transitioning back here, Zacro puts the foot to the floor. And, oh, he's touched the wall, big touch with the wall. That's going to be an error as he fires. And look at the aggression around the circuit. As Zacro leaves nothing to chance, hits every single wall on the track. I think he may have even hit the front bumper off the wall on the transition. They, they're, they're going out there now, Dave, with a level of thought in their mind that unless they are hitting every wall with the front and the rear, they're not going to be doing enough. Well, the judges are going to have a look at this one. It's two handbrakes on the way in. I'm not sure how they look at that. And then I think for me, you know, it was a little hit of the wall just in the last zone. But other than that, look at this. Oh, it's just phenomenal. The it's bumper phenomenal. Just, the bumper just flexed. Look, look at this. Look. Oh, come on. Where else are you going to see something like this? You Nowhere. go. I'll tell you what, if you're watching this online, go find me somewhere else. You can watch. People, sane people, running the front bumper of their car, full tilt drifting off a wall. Go find it to me. Tell me where it is, because I don't think you'll find it unless you've seen another Drift Masters event. That is ridiculous. There's a whole thing that we never had before. Front wall run. Oh, that was a big mistake there as well. Yeah, he hits the wall hard there. Yeah. Really hard. It really upsets the front wheels of the car. That's a big deduction. <laughs> I'm just sitting here in disbelief of yeah, what we've seen. I, I, and, you, I'm, and you know what's happening, right? Everyone's... We're, we're here, waiting on a score for Marcus Zacco. A little breather. Judge is having a good debate in this one. For me, we know when we get to the end of this qualifying session that the championship is on the line. And it's been the most competitive championship I've ever watched. And there's six drivers still in the mix. One of them's on a zero. The rest are scattered amongst the top 32. And it's going to be so tense when we get to the end of this qualifying session because those drivers have been, some of them, trying to play it pretty safe. Yeah. Just to get in the show. Now they realize that getting in the show they need to get the points from qualifying as well. They need to look at the bracket. A 93 from Marco Zaccaro. If he hadn't hit that wall at the end, just that little bit too hard, we could have seen, we, that could have been another 99. <laughs> we say a 99 like it's nothing now. No, I'm just saying, he, he, Marco Zaccaro could have got a 99 if he didn't hit that wall. I don't mean ice cream, I mean the score. <laughs> So now we got Pontus Harmon on the line. He is in this beautiful E46 BMW. And Pontus has got 1,021 horsepower, and he's going to need it because he's in the 45th position with a 68 right now. The Swedish driver needs to improve. Everybody needs to improve. That's the tail of the tape right now. Yeah, look at this. Pontus Hartmann has been improving every single round of the championship and finding his form. But I think he came out with a safe run in his first qualifying run. Not so much this time. He knows he needs to risk it. It's a much nicer job already from Pontus Hartmann. He's way deeper into the zones. He's much more clinical. There's Pontus Hartmann puts the back end of that BMW E46 to the wall, scrunches the tail light, blows the lens clean off it as he looks for outside zone five. I think he gets there just in time as Hartmann looks for that final outside zone, and this is way better for the Swedish driver. I think you're right when you said everyone's been watching. Yeah, they have. They They've have all been to watching everyone else going, well, there we are. There's the bar. I'm not going to get into the show tomorrow without that. Without doing so that. So I've got to do it. And they're all doing it. Yep. I've never watched. I'm going to say the driver's in the middle of the championship. Step up uh, to this level. Yeah, no. I mean, look at this. Clint Van Oot, you know, mid-pack driver. Didn't qualify in Germany. Didn't qualify. Scored, a, scored a, a, an 80-something in Germany. Yep. Didn't qualify. Now we got a 95. 96. 96. Cali Rovenpera, like another driver that hasn't, you know, struggled, struggled in qualifying. In qualifying. He has now got a, you know, it's a 99, <laughs> which is pretty hard to beat. And then we're watching people like Pontus Hartmann come out here and now step up their game. They're leaving the best to last this year. Everybody is. Because it means that much to them. Nobody wants to go to the biggest drift event of all time and watch the main event. No. Sit from the grandstand. Sit stands. from the grandstand. They don't want that. They want to be in it. And an 81 just creeps them in. In 31st. But as you said, there are some zeros in there. It's going to be a very nervous wait. It is going to be a, a nervous wait, and well, I've got two coming up straight away. I've got I've got four drivers on the list in front of me already that are outside of the show. First up, though, Pavel Korpelinski, an 86 on his first qualifying run. That's enough for 22nd place at the moment. 
and Pavel Kopolinski will have all of the Polish fans behind him. This young man has done great things in the past. We've seen him on the podium multiple times. Now he needs to really pull it together as, as Kopolinski starts to turn it, it up now, starts to really feel the pressure inside the arena. Wow, that was very nice. He gets onto that wall very early. And look at this now. Flames start to erupt from behind the wall. The pyro starts to get put into effect as we get closer to the end of the evening here in Poland. And Korpolinski goes for it. Look at this, takes the back end off the car. Now really works it in and turns it up to 11. Oh, that's a good one. I heard one of the judges say, oh, now that is good. <laughs> that's what I just overheard from the far side of, of where we are. That was a very clinical one. It was technically brilliant. It's Korpolinski-esque, as I yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just such a technical driver. Like, everything about that run was, what did the judges tell me to do? Go there, go here. OK, you want me close to this wall? I'll be close to this wall. He's not smashing the wall. No, but he's just doing enough. close enough. Yeah. He's not taking it. I love this. The pyro starting to kick off. You're going to see a lot more of this tomorrow night. Pyro. we got CO2 cannons. Shh. I'm not, oh, I'm not supposed to say? Oh, this is right. Don't give it away. I'm not giving it away. You get us just in saying, trouble. Tomorrow night, there's a lot of things happening here that you don't know are happening. And qualifying, let's say, is about 15% of the excitement <laughs> of what's about to happen here tomorrow night. Are we not, we're just not going to give away. No. You're going to have to come and watch it. Yeah, you're going to have to tune watch, in. Yeah, or, if or if you were one of the lucky 53,000 people that got a seat in this arena. We are. I mean, we got the best seats in the, the house. We got the best seats in the house, but that's the only reason we do this gig. Yeah. We're not even getting paid. We're just here because <laughs> just here these are the, the best seats yep, in the house. Yep, yep. But the thing about it is, is that all of the people watching on from Red Bull TV, exclusively live on Red Bull TV, are going to be in for something, uh, some surprises. Oh, well, there's a lot of surprises. A lot of surprises. A lot of surprises. And there's not just the battles, it's a little bit going on. Yep. But you, I mean, you've got the... Oh. Hey, 91 on the board for Pavel Korpolinski. I, you know what? I was just saying creeping into the 90s because he didn't have the big angle smashing wall stuff. But technically, look at the line. Yeah. 54 out of 60. He didn't have the wow factor. But technically, perfect. Technically yeah. enough to get you in the show. Easy. Easy. No mistakes. Really good. And what's going on down here? Who's this? This is Joachim Anderson. And he's sitting on the start line. He's sitting outside the top 32. It's 72 in his first run. The Swedish driver. With this S14, 800 horsepower, new look this weekend. Will be new fortunes as Anderson fires in very late. Very close to the wall, absolutely smashes the back end of that car into the wall. As he transitions back very close to the wall. This is good and tidy so far from Yoki Anderson. Got to stay in it, got to stay on through all the flames. Fire into the grandstand as Yoki Anderson puts foot to floor through the center of the course. Touch and go, hard to see where it is right now on the track, I'm sure. The save for the drivers, but the line looked pretty good to me as Anderson goes to the wall. Much tidier run than his first run here. Anderson across the line. That was brilliant. I think that just missed the wow factor. Again, that was another run like Korpolinski's. It was technically perfect, but it just lacked that little wow factor. I feel kind of sad because he's just done up the car for this round. <laughs> now and he's now ruined it's, it's it. wrecked. The back end just comes completely off the car. Again, flexing the wall, doesn't affect the steering of the no. car. Like, really good. Really good stuff from Joachim Anderson here. Yeah, this is really nice. This is really nice. And the transition into these outside zones as he makes it across the circuit is just brilliant. Look at that shot. What sort of a drift event are you watching right now? I don't even know. I don't know. Nine stories like high being engulfed in flames. I think I'm in a dream. If you had told us <laughs> 10 years ago that this would be where drifting is right now, no one would have believed. No. No, there is not one person that you could have told in world drifting a year ago that you would be in a stadium like this with 53,000 people tomorrow with all of this attached oh, to it. I just caught the end of that run. Joachim Anderson tagged the wall and fired a piece of plastic clean up into the air. Look at I this. Mean, oh, the slow-mo shot. It's just so good. So good. We, we've oh. 86 on the board. Big jump up from Joachim Anderson, the Swede, into 22nd position. Well-deserved, well-earned. Yeah, I thought it was better than that. Just, I, just putting it all out there. I'm I looking think, at yeah. Kevin O'Connell and he's looking at me saying, you're not the judge. And I'm like, and, that's a good and thing. you know what? That's a good thing. <laughs> 
We would have, we would have had a hundred point run by now. Oh, I'd have ten, Me, of, them around, ten, ten of them around. Ten of them around. I won a hundred point run. <laughs> I'm going to get one tonight, Ian. It's the last. It's the Catalina wine mixer drifting. We're here for the last round. It's got to be a hundred point run. Michael Ryer, will he get it? The Czech Republic driver fires it a little bit lazy on the angle on the way in, but of course he's going to go to the walls as Ryer puts foot to floor. The lead on the transition there. As, oh, Ryer's in a oh. wild move there. He's going to fall out of that zone. He's, he's struggling to get that car to go where he wants it to go. He's still buried in the wall. And this is the dangerous part. When you transition back to track, you've got to judge it right. Don't judge it wrong. Ryer judges it right. Lovely line from Michael Ryer there towards the end. But a bit of wobbling around the inner zones earlier on. Might just cost him some scores. He's outside the top 32 right now. I think the check flag's flying. It certainly is. That's going to come down to the initiation, Dave. It was very lazy, as you said. He, he kind of took his time to get into that one. It was reserved. It was reserved. reserved. Which, isn't, uh, which isn't like Mikel Reihardt, because no. he isn't reserved. Uh, in any way of his life. Um, it just looked to me like he didn't want to overcommit no, the yeah. first corner, but I think a lot of people have been doing much more, um, I would say, flares, style-based entries there. They're getting a bit more of you know points out of it. Yeah. A bit of an opposite lock flick, or not an opposite lock, but opposite... Uh, Flick in, you know, a little bit of weight transfer in there. Just give it a little bit of, get a bit of angle in there early. Go early to the wall as well. Yeah. That's what the judges want. They want you drifting before the start line. Reihard kind of was aiming, triangulating towards the to wall. Yeah, the wall went yeah. to the wall and kind of came away from it. But other than that, very good around the rest of the circuit, to be honest. I can't really criticize too much. Looks like the flames are coming out of the front of Michael Reihard's car there. It's quite, <laughs> quite impressive. A 75, not enough for top 32 action from Michael Reihard from the Czech Republic. And I can see that. They can see the mistakes in there. They're, they're still happy, though. Still happy. They're happy just yeah. to be here. They got Marco Zacherl in there. Yeah, we certainly have. Zacherl's yeah. well Zacherl's in there. well in there. Right, we go to back to the line, Dave, for a first, what, what, one of many zeros to come up. Oliver Randalou, zero on his first run. Will the car work? He's off the line. Here we go, Randalou. He finished second at round one in 2022. Now, can't seem to get the car to work around the circuit. Oh, he's in, but he tags the wall, and he knows what he needs to do. He's been watching the broadcast. He knows that you need to be exceptional this weekend. Now works his way into outside zone four, and he's on it, the back end flex in the rear wheel on the wall as Oliver Randalou comes through the centre of the circuit. The Estonian driver needs this one to work right now as he looks for outside zone five and fulfills it, takes apart the body panel as he looks for the final outside zone across the line he goes. Oliver Randalou, I think he'd done everything he could there in his power to try and do enough just about to agree with you right there's the entire back end of an s15 there <laughs> you can take that home take that home mounting your wall just put on your i don't think that henry hamper would be too happy but no keep it henry probably wants that back because half of his car is there oh that contact upset the front wheels but i don't yeah. know i i, I think he's done no he done everything he could i'm gonna go and, and unlim i don't know what the score is gonna be here i have no idea it's a it's a decent run there was yeah. an error with that hit on the wall however and he's a no practice no but regardless of the score he has done everything he could in that run to get himself in the show. Yep. And to go with no practice all day, an issue on the first qualifying run, he's only done one pass of the track. And if that is the one pass he's done, that is exceptional. Yeah. Oh, he can be proud. He, Him and the team can be proud of what they achieved. Chewed up his own bumper. His own bumper. He was like, I hate you. He was like, you know what? Stay where you are. Yeah. <laughs> and 83 gets into the top 32 just about. But that is brave from... Oliver Randall to have no practice, no issues all day to still get into the top 32 provisionally. Provisionally, we'll at the see moment. where it goes. Yeah, we've still got a couple more sheets of drivers to go yet before the, the day is over. We go back to the start line to another driver sitting on a zero. It's going to be Eric Gotchow, the Polish driver. Massive mistake on initiation, overfought it, put the car in the wall with a front wheel. Well, he's got to make it happen here. He's got a big fan base here this weekend. They're all behind him, but can he get the job done? gotcha has got to be perfect. Big flick again from gotcha and he almost makes the same mistake, but he makes it work this time. That was sensational. Big flick, wrist it on. Oh! Straight through the zone. The flag <laughs> blocking us from the inner zone. As he hits the wall the whole way around, gotcha is going for one here. Fire through the center of the track here as he goes through the inner zone. Oh, oh, look at this. He's going in very wide, and he's hit the wall. Gotcha, making another big error, going too hard into the wall. And his back wheel looks to me like it's completely, yeah, look, it's yeah, completely look bent. He bent the back wheel, or bent the, the suspension arms, I think. Yeah. yeah, destroyed the suspension on the wall there, Dave. What's going on here? 
I don't know. He, the entry he tried there was just shouldn't it have worked. Didn't, it didn't work the first it's time, so he said, I'll try yeah, it again. Try it again. So you, you came in at so much angle. So like that was all exceptional, right? He's on the wall, gets through the inner zone. This inner zone for me, that's perfect. Yep. Look at this. He's just how they're making this work, I have no idea. He tra transitions here, really, really good through this whole section. Just a little bit too much of a wall hit towards the end. That's the only thing I could take away. It's outside zone five. That's the only mistake for me, and I and I don't even know if I want Looks to. Looks like he missed the touch and go on the inside there. That's a big hit. Watch this. Yeah, that is a big hit. He's that's broke, where the wheel yeah, goes. Yeah, he breaks the suspension. Yeah, that's where he broke the, the suspension. So he's broken the suspension on the car. He knows he's out of control yeah. as well. Look at this. He's but off he break, But he breaks it here, and he still manages to get the car back going. That back wheel is not facing the same direction as everything else, and he still finishes the run. But it's an 83. So it's, it's in, but it's not amazing. Had all the impact, all the style, <laughs> for sure. Even the literal impact in the wall. But uh, Eric Gonchal creeping in, creeping in for now. I was just going to look at the cutoff, Dave. Where's the cutoff now? Oh, 82. 82. 82 is the cutoff right now. And man with 87 is Kuba Pushkonski. He's sitting in 19th position right in the middle of the pack with an 87, which sounds strange to say, but that's the reality. Kuba's got to try and go a little bit more aggressive than the first one, I think. Yeah, he certainly has. Look at this. He's a shallow angle once again, though. He's taking it reserved. Comes away from the wall, looks for that inner zone, looks for this inner zone now, fires back, and he's going to get to outside zone four nice and early. But he's shallow on the angle. He's lacking a little bit of impact here. He's wandering and wavering in these outside zones as he transitions through the center of the circuit. Looks for that touch and go. Gets the job done. Goes for outside zone five. He's flirting with danger. That spoiler hanging over the wall. And the fence is ready to take it off, but he makes it work. Across the line. I just couldn't get, keep my eyes off the spoiler <laughs> the whole way around. I was like, why has he got a spoiler on with all this catch fencing? And somehow, doesn't it survive. Kuba doing a great job. He's got a huge fan base here um, in Poland, obviously being a Polish driver. And that, that helps it play as a part. You know, when you see all your fans you know, waving the flags and giving you all the pats on the back, that does make you feel a lot more confident, a bit more, you know, you want to... It's not just another drift event, especially no. when it's your hometown event. You want to be there representing your country. You know, let's be honest, most of the stadium, you're going to want a Polish winner tomorrow. And one of these guys, Kuba, Jainsek, you know, any of these guys are going to want to do that. They're going to want to be right up there. How did that spoiler oh, how survive? How does that spoiler, spoiler survive? Not a mark on it yet. Not even a mark on it. That's oh, they moved the spoiler forward so that it doesn't hit the wall. I've just heard a little bit in, the, uh, in my ear. Oh, they're cheating. Uh, he's still running one, and it's still very close. If he goes, I mean, yeah, in, it's very close. If he goes into that wall, it's coming off. And 92 for Kuba Pushkonski from Poland puts him into 11th position. He improves. Very safe for tomorrow. Job done, Kuba Pushkonski. He can put his feet up tonight and say, busy day tomorrow. Busy day tomorrow, yeah, in the main show. Well, what are we seeing here? Oh, the back end of Korea's car. I got worried there for a second. Yeah, I was, I was like, like, is that the... F that is, that, is that one of the championship contenders in the pits? Or? It is Korea, though, and he is, is currently ready on the line to take to his second qualifying run. He's outside the top 32 in. This is a strange place for Diogo Correa from Portugal. He's got to be sensational here. The scoring has gone higher all the way through this qualifying session. Correa did a great job here. Oh, really close to the wall. This is a nice, look at the fluidity from Correa as he transitions back. This is what we want to see. E92 buried into the end of that zone. And this is where it gets real tricky. You got to get a touch and go, he gets it. Now, this is where everyone's been making mistakes. Especially on big angle, doesn't make a mistake, touches the wall, stays in it. There's no bootlid, there's no spoiler. What there is, is a good score on the board. That was a really good run from Correa. Really, really good run from Diogo Correa. That was, uh, again, a technical run that really kind of fulfilled the judges' needs. Then it comes into the factor of impact, style. What did you do, you know, to wow the judges? Sits with an 82 at the moment. And he is one point out of the top 32. He went in early in that first corner, so he went in with a lot of angles yeah, very early. Massively. So that's going to be rewarded by the judges. Just, you know, we're getting, a, we're getting a feel for it now. We know that the big early initiation is important. It's important, yeah. We didn't see that from everybody. We know that the, the bit of flair, a bit, bit of flirting with the wall here and there is good. It's some showing off. Yeah, a little bit of showing off. A little bit of, you know, what? obviously you're trying to... If everyone did, you know, a safe run, this would be pointless. Pointless, it, yeah. Everyone would have the same score. So we're waiting to see who's going to step up, and Correa did a good job there. 
I like that the use of throttle is very, very like the handbrake here and then bam, early on, on the throttle and just stays in it the whole way through. And then there's a little little knock with the wall, but then not too many corrections though, Dave. That's what there's I liked the about it. There's the bumper, yeah, just dispatched from dispatched. the back end of the car. Just, and the guy's like, let's go. <laughs> He's that's like, I like that. That's a brave man. Yeah, he is a brave man. He's a brave man. It's like a seagull seal your chips. <laughs> oh. A 90 for Diogo Correa. 15th position, and he's way up in the mix now. Knocking a couple of people down out of the order. I'll let you guys know what the whole order is at the end of qualifying. We'll be able to go through. We'll show you guys the bracket for tomorrow, which is also going to be very important. Yeah, very interesting as well. Here comes Kevin Piscaldi. He is in the car, punching himself because he had a banger of a first run. 94 on the board. Kevin Piscotti, I believe he can do 100. I think he can do 100. Here we go. If anyone could do 100, it could be Kevin Piscotti. It's either that or it's going to be a big wreck. He goes in early, he goes in wider than anyone else. And look at this from Kevin Piscotti, the Hungarian, as he puts the back bumper at E92 to the wall. He looks for these ones. Oh, wow, are you serious? He almost took the paint off the wall on the front bumper. As Kevin Piscotti now stands on the front, looks for the outside zone, absolutely glued to the outside zone. Zone is Kevin Piscotti as he gets to the outside zone, fights super early. He's on the wall, he absolutely fulfills the zone. Look at the angle, are you it could serious? Be it. it could be it, it could be it, it could be it. I cannot believe it. This could be the 100, this could be it. I, I, I can't, I won't even accept that, it until I see it. That inner zone, nothing. I've ever seen that precise in drifting. He didn't hit it. He didn't hit he it. He didn't even and hit it. And that's the difference between... But look how deep he is in these zones. It's perfect. Right, that's perfect. This, perfect. perfect. Front zone here, transitions back. Oh, come on. Oh, you serious? Come on. Oh, they're not going to give him 100, but it's very close, I'd imagine. Is there even a hundred? I don't even know if we can. Can we get a hundred? We can. Okay, I was like, they can do a hundred. I've asked the judges and officially said they haven't seen a hundred. I'm not sure what. This is going to be a huge score, though. Uh, I mean, we are out of words here. I, have, I've, from, I thought that Germany exactly. was See, the one. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> I thought that Germany <laughs> was the event where I lose. Yo! Oh! A 98 for Kevin Piscotti. It's almost 100. Who, who docked him two? One of the judges docked him two points for something. One and one. Oh, one and one, one okay. And one. Kevin, did you go for 100? I went at 100. That was <laughs> phenomenal. Wow. Kevin Piscotti, unbelievable. He, the man is on a mission. Benedict Cherba, though, is, oh, he's out of the show. He's, he's on a zero. He's on a zero. We he's got a zero. Lithuanian champion has to step up. He's got to do it here. Well, here we go. Look, he's got, he might knock Pavel Grosh out of the show if he can put anything on the on the board better than an 82 right now. And look at this, the Lithuanian is coming for it, David. He knows what he needs to do, and he does. He gets it done so far. It was outside zone five that caught him unaware last time, but now he needs to focus. He needs to dial himself in as Benedictus Cherba puts the back end of the BMW to the wall. The team have worked tirelessly to get it back out on circuit. He's tentative on outside zone five, but he gets there. He's a little shallow, but now he starts flirting with danger. Outside zone six, he's glued to it across the line. That's a really good run. Cherba had to step up. He had to he do had it. To. He's had a bit of a mixed bag this season. You know, we haven't... We expect him to be on the podium almost every event, but yeah. this year he just dropped back a little bit. He had some mechanical issues. The driving style just it wasn't... I mean, the confidence maybe wasn't there. But this looked like he was back to his best. Oh, it, it looks like he's best. back on form, yeah. Like, this is, is super stuff. And again, you know, as you said, one little stall, one little error, not major. But it, 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 I think this is a good score. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely, Dave. I th th and you know what? I don't blame him for being tentative to go in outside, to outside zone five because he just wrote the car off at outside zone five. <laughs> so he came across there and he was like, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I'd rather bleed five, six points, yeah. ten points to make sure I'm in the show. I totally agree. And I think he's a little tentative there, which I, again, as you said, if you've crashed somewhere, you don't want to crash in there again. And <laughs> 95 for Benedictas Cherba. Oh, I'm just throwing my hat on the ground again. 95 again. Sure, but I told you, that could have been up there in 98, 99 without that little back off on that corner. And I'm talking, that's the four points there. Yeah. Everything else was perfect. Nakamura's on the line. Naoki Nakamura sits in 25th position with an 86. The anti-lag is popping and banging. 
because here comes the Japanese showman, Naoki Nakamura, into turn one, flying in on the handbrake. Yeah, but he stalled up massively, David. He stalled, waiting to get into outside zone one, and it didn't work for him. Now he's over that inside zone, and it starts to fall apart a little bit. He needs to clean this one up. He's in the show, and there's only one man that can really take him out right now. But Naoki Nakamura would love to be higher up the order, to be fighting for that championship, to get himself into the top five for his first ever debut here. And he looks for the final outside zone and he puts it across the line and that is all that Nakamura had this evening. He's a wild man. He is a wild he is a man. We've been watching him this year. What an addition to the championship. He's come all the way over from Japan. He's exactly as advertised. <laughs> he is as mad as a bag of spiders around this track. And I, you know, every run I watch, he just impresses me. With, it's kind of like a different every time. And there's chase driving though is where we want to see him. Yeah. That's where he's amongst the best in the world. And I think, you know, as you said, he's in 25th right now. I don't think mathematically he can be knocked out of the competition right here. I'm pretty sure. No. So he is going to be in battle action tomorrow. That's going to be that's going to be a pleasure to watch in here. There's only one driver that left with a zero, and realistically, the only person that can get knocked out is Eric Gotchow now. So Eric Gotchow has a tentative It's basically weight. Eric Gotchow versus Jack Shannon. That's kind of how it's sitting right now. Yeah. 85 on the board for it. Naoki Nakamura, 86 and 85, stays in 24 position. Not bad, two, two pretty solid scores. Kevin Bazor, I have a feeling, he's in 27th position right now, I have a feeling Kevin Bazor puts down that visor and says, wait till you see this. Because I think Kevin Bazor is going to go out here and smash this one. I think he did a safe first run. I think you need to watch this one. Kevin Bazor takes off the line, the Estonian driver fires into that first car, and Bazor right to the wall he goes in this two series. Inner zone collected, next inner zone collected, transitions back very fast from Kevin Pizzor as he comes through the course. Not quite out all the way out to the walls, but doing a pretty good job all the same. Gets there late on outer zone three, right on the touch and go. This is a beautiful run so far from Kevin Pizzor, but very wild across the track, and he made it work somehow on big angle. Very smooth, very fluid. The Estonian Kevin Pizzor, business as usual. This is a guy I would not want to be going up against tomorrow. How did he make outside zone five? Right? I have no idea. He was on full angle. How did he do that? That is the most dangerous part of the circuit. You are full throttle firing across the track at an immovable concrete wall. And he was just like, yeah, this is fine. This is easy. Look at this. This is going to be way up there again. This is going to be another incredible score. Absolutely. And he's seventh in the championship. So the fifth top five, top four still yep. within sight. Good result tomorrow, and we could have an Estonian in the top five of Driftmasters, which has never happened before. Never. And, you know, Kevin Pizzor staking his claim here. Hey, I mean, he is really throwing it all down this year. He's, quite, he's come this year, and he's made a name for himself, because... 100%. He is really throwing it up. That, that outside zone five had made no sense. Yeah, I don't know. He kind of just went in on full angle and just made it work. But it just floated around yeah, there perfectly. Yeah, it worked really well. So... When we, was, when we get the score from Kevin Pizzor, 91 on the board, big jump up into 15th position. I'm telling you, watch out for this guy tomorrow. And I'll tell you what, now the business starts to pick up. Yeah. Six drivers remain. They are the six drivers that can mathematically still win the Driftmasters 2023 European Championship. Wayne McKeever from Northern Ireland will be the first of the six to head back into qualifying. At the moment, sitting in 20th position with an 88. Wow, look at that. He's early to the wall, Dave. He absolutely wants this one. He was glued to the wall. And uh, he's over, though, that inside zone, but he makes it work now as he fires through. And he's early to the wall once again. He knows he needs to pick up outside zone four perfectly. And he does. As Dwayne McKeever sticks it all the way out, he looks for the touch and go. And he's a little short. He comes up a little short, but he makes it work for outside zone five as he now finds himself glued once again to the wall for outside zone six, and that is textbook for keeper. <laughs> the, the, the gunshots from the anti-lag on that or villain RB20. Just, I think someone's like entire. They were carrying beer down the steps. It just completely just destroyed. <laughs> and fell down the steps. Dwayne McKeever. The Irish fans are elated. He's in the show either way. And let's be honest. He's an outside chance here, Dwayne. He's not really yeah. sitting with the, with the most likely chance of the championship. But hey, winning the biggest drift event of all time could be a good consolation for anybody who doesn't win the championship. And Dwayne McKeever certainly feels he's in the mix for that. Good run. Not sure where the scores are going to go. I think it's going to be a little higher maybe than his first run. That would be where I'd be kind of leaning towards. Sat in 20th position with an 88. I think it's going to be a bit of an improvement on that. But we're very close to the top. Um, 
of the business end here. And our first driver of our top six going for the championship will be in the show. That's what we know. Yep. There's only one of those top six at the moment not in the show. That is Jack Shannon with a zero from his first run. So let's see what happens here. Dwayne McKeever gets a 92, jumps him into 12th position. And you know, that's all that you need to do. Just get the job done. You're going to win it or lose it from leader chase tomorrow. We've got two cars going door to door. The Irish fans absolutely loving this. So the Irish, the Polish, and the Finnish, well, they're all in the mix here they're for all the, in the mix. further championship. And this is the man flying the Polish flag, Peter Jainsek, from Płock just down the road. At least in 24th place. 24th, yeah, 24th yeah. place. Peter's got to go for it. Fast gear changes from Bjarnsek as he fires in very early. And this is better from Bjarnsek. Big angle early on. Comes to the wall a little bit later, as you can see, firing through. Oh, look at this from Bjarnsek. Very fast, very fluid. Out to the wall he goes as he starts to pick it up, flexing the boot lid, flexing the rear taillight. He's taking the taillight out of the car. Bjarnsek, oh, shallow again on the inside of the track there from Bjarnsek as he does not go out to the touch and go, but the rest is absolutely perfect and again maybe it's just a visual thing not being able to see that mark on the track that's the only error we can see in that run from everything else was absolutely spot on he's done it again i'm wondering is that maybe a spotter wasn't able to let him know that that was an issue from the first run but either way it's you know it's not detrimental it's not bad it's only a reference no it's not i a know clip. no but it's a it's a big point on the circuit where a lot of points have bled because the, the, yeah. in the briefing you know kevin o'connell said they wanted you as wide as possible after outside zone four and that's gonna that chokes up the yeah, chase you know, car you know it's funny because for me i'm wondering this is is, is, is giants aware of this because he's done it twice which means i mean every other part of the circuit he was completely 120 percent in control Perfect, yeah so it's just unusual to make that error there. It's still going to be a good score. He's still in the show. But if you watch this, he just comes through that corner a little early. You'll see the little white marks on the ground just behind him, somewhere around here. Just misses those. Over there, see to your right. Just misses those. And then it gives him this uh, much earlier arc to this outside corner. Again, phenomenal everywhere. Just that, just that little center section. So a 91. I, I'm thinking if he got that, that could have been a 98, 99. Yeah. There wasn't much left out there. No, not at all. So 14th position is where he is right now. So 14th position now. We move along. So we have McKeever's in the show. Vyansek in, in the, the show. show. Rintanen is in the show, but he's in 24th position. Wants to jump up. We have got four chances this year to get a 100 point run. I've been waiting for it all year. I'm not sure if it's going to happen tonight. Can Rinton and get it done? Well, he's going to go for it. Look at this. He's wider than anyone else on that initiation. That's super wide for Rinton. And oh, and he makes a mistake and he comes off the foot brake a little early and that upsets the line. And it's put him way wide on that inside zone, too. Now needs to get back into form, back into shape as he puts the back end of this GR86 to the wall on outside zone four. Transitions through the center of the circuit, nice and wide. Looks for five looks to get deep and he does as he now touches the back bumper off the walls he goes for outside zone six job done for Rittenden. yeah he's on rails this year I, I, I was only watching his practice earlier on and going, i think if you look at the experience he's had of where he's driven all over the world i don't think the big occasion shakes him no i think he's been to enough big occasions to say i know what i am i know what i'm good at i know i know how much of a contender and all year i'm pretty confident the way things stack up he's been sort of like slowly creeping towards the top yeah. three. And I'm just wondering if tomorrow night, Rintanen, everyone overdrives, everyone goes a little crazy, and Rintanen just swoops in, takes the championship. Doesn't let the occasion get to him, Dave. That's what I'm saying. The experience counts for a lot. You look at Jack Shannon, he takes a zero there. Connor Shannon having some mechanical failures early on. You look at Vyansek missing some clips. Rinton is just out there doing his thing. Yeah. Just being smooth. Oh, it's not a good score, it's though. It's not a good yeah. score. That means he hasn't got a really good lead, Dave. Yeah. Well, the 87. Pick the 87 of the two. Yeah, right? but, <laughs> but still on, on the... No, on I get the... that. I get that. And I think now this is the big one. Jack Shanahan is going to line up for his only qualifying run. He's got a zero from his first. If he fails to get less than, and the cutoff right now is 82 as far as I'm aware, if he 83. So he needs higher than an 83 
or he's out of the competition and he can't win the championship. It doesn't come any bigger than this and the stakes don't come any higher. Well, here we go. He's off the line now through the gear, smokes the tyres. He's going to go for a big flick initiation. Little dab of the hammer, he sets the car up for outside zone one. A Shanahan, look at this, looks for that inside zone, gets it dialed. He's going to go for a big run here as he flicks the car across the circuit. Now works his way into outside zone four. Shanahan not risking anything, not putting the rear wheel to the wall, not putting the bumper to the wall. He's going to do enough. He's not going to risk anything this evening as a chance to knock himself out of competition. He's kept it safe from danger. One outside zone to go. And across the line, that was clever from yeah, Shanahan. I think that he knew that was enough to get him in the show. He didn't push too hard. He didn't go too close to the walls. The Irish fans know it's, it's probably enough as well. It's not the best Jack Shannon run we've ever seen, but it's very clinical, very tidy. And, it, you know, as you said, had to do it. Had yeah. to get it done. Couldn't go out there and just throw caution to the wind. He tried that on the first run. It didn't work. No, it didn't. It didn't work. And, and you know, Jack Shannon's known for these big first runs, get a good score in a bag, and then the second one where you could just go bananas. But if it doesn't work in the first one, you've got the second one as a backup. And he knows, he knows as a capable driver, he can still get a good score in the books. Well, we'll see what Jack Shanahan does score. It will be, a, I think, a pretty good score, but um, will it trouble the top guy? The 99 of Calais Rovin Paris still sitting there is just an absolutely... Mind blows me. ...outrageous score to get in, in the middle of this competition. Just in the middle. So, Rovin Paris with a 99, Fiscalti with a 98, Van Oot with a 96, Jakob crawling fourth with a 95. Let's see where Jack Shanahan drops into the mix. Right, Scores are coming in. It is a 92, 14th position for Jack Shanahan. And a 92 is 14th position right now. And at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, we have got 20, 20 drivers, again. 20 drivers, 90 or above in qualifying. Just again. Again. And so that's not just a one-off. No, but here's, here's the big one for me. I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm not trying to be biased, but if I was Laurie Heinen right now, and you're chasing Conor Shannon for the championship, out qualifying him will catch him up before you even start tomorrow morning. Heinen has to go big here. If he gets right up in the top three, he will put points on the board and close the gap to Shannon. Can he do it? Well, he's going to have to try and do it, Dave. There's nothing left. He needs to be a 98 or better. There's not many points left after a 98, but that outside zone one was clinical. He's a little wide from the wall if he wants to be scoring a 99. Oh, flexes the back end on the wall once, twice, but it upsets the steering, but he stays in it. As Laurie Heinen takes the back end off the car, he looks for a big swing into outside zone five, and he makes it work. And look at the line from Laurie Heinen as he glues the back bumper to the wall across the line. It's a great run from Laurie Heinen. I mean, he is in the fight this weekend for that championship. The fans are behind him. We're all behind him. It's a, it's a fairy tale story. It is. You know, a completely sort of... A, a, they've taken this driver who they knew had talent, the fans, and supported him all over Europe, travelled all over Europe. They've been so dedicated to Laurie. And he's delivering. That's the hard part. You have to deliver when you have all that belief in you. And he's doing a great job of it. Is it the best run we've seen tonight? I'm going to say not as close to the walls and a little bit too heavy handed. And yeah. it, people say, oh, he hit the wall. Hitting the wall look, here, a little heavy here. Look, that's a mistake. Yeah. Steering had to re handbrake again. It's an error. But it's still a very good score. It's going to be a huge score. But it's just got one error in there. A 96 for Laurie Heinen. 96. He's above Shanahan by one point. Yep. yep. So now Laurie Heinen sitting second in the championship has out qualified right now Connor Shanahan. And Connor Shanahan has a 95. This is mind games now. This is mind games, Ian. We know it's, it's happened before. Laurie Heinen jumps into ahead of Connor Shanahan's position. More by points on the point. board. Laurie in third right now in but qualifying. Hold on a minute. Let's have a look. Laurie Heinen's first run was a 94. Second run was a 96. If Shanahan scores a 96, he automatically jumps ahead yeah. because his first qualifying score was a 95. So, so Shanahan needs 96, 96 or, better. or better to stay ahead of Laurie Heinen and not in let Laurie in points. Well, Laurie Heinen's points Come will be catching. He'll still be ahead. Yeah. Oh, this is where the stress comes in. This, is, this is where it? you love the sport. The final run of qualifying in 2023 is underway as Connor Shanahan fires his Toyota GT86 to the wall and he absolutely gets it done perfectly. Looks for the wall in front of him, transitions the car nice and early into the outside zone four. Gets the job done so far as he flexes the tail like the back bumper, the whole side of the car off the wall through the centre section of the circuit. He goes, he looks for five, breaks the car, oh, and he comes in a little hot and heavy. He has 
to make a correction, but he still gets the job done as Shanahan pulls it across the line and puts an end to qualifying here at round six. I mean, if I was looking at this championship right now from the outside looking in, I'd be just saying, wow, but I am. But also, he's leading the championship, Connor Shannon. He's put an almost identical run in back to back. Yep. They are the first two laps he's done of this circuit. And both of them are probably in the 90s by the looks of things. I would just assume. That's a champion. You gotta, you gotta say, a, a driver who's up against it, who spent the whole morning watching practice because he had no car, comes out and puts in a run. But what I have to say is the fight between Laurie Heinen and Connor Shanahan tomorrow, it's going to be biblical. Because yep. those two believe, I think Connor, the more all rounded qualifying driver, technically. Laurie, though, on the chase driving, can be super aggressive, can be. They very rarely make mistakes, these two guys. And 95 puts him into fifth position. And as far as I'm aware, that would put Laurie Heinen ahead of Connor Shanahan. And this is how our qualifying order is going to stack up because. Sorry, I've just heard in my headset that Laurie Heinen gets six points and Connor gets four. So already, Dave. There's a, there's a gap. It starts to close, and, and here, here we, we go. Calais Rovenpera, the current WRC champion, gets a 99 in tops qualifying. Kevin Pascalti, a man possessed from Hungary, gets 98. Laurie Heinen chasing down. He's in second in the championship. He gets 96. Clint Van Oud, what a phenomenal run from him for 96. Connor Shanahan with no practice, still in the mix at 95. Jakob Kroll pulls it off with uh, a massive sixth place. Benedikt Ascherba in seventh. Adam Zalewski, great run from him in eighth position. And here we go from eighth all the way down to 32. Jack Shannon, you can see. Dwayne McKeever still in the hunt. And Peter Vjartsek scattered amongst the mid-pack right now. But it means nothing tomorrow. You can still win the event from 32nd position. Qualifying just gets you in the show. And at this point, no one has ever got a trophy from qualifying. It's all about tomorrow. It's all about the battles. And look at that, Oliver Randalu with one lap of the track creeping in to the top 32. These are the big names that have been eliminated from the competition and they've had pretty solid big scores in there as well. Nothing really too crazy wrong. Just on a night like tonight, you need to be so exceptional. It has been a phenomenal qualifying session. If I'm not mistaken, that is only three zeros on the board out of 56 drivers or 58 drivers. Yeah. So a phenomenal showing from the Driftmasters grid. 32 drivers are going to go through to tomorrow. The big event, let's be honest, tonight was the warm-up. Tonight is qualifying. You might have your opinions. You, you might say, oh, that score, this score. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. 32 are in the show. The game is on tomorrow. That's what it matters. Everyone wants to see twin battling. They want to see tandem battles. That Qualifying is a formality. Ian, tonight, if that's a taster of what's to come, tomorrow is going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be unbelievable, Dave. It's going to be one that you're going to think about for years and years and years to come. People behind me are telling me in the headset that to guarantee the champion tomorrow, Connor Shanahan has to be on the podium. Well, it depends on how everyone else plays out too. That could change but throughout could the change. evening. But look, look at the picture that you're seeing right now on your screens. Every single seat full. Nine stories, 53,000 people, big halftime show, a lot of surprises that we haven't told a lot of people about. The biggest drift event the world has ever seen and we're having the biggest championship fight the championship has ever seen. The 2023 Driftmasters European Championship will be decided tomorrow one way or another. And there are six drivers, I'm saying right now, probably five drivers in the game. We are live, 3.15 local time, exclusively live on Red Bull TV. And then the main event, the biggest of them all, 6.55 p.m. local time here in Warsaw in Poland. And I'll tell you one thing, this is going to be a night that no one will want to win. We're waiting for our battle tree. That's where we're going to see who meets who before we head to the final tomorrow. What side of the bracket are they going to drop on? So here we go. Here it where is. Where is everyone going to land? This is going to be huge. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Peter Vjainsek on the right-hand side of the bracket. Laurie Heinen on the right-hand side. Jack Shanahan. Oh! And look at this, Dwayne McKeever and Connor Shannon, two championship contenders, will face each other if they win their first top 32 battle. Who's, I mean, that is a tough grid for everybody involved. Heinehan and Shanahan can't meet until the final. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be one for the history books. 
And like, oh, like Shannon McKeever can be in the top. Like. Look at Rovan Pera. Rovan Pera there, he's the, he's definitely going to be an Oliver Randall who thought he had an easy day today. He's up against Rovan Pera, first battle out. Yeah, look, Cali Rovan Pera, realistically, if he carries on this form, could take Juha Ritten and out in the top 16. Well, you've got Zalewski But you've got Ritten. Connor Shanahan and McKeever that could face off in the top 16. We go to the other side of the bracket. You've got Bagsy versus Shanahan. Yeah, like Bagsy is, a, you know, he's an ace at these events. He could take Jack Shannon out in top 32, and that would be the end of Jack Shanahan's run. Connor Shannon got to go through Mika Kaskikorpi, who's on fire as well. You've got Vincek that could potentially battle Kevin Pascolti in the top 16 as well. And Pascolti's on fire, Dave. You know what? I think there's so many variables. Tomorrow is where it's at. The biggest drift event the world has ever seen goes live tomorrow on Red Bull TV. Thank you for joining us tonight. I've been Dave. That's been Ian. We're going to take a little breather tonight because we're going to need all our rest for the craziest drift event the world has ever seen. It's the final of the 2023 Drift Masters European Championship here in Poland. Join us tomorrow. We'll see you then.